now you prayed away that the world would be untrue as it was against yeah oh yeah The pain unveils through genocide Until with your nothing can matter at all When you're young, nothing can matter at all Hey everybody, tonight Flat Earth is on trial, and to start us out, we have Flatzoid, so the floor is all yours, and thanks for being here. Hey, hey, uh, I hope you're all doing well. Actually, I was going to do uh, a <laughs> gym first and then me second, but it's sure. fine. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. went over this. We just went over this. That's on me. <laughs> all right, Jim, the floor is all yours. We're going to keep it. It is all mine. Uh <laughs> Thank you for everybody. Thank you, um, James, for having me on. It's um, I enjoy I enjoy our my little journey since November twenty twenty one, and we'll see what happens tonight. So thanks, Ember, and thanks, Mark, and uh, Flatsoid, and Ryan. Thanks very much. Hey, uh, I'm going to start out a, a little bit more lighthearted, and then hopefully in the last in the last couple minutes, I get a little more serious. But I'm going to show you what the uh, what the globe establishment. The Globers, you know, believe in this is the most unscientific, unscientific thing that I've ever witnessed in my entire life. This is so unscientifically um, silly. It's really uh, unbelievable. It's scientifically impossible. And, you know, the fun thing about this thing right here, it's a model. And I don't know if, if many people know that uh, the science tells us that four and a half billion years ago with a B that some large asteroid or small planet called Thea, T-H-E-I-A, hit this just fine when it was straight up and down and tilted at 23.4 degrees so we could vacation in Florida every year. So so thank you, Thea. And and it, it, it supposedly became part of the moon and maybe absorbed into the into the earth. So, you know, you know, cool story, bro. Cool story. And so you know, you, you know, that's you know that is backed up by quote science that is pseudoscience my friends and then you get something like this here and i always enjoy this one uh you know we're supposedly 71 percent water right 71 percent water and large bodies of water at rest do not curve now we are told that if i look this way two miles and i look this way two miles when i can no longer see the water it starts to curve cool cool story cool story man I, you know, I, 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 I love cool stories. Now, this is something that I always believed in until recently. Let's say that Mark is on top. Here's the ball. Here's the globe. Here's Mark. You know, Mark is the little scissors. Mark's sitting on top of the ball right here, right? Now, Mark's sitting on top of the ball. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. But Mark is also staying upright on the side of the ball. And Mark is also staying upright on the bottom of the ball. Why? Because gravity pulls everything towards the center of the ball. And, you know, I, I don't know what to say, guys. Um, I believed it for a long time, but we were told at age five it was true. We were told through in Universal Studios it was true. And we were told until we found out it wasn't true. So real cool, real cool. And the, 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 the other fun thing is 
we have something called a space-time curvature. And space-time curvature is real cool, you know, from March 20, uh, May 29th, 1919, when uh, two expeditions, one led by Eddington, saw a, uh, a solar eclipse. Then they all, the boys all got together at the Royal Society on November 6th and said two out of 36 plates, pitchers, are going to change our world forever. And Einstein woke up on November 7th, 1919, the guy who saved the ball going around the earth. So I've been going around the sun. So what I did is I went to Walmart and bought a $2 pair of scissors. And right now in front of you on live, I am cutting space-time curvature. You can literally see me cutting through space-time curvature because space-time curvature is a real thing, right? Because obviously it couldn't be a theory. Uh, it has to be real because the boys back in 1919 told us. So it's really cool. I I, I love fairy tales. I really do. Uh, somebody needs to tuck me in a bed at night and read me a bedtime story like Outer Space. Anyway, and then we get something. I'm going to ask. I want Ember and Mark to you know to get real serious with me here for a second. I have a Milky Way candy bar. Now I haven't eaten the Milky Way candy bar. It's still in there. I probably I may or may not eat. It's not good for me. But you know what? I want I want Mark and Ember to tell me if the Milky Way galaxy or the Milky Way candy bar is real. It can't be both. One has to be real and one has to be fake. So I want to know. And then if you say the Milky Way galaxy is real, I want you to prove it tonight for us. I really would. And then, you know, the second law of thermodynamics, you know, second law of thermodynamics is real simple, guys. All you got to do is open up a Coke can. Oh, Coke can, bro. That was great and then time. I'm not, I'm not going to drink the whole thing because it's not good for me. But hey, that's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. And then in honor, in honor of Mr. Hubble, 1928, and Lorenz in, um, uh, 1892, I have an ever-expanding fly swatter to go with my ever-expanding universe. And then for Lorenz in 1892, I have I have a, a, a fly swatter that can contract because, you know, obviously we had the Lorenz contraction, correct? Good. So anyway, three laws that the, the globe does not care about. The globe errors do not care about. Newton's third law of motion, don't care. Uh, second law of thermodynamics, don't care. Uh, inverse square law of light, don't care. Why? Because we got to have this thing that is scientifically impossible, which is your globe. And I'm telling you guys, you can't show me ages per mile squared drop over distance. You can't show me rotation of the of the uh, of your globe. You can't show me motion of the earth around the sun. And you know what? You guys want your coordinate system so bad to be the earth going around the sun. You even came up with a nice little uh, Lorentz transform equation. One to the square root of one minus V squared divided by C squared. Cool story, bro. I'm telling you right now, we're going to have fun with you tonight because your globe is the most scientifically impossible thing ever. And I'm sorry if that breaks it to you. I have 25 seconds left. I yield the floor. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Jim, for your introductory statement there. Just rem remind everybody in the live chat there, we are going to do a Q&A here at Modern Day Debate, where we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, politics, you name it. Flat Earth tonight is on trial. You just heard from Jim, and now we're going to kick it over to Flatsoid for his up to six minute intro. So thank you, Flatsoid, for being here. The floor is all yours. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah, uh, Jim, that was brilliant. Uh, I'm happy you started first because... He's practically had the same arguments I have. The only difference is the arguments I'm going to be presenting is trying to get the globe to understand the burden of proof is on them. Okay, so why do we observe the earth to be flat, guys? Well, it's very simple. Since we're talking about the earth, let's try to dwell upon on the earth. So we try and place all the uh, objective truths and evidences on the earth. So what do we observe? We observe no movement of the ground. But we do observe the objects in the sky to move in a very particular cycled path. We observe that our measurements for the Earth is based always on using a horizontal flat baseline. This means that if you take elevation angles, you're going to first have to measure flat, then calculate your presupposed globe onto those flat Earth measurements. We, we observe how nature behaves with example of the way liquid behaves at rest. This observation shows that liquid will always require some sort of containment to hold it in. It takes the bounds and the shapes of the container. Just like uh, Jim just showed with his water bottle. If he had no bottle, he would have no water in it to contain it. What else do we observe? 
We observe how nature behaves with example of the way um, gas, gas behavior. So with the state of gas behavior, it also requires containment to exist in a system. Gas behavior shows us that gas is always moving in all directions. It has elastic collisions. We can also demonstrate gas existence in containment as the definition of pressure needs this antecedent relationship. So in other words, without you showing containment, you wouldn't be able to show gas pressure because the whole definition of gas pressure requires containment. So based on the simple observations, we conclude without a doubt, the earth is stationary. It's contained and flat. Note, the earth's plane has topography. So please don't try straw man us to say that, uh, oh, it's as flat as a pancake. You don't have mountains and so forth. No one says that. That's just a straw man. So since we observe no movement, we can conclude that the ground is stationary and thus the burden of proof is on the globe that claim it to be moving. Since we observe all measurements of the earth required to be measured flat and then calculated to a globe, show that the burden of proof is also on the globe. Since we observe water always lies level at rest and over large bodies of water shows flat, the burden again is on the globe that they claim it to be curving. And since we can only demonstrate gas pressure with containment, this shows the burden is once again on the globe because they go against that claim. So this is my question to the Globers. Will the globe defenders back up their positive claims that go against observations in reality? Or will you, we simply conclude that without a doubt, the globe has no argument that the globe is only based on faith? And I heal the rest of my time. All right. Well, thanks for your introductory statement there, Fouad Zoid. I uh, just want to remind everybody that uh, if you like what you're hearing, all of our guests are going to be linked in the description of our YouTube video and in our podcast description. With that, we're going to put the floor over to the other side. Who would like to kick us off? Mark Ember? I'm good to go if, if you want. All right. Ready to roll, I'm happy to. All okay. Right. So let me get set up here quickly. Um, I do have uh, I do have to share my screen. Uh, sorry. Just give me one sec. Uh, where's the sorry it's actually been a while since i've been on so i haven't used zoom in a while i gotta admit so um that one shit you're good to go uh all right are we good your, we're starting your six minutes right now yep so okay just give me one one sec oh sorry just just one second i just okay. gotta get the right thing up and all right good to go all right good to go Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your time, Ryan. Thank you for moderating and to my opponents for being here. And of course, thank you to my friend Ember for being part of my team. Now, Flat Earth on Trail. Here's this, I only have, really have three things that I want to go through, and they, the Flat Earth side will have to provide answers for these three things. Um, the first one is um, the Polaris and Crux, why that can be seen in the, uh, the configuration it can be seen in. Um, Polaris could be explained because it could be up here, but the crux not so much or the Southern Cross. Now, these two different models, it's easily explained why crux is only visible from the Southern Hemisphere, but not from, from Asia. Um, it just makes no sense on a flat Earth. Why can somebody over here in South uh, America see it, but not somebody in Asia? It makes absolutely zero sense. So I'll be expecting an answer to how that actually works. Um, the next part is circumpolar, tra uh, circumpolar star trails. Why do they... Uh, happen the way they do. So this is from the Northern Hemisphere. Whoops. Uh, 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 this is from the Northern... Uh, sorry, I'm having trouble with my slides. This is from Northern Hemisphere. Um, they actually go in a... Um, uh, anti-clockwise direction in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and if my thing would actually work, I could... Start it. So they go in an anti-clockwise direction in the Northern Hemisphere. I um, in the Southern Hemisphere, they actually go in the opposite way. They go clockwise. Now, this is a massive problem for the flat Earth, and I'll explain why in my next slide. Because at the equator, I want to focus on the equator here. What this you should see is the center of these circumpolar star trails at the uh, uh, horizon, basically, with the stars going overhead. Now, this is how it works on a globe model. You can basically see um, counterclockwise Northern Hemisphere, and then when it goes to the Southern Hemisphere, we see them, them traveling clock, clockwise. Um, so uh, this is the problem. If you're in South America and you look south and the trails are going in a clockwise direction, that's fine. You can look north and see them going in a counterclockwise direction here. That's perfectly fine. 
problem is that if you then move around with the same configuration to Asia on the equator, that is 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 um is is the wrong direction. That is the wrong direction. That is clockwise looking south and anti-clockwise looking north. So the flat earth people will have to explain how that works and the configuration that allows that to work. Um, the third thing I want to talk about is flight times. This is two flights, LAX to um, um, Tel Aviv um, in Israel, and this is Sydney to uh, Johannesburg. Um, they're both about the same time. Um, they're both about the same distance. This is how it works on a globe Earth. Again, both about the same time, about the same distance. Fantastic. This is how it works on a flat Earth, or rather doesn't work. Um, this this is twice or probably more than twice the amount of distance travelled from Sydney to Johannesburg and LAX to Israel. Um, and the uh, flat earthers will have to explain how the, the planes can suddenly double their speed over the speed of sound to get from one place to another. That'll be interesting to find out. Um, so those are my three questions. How can the Crux constellation be seen at the same time um, in Africa and south of Australia? both looking south in different directions, according to their model. Um, why are the solar circumpolar stars at the horizon at the equator rotating in the wrong direction if looking south in different places on the flat Earth? Why does that happen? Um, why do flights deviate so far from a straight line? But also, why, why is it half the distance, um, according to the flat Earth map, takes the same time? They're going to have to answer that question. And that's the uh, questions I have for them. Thank you. All right, cool beans. Okay, so as most of us know, the modern flat earth movement was started by a guy going by the name of Parallax. He was big mad that science was moving beyond the reach of everyday folks, requiring specialized degrees and even more specialized tools. He believed, as many flat earth advocates do, that every person should be able to do science for themselves and investigate the nature of the world we live on. You know what? I agree with that. Science is for everybody. But we don't always agree on the things that we find. Some of us look at the world and accept what the top-level scientists tell us, that it's a globe. Others look and notice that we can't see the curve of a flat planet from where we stand, so it looks flat, so it must be flat. If only there were a way we could remove our personal biases and objectively determine which of these is the case. Some kind of test, perhaps. Good news, we can, and all on our own, just like old Parallax dreamed of. The first way that comes to mind is to do it the way the ancients did it. Sticks and shadows. Eratosthenes used a well in Aswan where the sun shines down to the bottom only at noon on the summer solstice, and a rod in Alexandria some 800 kilometers north. But two rods will work just fine. If you place one stick in a spot where the sun is exactly overhead at solar noon and place another stick some distance directly north or south, the shadow cast by the second stick will give you a non-zero angle from which you can, with the distance between the sticks, calculate the circumference of the globe, the same as the ancients did. In fact, you don't even need the first stick to cast no shadow. It just makes the math easier. You can do the same thing with a measurement of the difference between the shadows. The second way is even easier, but a tad more expensive. Travel. If you can afford it, you can physically circumnavigate the globe. You can literally go see for yourself, and the fact that whether you go north or south around the poles, or east or west around the middle, and you'll eventually come back to where you started, only makes sense on a globe. You don't even need to take a plane. It'll take a while, but you can walk, taking a boat for the watery bits. Or, if you just want a quick test with no math involved, you can book a flight from Australia to Buenos Aires. You can take a commercial flight right over Antarctica and see for yourself that there's no ice wall, no edge. Both elements that every flat Earth model I've ever re heard of requires. Or, if travel doesn't suit you, just wait for the next lunar eclipse to be visible from where you live. As Magellan once said, they say the Earth is flat, but I know that it is round, for I have seen its shadow on the moon, and I have more faith in a shadow than in the empty words of the church. That shadow projects a circle every time, no matter what time the eclipse takes place, 
from viewed on Earth, and that can only be the result of a globe. But what's even more important is that there's any shadow at all. How, by Sagan's beard, could a lunar eclipse even be possible if the sun and the moon were both above the world? The Earth that the Earth can even come between the sun and the moon to cast a shadow of any shape is proof every person can see with their own eyes that the flat Earth model, which requires both celestial bodies to always be on the same side of the world, is nonsense. There are lots and lots of other tests, of course. Jaronism infamously proved the curvature of the planet with his failed hole-in-the-fence test, for example. But the simple fact is that every aspect of life on this planet, from the rising and setting of the sun, rather than it getting closer and farther, to the reality that time zones exist, all constantly reconfirm for each of us a thousand times a day that our world is the same shape as every other planet we can see with even our largest telescopes. A globe. So those are my tests, with no special tools, training, or reliance on the honesty of anybody else required. Sticks and shadows, observe a lunar eclipse, or just go out and see for yourself. The very essence of Parallax's philosophy. Now, I'm sure I, our, our esteemed opponents also have their observations to present, and we're going to talk about them over the course of the evening. But while I still have the floor, I'd like to pose a question for their consideration. Anybody can dig for data that seems to back up their position, but why hold that particular position at all? What reason do they have to subscribe to Flat Earth in the first place to motivate them to try to find a way to justify the belief they already hold? For example, I subscribe to the globe model because I have no reason to question what science is telling me. As I've just recounted, I can easily verify the facts for myself should I have any doubt, and I have done several of these things. Overcoming both established science and plainly observable reality is a very high burden of proof to bear. And I'm even more interested in why they adopt the contrary position than I am in how they intend to demonstrate it. Thank you. All righty. Well, thank you so much, Ember, for your introductory statement. And you, Mark, as well. I forgot to thank you. I just kind of handed it off. So thank you to everybody at this point for uh, their introductory statements. And I uh, just want to remind everybody, uh, if you haven't already, uh, if you like this type of discussion, you want to see more of this happening, hit that like button, share this in that contentious space, send it out to your mother. Who cares, right? Have fun with it. Uh, and one other quick little note here. Uh, you know, we all sometimes fail to pay attention to details. Uh, like, you know, I forgot to shave my neck beard tonight and it doesn't look so great um but if you see d beside me oh over here see i gotta follow my mirror on my screen see over here uh it says this is on the podcast already uh J james has already gotten a few questions about some of the upcoming debates that are being posted on the channel uh those are all debates that have already happened uh, so they are just that is an advertisement that they are just going to be on the podcast um i did say uh in your defense, actually not in your defense, when he said people are saying this, I was like, really? So yeah, there's no defense for you. It's it's podcast only time. So we're going to kick it into open floor discussion. We usually kick it to the other side to uh, make a little bit of a quick response to what they've heard um, and then just try to let it naturally flow from there. So uh, Jim, Flatzoid, the floor is yours. Yeah, uh, I, I'd love to respond. Uh, I do want uh, our esteemed um uh, amber and mark amber and mark to talk about newton's third law of motion cycle law of thermodynamics inverse square law of light before we get done tonight but but i will respond to um you know you talk about a lunar eclipse we had a selenalian eclipse november 9 2022 top down moon sun appearing in the sky at the same time selenalian eclipse top down there's going to be another one in october I don't need to go any further. I just debunked your lunar eclipse right there, proving your ball. <laughs> se 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 second, se second, second thing that gets me is the Santiago, uh, uh, Chile to Sydney, Australia nonsense. When you look at when you look at a one way stop, they stop in LAX and they stop in Dallas, Fort Worth. And if you look at some sort of a uh, uh, a flat Earth map, that makes perfect sense straight line land location to land location that's what they do they don't go down around your ball they don't do it just look at just look at what they do from from sydney to santiago the stop is in lax and dallas they do that for some reason 
land location to land location. Third. Jim, Jim sorry, third. can I just can I just Go say ahead. something on that point though? Don't you think it's odd that they choose the one that just doesn't make sense to them, but ignore the 99 that debunks their globe with the flight paths? Yeah, it, it's just, mm. you, you know, I, I find these arguments, you know, you know, Ember and Mark, I've heard these arguments and I, I kind of chuckled to myself because it's cool, man. You, you know, you need to dial it back, bro, and come up with some other, you know, you know, new stuff because this gets a little bit boring after a while. My friends, <laughs> there is no circumnavigation <laughs> north south there is none around your ball and comes up the other side there is no documentation of that whatsoever and you can use a great circle route on a stationary plane you can use that just fine but when you come on here and tell us that there is northern south circumnavigation that you can go over antarctica and come up the other side that is pure bunk and I'm sorry, right, Jim. I, I, okay. I'd like to just yeah, yeah. drop in at that so, point yeah. because it's, it's 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 a little bit preachy. I I kind of want to oh. borrow what Flatsoid just said and point out that you're selecting the routes that work for your model and ignoring the other ones that actually exist. You can go on, you know, kayak.com and book a flight for yourself over Antarctica right now. No, they not can. only exist, you can go do okay, it right okay, now. Shows. So going well, over I'd the like to address. Going over well, yeah, Antarctica. I'd like just just a sec, flat side. I, you know, let let Ember talk for a start, and I'd like to address some of the things as well. Okay, so so let Ember talk. Don't just jump in over the top of him. He just asked me a question. I'm responding to it, Mark. You were talking over me. Okay, so so I want to respond to some of these things that's thrown out because he went through a lot there. Um, the the this gish gallop of like multiple things is you know let me time to respond like um action and reaction is a second law of mo movement i'm not sure what you think is the problem with action and reaction on on uh, a globe earth um you you basically the cell uh Santa Helian eclipse is basically um um refraction through the earth's atmosphere and we understand perfectly well why this happens and it also um, explains perfectly why in a lunar eclipse, the moon turns red, which maybe you can give an explanation of that. Um, I do notice that you've addressed none of our things and basically said the burden of proof is ours. It's not ours. It's yours. This is this flat earth on trial. Um, so it's kind of weird that you're sort of burden shifting. Um, the, the population centers in the, um, the southern um, hemisphere are basically very, very spread out. So the reason why that they're, they're basically diverting flights is purely for logistics. That's all it is. But as Ember said, you're ignoring the ones that completely blow your position out of the water, like Perth to Johannesburg, which is actually the one I brought up. And you haven't addressed that at all. I so did, I it, did just it. address it, Mark. I told you that a that uh, flight route from Santiago to Sydney flies over LAX, Dallas, Fort Worth, stops there, land location, land location, three degrees nose up. You don't like it. It's okay, bro. You, you know, it, it's just fine. Sometime you, 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 we'll get, you, you, know, you know, when you say flat earth is on trial, you know, we're not on trial because we can see farther than we're supposed to. That's literally to. the debate. Uh, we, no, that's uh, literally Mark, the debate. We are sorry. We, 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 we can see farther than we are supposed to build okay, okay. on a globe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, I, so I Mark, talk, Mark, just Mark, Mark, I didn't talk Mark, about. No, no, no. Let, just one second. Go ahead, Mark, uh, uh, let me finish up for another 20 okay, seconds. Okay. okay. My position is not on trial. My position is the correct position that you can see by observations, experiments, and 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 just you know you experience a stationary topographical plane. You do not experience a spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space, never. And and your position is sun, sun pagan worship by Hermes Trismegistus that Copernicus talked about on the revolution of the heavenly spheres and Newton talked about in the Emerald Tablet. They gave time to Hermes Trismegistus and, and, and Hermes Trismegistus was sun pagan worship. And you guys changed it in the 1970s to go to the great attractor where everything is going around uh, in the universe, a black hole. All right. One minute for the other side yes. there. Yeah, so you haven't actually addressed anything at all because I brought up the the ones that debunk you, like direct Perth to Johannesburg, which you just went back to the ones that do um um are not direct routes. You're just going back over the same thing. You're like a broken record. Um, the whole idea that we brought up these things for you to address, and you've addressed none of them. 
Um, then I said, well, what's the problem with this, the um, law of uh, action and reaction, um, Newton's third law? And, and you don't address that either. Like, why is it that you're just preaching now and sort of saying, nah, is your entire response? Go, Ember. I'd like to save some time for you, mate. All right. Uh, so a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, Jim, you showed the globe at the beginning. Of course, that's a school model. You're, you're confusing the map for the place. That's understandable, though. Um, axial tilt, you claim that that's due to uh, some protoplanet slamming into yeah. the Earth. The, yeah. yeah, that's that's one of the models for the possible formation of the moon, but it isn't really that's involved with the axial tilt because the axial tilt shifts. That's why we get a different North Star every few thousand years. However, the presence of the moon does help moderate that. Um, but there's, there's so many things, uh, Milky Way, you can see it with your own eyes, go out in the dark, you can see the freaking galaxy, you're gonna tell me it doesn't exist, and still wondering how a lunar eclipse happens on a flat Earth model. How, how, how do you, uh, go, go ahead, Flatsoid, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, I just want to bring this back down to what we asked in the opening. The opening was, can we do, bring it down to Earth? where we actually live, where we can actually test it and repeatedly show it to be. Now, talking about the galaxies, yes, we see things in space, as you put it. The problem is your space violates the second law of thermodynamics. So that's why we cannot go there, because you cannot demonstrate this space vacuum to exist. Because when you do try and uh, demonstrate, you're always going to have to have containment based on gas behavior. Now, based on the plane routes, like we said, you want to take the 1% and ignore the 99% that doesn't agree with you. That is called cherry picking. So in other words, it's just a fallacy. We do not need to go and explain 1% of the roots that doesn't make sense to you while you ignore the other 99%. So let's go to something more empirical. Have you been able to demonstrate to us any measured curvature or having gas pressure without containment or the rotation of Earth? As, yes, we've as been able I, to. Sorry, one second, Mark. Uh, yep. Yeah, just a second. As I said in my opening, I explained to you how you can measure the curvature yourself. You can do it. That's calculate. Not whenever measure. you, you said want. With your own words. Sorry, you said with your own words, calculate, not measure. Well, yes, and you take way, a measurement and then you calculate. Based on flat Earth measurements, that angle is flat. That's what in my opening I also stated. It, that it measurement doesn't you took work was on flat. a flat Earth. I mean, you, okay, can, you can. I'm sorry. The angle is flat. How result. is an angle flat? How how do you get a flat? At, what is a flat angle? All angles are flat. Your adjacent always has to be a straight flat baseline. That that shadow you're measuring is based okay. on a ninety degree angle. So if you've got a protractor, that's a flat angle, is it? Even though the edge of the yes. protractor is curved. <laughs> that <laughs> right. arc curve. That arc curve. Is only based on a 360 degree based from a 90 degree angle baseline. Yes, but if you put it on the y axis, then <laughs> this is crazy. Like, oh, you it can't be curved because your angle that you're measuring that curvature with, the arc curve, the, the original angle that you're measuring with it is flat. That is <laughs> nonsense. Sorry, what's an angle, Mark? We're going to put this down to the basics. What's an angle? An angle is the uh, uh, difference between two, um, two two lines, basically. Straight lines? Yes. Meeting at a vertex? Mm hmm So if you have a curved adjacent baseline, how are you going to have an angle? Curved adjacent baseline. Could you explain what you mean by that? You guys he, are claiming means... the baseline to be a curved Earth, not flat. So how are you going to have an angle measurement for that i see what you mean so there's a difference yeah. between level and flat you can make sure that something is level without it having to be flat for uh example you can take two hills and run a beam across them and the beam can be level even though the ground is wavy just to illustrate yeah but likewise mm -hmm. you can have a flat surface um let's take this thing for example and have it tilt like this it's flat, but not level. Correct. But you do know they are synonymous, though. Flat and level are synonymous. No, no, I literally not. just showed you they're not. He just, I can bring he it on screen. I can. He yeah, just, well, that bar, did, did, that, with, re, that reference. You, you want to show him the box again? Show him the box again. Mark Reed, can I talk? You have that reference that you just put between the two hills. Was that reference flat and level 
relative to what level parallel to your what the ground correct because no point higher than the other so when you put that horizontal baseline from hill to hill you literally concede that that hill has this has not got a different zenith angle than the other hill they have exactly the same parallel they're round they don't have I mean, well i suppose you could have a pointy hill they, but they can point in different the directions hills not even on a flat earth or a curved earth it, it, they're the hills, hills. The hill's rounded, you realize that, but we can still calculate the angle that the top of that hill is at. Just disproving make, your point completely. No, making so my point. The hill when is you... still round, but we can calculate the angle, which means that you're... Like, if Even if you just look at basic, like, preschool or kindergarten, a, a circle, it's got, like, an angle, and you can calculate the arc. It's, it doesn't make it... The angle doesn't make the surface flat, or it doesn't make the points in between flat or rounded. It's it's irrelevant to it. It just it, calculates I, the angle. Mark, I I suspect we may have fallen for a red herring on this geometry thing. Yeah. Because we are yeah. we are way hey. off the subject of no. them showing the flat earth as a thing. Flat earth, okay. yeah. Hey, 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 what, hey, please show the flat earth, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Uh, uh, okay, guys. Uh, okay. I, I just want everybody to know that Mark said that the Selenalian eclipse from uh, November 9th and one's future are because of refraction, even though it's mm -hmm. top down. So the, the light just actually turned itself upside down. Cool story, Mark. Uh, you, you know, okay. it's really, really cool. Hey, Mark, Mark and, and Amber, how do you how, how would you explain? I got so many things, you know, you know, to say I'm not on trial here. My stationary plane is not on trial here. And so What's the topic of the debate, it, it, it kind of is. I found out about the topic of the debate yesterday. So I am coming okay. in here. Well, I, cool I story, found out about the topic of the, the debate. Topic of the debate? <laughs> Mark, 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 you're over talking. Cool story, me. bro. Mark, What's the topic of the debate? Over talking me, Mark. Well, Mark, I asked a question. He doesn't want to Mark, answer. It's just clarifying the topic Mark, of the debate. Mark, hey, Mark, 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 drink some water. Cool down, bro. Um, it, it's you know, how do you explain the watchtower at the Grand Canyon on the east side? Uh, the watchtower, six feet observation height, looking across to the west side, 70 miles and six feet observation height. There should be 3,000 foot of drop on your spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space. There is none. You go to the south rim, you look across to the north rim. The south rim is 6,800 feet. The north rim is 8,200 feet. There is a, a forest on the north side. It should have a drop of 216 feet at six feet observation height. You should be able to see that uh, drop, but you don't. Uh, and, you, you know, guys, and, and it's very, very simple. You see too far on a stationary plane. You see too far when when the optics is just fine. And you, you see too far perspective things uh, in perspective. Things will get smaller and they will start with angular resolution to disappear from the bottom up. That is a stationary plane. That is not a spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space. You guys are so wrong. I want to ask Amber and I want to ask Mark, what has the globe ever done for you? existed gives us a nice place to live okay <laughs> okay so so this whole idea of this drop kind of thing you obviously haven't used a curve calculator or taken refraction into oh. account because light does refract that is oh, a, that cool. is a given we can show that light refracts in a number of different experiments like it's not even questionable that light does reflect uh the center hellion eclipse i'm not sure how you're talking about how it's right above kind of thing that's a weird so, okay. thing to say um it's it's, it's a so top down to eclipse mark. Because it's a top uh, down eclipse a top down i don't even know what that's supposed to supposed opposite to way around like it, mark Okay. Obviously, you don't. Yeah, mark. yeah. It's it, it's it's weird because it's just a just a lunar eclipse. It's weird. You don't know what a top down eclipse is, and don't know. What okay, so really yeah, I'd like when to you're going to make up finish, terms, that's okay. of course we yeah. don't know what those mean. Yeah. Oh, make it's upside up, down. <laughs> it's upside down. Upside down. I upside said, down top, eclipse. I said top down, not upside down. Ember. Oh I no, said he says it's upside down. down. What? No, I said upside down. Upside down. Top down. It is top down. And, and no, 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 it's like so it said it was upside down. Means. So you guys can't even agree on what no, this eclipse listen. is. Just hold on a second, guys. Let's uh we'll, we're gonna hand it back <laughs> over to Flat Soy there because he's yeah, trying to I'm get saying it yeah, Amber was saying upside down. Now I'm trying to say that's upside down. He's talking about inverted. That's what Jim's talking about. And inverted. that's why I'm trying to show. 
inverted exactly 180 around it goes if you say the globe says it should be on the right it's showing not on the right it's showing inverted like you're holding a mirror in front of you it's totally on the right an inverted writing in, image in respective to where you can't just we say have right writing because... it's, their writing is inverted that's what he means so you mean it's, it's mirrored, okay? Um, mirrored. I'm I'm not sure how that mirrored. applies. What? But yeah, let's let I'm, speak I'm Amber. Can you say straw man for me three times? I could, but then you know you might appear uh, behind don't... me. Um, I'm still I mean, curious I'm not, I, I, I how appreciate this straw this man even hey, happen. Hey, hey Amber, beat that straw man up. Beam him up, Scotty. Beat that straw man up. <laughs> So how do the eclipses happen, a Senehelian eclipse happen on a flat Earth? So what is any actually eclipse. well, let's let's stick to the Senehelian first. Um Selahel I can never say that word Selenelian. Sel Selenelian eclipse. How how does that work on a flat earth if the so I presume because you're saying it's encompassed that the sun and the moon are both within some sort of dome or container, is that correct? First, we don't sorry. We just Go want to ahead. point out you guys are reversing the burden onto us. He asked you that it's impossible. This is flat earth on trial. Listen, Look, this listen, is a dodge. This is a, a dodge. Sorry, you can respond. Can I ask absolute dodge. Okay. So you. I asked a question. question. The question was asked to you. Now you're trying to reverse it back onto us. That is not a yes. question. That's just a reversal of burden. Yeah, yeah. Too, so I, I've answered it right. I've said that the refractive forces from gravity when when the, the the light goes through the atmosphere it is bent in a downwards direction allowing you to see the images of both the sun and the moon in the sky very very low and close to the horizon um but but they're there at the same time and that's how we explain it what i'm saying is how does that work if the the sun and the moon are both contained within this dome thing that you've got. Mark, but that's not what? shifting the burden of proof. That's answering the question. And then this this debate is flat earth on trial, and you've done nothing but burden shift this entire time. So how because, does that work? Where's because your you're spinning the other side there. Because you're spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space is scientifically impossible. And Mark, you know, we're only 55 minutes discussed, and then we have 35 minutes question and answer. I understand that. Uh, Mark, Ember, if you don't want me to shift, tell me I, I shouldn't shift. But what does a rocket uh, uh, propel itself off in outer space? Can you help me? What do you mean? Expanding what it gases. What, yeah. Expanding gases in a, in a 10 to the negative 17 tour. What does it push off of? Pushes the, off the, the force the gas. inserted by the what, gas. What gas is there in the vacuum of outer space? Ten the negative. No, no, no. Or... The gas being <laughs> the ignited. The, ex just the, ex the expansion. Gas. The expansion of the gas being ignited because basically it pushes out. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That's the third law of it, of of movement. So that action pushes against the rocket, like causing it to move. Is is there any on Earth? Newton's third law of motion works awesome. Works everywhere. You're going to the ten to the negative seventeen tour of outer space. The most we can ever test here terrestrially is ten to the negative six. That's eleven more zeros, bro. What does a rocket push off of? And if you put a candle in a jar and put the top on it, what happens to the candle over time? It goes out. You can have no yeah. ignition and you can have no propulsion in your fairy tale outer space. Now you can want to live on the globe and live in your fairy tale outer space, but you guys violate, you guys violate Newton's third law of motion, second law of thermodynamics and inverse square law of light. And you don't care. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention that they did not answer any of the questions that I put to them. We're trying to engage and answer the questions. What you they're are. doing is deflecting to just these, these silly kind of, well, gotcha. Um, the third law of, of movement doesn't work in ours. Of course it does. It, it's basically that, that rocket fuel is ignited, causing it to expand that pushes. What does it ignite rocket. with? It, it, uh, Half of the rocket uh, fuel is system. liquid oxygen. It brings its own oxygen. Well, That's I, part I, of the I, rocket fuel. I, 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 yeah, so so rocket fuel is has a like so the reason why a candle oh goes God. out but rocket fuel doesn't is because you're depriving that 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 candle of oxygen of of the thing that it needs to burn. But rocket fuel has that in it. 
so oh, it sure. does okay. burn okay. and ignite. So, I mean, this is basically a, a no, it is. To okay. Okay. Here on Earth, it is. Okay, but not in okay. your fairy tale Let's outer get it space. Over the flat Jim, everyone. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Jim, Jim. Maybe we should ask them to demonstrate us a rocket igniting and working in a vacuum. Can we have a demonstration for this, or is it just going to be a fairy tale belief? I mean, I don't have one in my pocket, but uh, <laughs> you don't have a rocket in your pocket, right? But SpaceX, <laughs> those live launches, pretty often, and you can watch the launch all the way from the launch pad until the moment the satellites deploy. Usually, cool. you've guys satellites watched the movie Gravity. Deploy. You guys watched cool. uh, Gravity before the movie Gravity. I have not. With Sandra Bullock, I've seen it. Okay, I've cool. Uh, did that rocket work in space? Was it real or was it just a movie? Ah, so you're basically mistaking a work so of I'm fiction asking for a demonstration. For the real thing. That was based upon the real world. But that's like saying, hey, because th the same argument applies if you say, hey, the the uh, war, the um, civil war, the US civil war was in a movie, therefore the real thing couldn't possibly have happened. You're making <laughs> exactly the same argument. No, well, that's exactly that's the a same straw man. argument. That's a straw man. No, the it's argument not. Is, it's exactly the same the argument. The argument is you guys are yeah. claiming a rocket to work without having any demonstration in history that it is possible to work. You are claiming something that violates the second law of thermodynamics and violates Newton's third law of it motion. Doesn't. Yes, it, it does. You require no, friction it for it to move. Where's your friction? No, in no, space? no. You just don't understand those laws. That's the problem. You think you you straw man the laws to say, hey, it can't work in space because there's no oxygen. We explain to you, hey, there's oxygen solution in the jet fuel oh, itself, allowing it to ignite. Well, I mean, I don't have any rocket fuel on me at the moment, Flat. So I don't know if That's... you've got some there. Maybe you do. I mean, you seem to be, you know, doing whatever over there. Um. Anyway, look. Um. They have it in them. Like this. Oh this is the whole god, point. They have them in them. Oh my god. Yes, they have an, an I, oxidization agent. Yes. I, I presume you guys have seen rocket failures, videos of, of rockets trying to take off and, and something goes Earth. wrong and they yeah, explode. Here on Earth, yeah. Here on right. Earth. On Do you know why the fireball is so very big? Terrestrially, yes. Yeah, Just you know question. why the fireball is so big because when they it go has wrong? Oxygen terrestrially, Ember. In the rocket fuel. No, in the, rocket in the air around the, it. The, Ember. the majority Ember. of the fuel in a rocket is liquid O2. Hey, Ember. That's has... what explodes is the O2 tanks. Hey, Ember, in... has the globe ever taken you out to dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. are you in love with the globe? I mean, is, has is the, the flat globe, earth is, taken you to dinner? Is, is, is the globe in you? Is this something we didn't know are previously? You the are you dating the flat earth? Oh, we all find out. You're dating the I, flat I earth. I explained in my opening why I subscribe what? to the globe cool. model. I'm still cool. wondering why you guys subscribe to the flat model. Because I mean, I'm hearing too far. I, oh, just a moment, Jim. I, I I hear lots of nitpicks, not, but it's nothing but incredulity. There's no okay. substance to it. Cool story, bro. Okay, we got. <laughs> it is got... a cool story. Like you can say, we see too far. Cool story, okay. bro. Can okay. you demonstrate we can't anything? See too far. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's that's good enough for now. Uh, okay, if you listen to my opening, even Jim's opening, we were talking specifically about observations and demonstrations. Note, your guys' belief violates things like natural law, so it's not on us to demonstrate these mm. things. It's on you guys to demonstrate you can have gas pressure without containment. It's you to demonstrate that you can have curved base angle measurements, which is impossible. It throws an angle away. It's for you guys to demonstrate Earth's rotation. Instead, you're trying to take us to Narnia without trying to first prove Narnia exists. That's why okay. I said it's trying okay. to so, so I just want to address that for one second, Ember. So basically, your misunderstanding of the laws of thermodynamics and the laws of movement, you're basically saying, hey, they violate these laws because you don't understand how they work. Oh you're God. basically straw manning them and then saying, hey, they violate them. It's not actually a refutation. So your own criteria of they violating this thing is not actually true to begin with. You just need that to be true for your flat earth to work. So you have to believe 
believe they're being violated, which is kind of a bit ridiculous. Um, what I want to point out is that we're answering all of your questions and you're basically giving us the response of nah. -uh. So when you're saying, why does this thing happen in space? Why does that thing happen in space? We're saying, hey, there's, there's an oxidizer in the rocket fuel that ignites and keeps it ignited when it comes off. I mean, I've just looked it up. Basically, it's um, liquid hydrogen. Um, RP1 is burned with liquid oxygen or LOX. Now, you're basically saying, no, that's not the answer. Then what is in rocket fuel? So, Why, how Mark, does rocket fuel work? Mark, no, 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 no. How does rocket fuel Mark, work? Don't dodge. Did, Mark, don't go to another subject. Mark, What's in did you look fuel? it up on Google, Wikipedia, NASA, or, or uh, G GPT? That's not an answer. What is in rocket fuel then? Did you, What's see, in rocket did, fuel? Did you look it up? No, don't Wikipedia dodge. Don't Google? dodge. Go, did you look it up? On in yes or no? Did you look it up on Google or Wikipedia? They're not going to answer. Jim, what's in rocket fuel? That is a non sequitur for what we're talking about. Mark, you're really good at non sequitur. Mark, uh, bottom, bottom line, Yeah, Mark. dodge. Bottom dodge, line, dodge, Mark. Dodge. The Newton's third law of motion works Watch the perfectly dance. down here on Earth. But because you guys love your globe and love your outer space, you will absolutely neglect everything in science because your ball your spinning space ball is so scientifically impossible that you actually come on here and tell us that newton's third law of motion works in in fairy tale narnia outer space you tell us that second law of thermodynamics doesn't count and you and and we haven't got to the inverse square law of life what's in I, what's I, in rocket fuel i would love it that's a non sequitur i don't care <laughs> we were just talking that. about rocket fuel but that's mark, a non sequitur it can't <laughs> wow push, mark I, it can't push off of nothing it can ignite it. when there's no oxygen i it told you there was oxygen. here on earth but you guys say it works in the then back what's in rocket fuel? okay okay Mark. it does what's in not matter fuel? what okay. what's okay. in rocket fuel then jim i've said this is what's in rocket fuel you've said that's false then what's in rocket fuel hey, is, is every answer you globers give the correct answer yes or no 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 or, or not is everyone, it just an no. answer okay guys so anyway, well, Mark, at least we're just, giving it, answers. It just oxidizes. To start. It just oxidizes, okay? But the thing is, the claim is that it works in a 10 to the minus 17 tall vacuum that has no containment. That's the problem. I'm sorry, it does have oxidizers in it. Is that what you said? In on Earth, does the rocket on, take on, off? No, in rocket fuel, does, does rocket fuel does, have oxidizers? Does that rocket take off in an atmosphere? Plain. I, I'm sorry. I, I thought I misheard. Did you or did you not say that <laughs> rocket fuel had oxidizing? Do you get oxidizing it? of the rocket? Atmos plane no is one... amazing. Yeah, I don't like saying atmosphere because it's actually because an oxygen. Because spheres in it. I, I, I get it. Yeah. yeah. It's, but I, anyway, it's anyway, the touch. rocket the rocket takes off from the ground on Earth, correct? Where there's uh -huh. air around it, gas pressure. So that means we already got containment for this gas pressure. Now, once it's taken off, it has momentum. That's why when you see it goes high up where there's less pressure, it flares off. Get it? So why is it that you guys are claiming these rockets are able to ignite and move around in a vacuum where they are losing even propulsion at high altitudes because there's no air? They're not losing propulsion at high altitudes. Prove it. What are you talking Prove it. about? Prove it. Why would they be losing propulsion? Because I mean, they, they lose the propulsion. Well, I, I don't want to get too sidetracked. Let's hand it over to Ember. Ember. We haven't Rocket heard from three. Ember in a little bit, guys. Sure. Yeah, I, I I don't want to get too sidetracked on on the mechanics of rocketry because that's not what the topic is tonight. Um, yeah. I have heard a lot about how a globe supposedly violates several natural laws, which is an ironic thing to me because how the hell does a flat Earth work? in conjunction with the laws of physics as we understand it general relativity tells us that massive bodies on the order of planets crush themselves into spheres which is why every other massive body we see the moon mars mercury venus the sun itself jupiter are all spheres why would earth be different and how does that not violate physics hey ember but, is, so, general, so is general relativity physical or theoretical it's a mathematical description. Oh, math proves math proves general relativity. The bending warp in space time is that what you said, Amber? We can conduct tests based on the predictions of general relativity. What and so far, what all test of them have been confirmed. What test? No, it hasn't. What? Show me one. 
Eddington, 1919. Eddington, the stars 19... bent behind the sun. Oh, you ever heard of a... two two out... hey, guys? Two out of 36 plates that they took on May 29th, 1919. Eddington, two parties. He let up one. The boys met in the Royal Society on November 6th, 1919. Used two plates, which are now nowhere to be found out of 36 and said, have you seen the plates? Uh, either one of you, Ember and Mark, have you seen the plates? I've seen no. photos. Okay, great. Mm. I Those plates are no longer available. Two out of 36 plates told okay. us that Einstein became the boy that saved the earth going around the sun when he woke up on November 7th, 1919. <sighs> Show me Show me anywhere today where the bending and warping of space time is a physical well, thing. Well, not just GPS that, satellites. GPS well, satellite. Yeah. Oh, oh, and, oh and, I don't think they believe in satellites. Works on Cartesian or something. So your satellites work on Cartesian coordinate systems. So again, so how does somebody flat. in the center it's, of Australia? It's not the get coordinates. A GPS it's the time yeah. dilation because they're higher up. Time away dilation. From the massive oh center of the God. earth. Time you dilation. Have to how did they prove in... time dilation? Ember, how yeah. did they prove? G give me the experiment that proved time dilation. Give it to me. Atomic clock. <laughs> Cesium yeah. decay. Yes. Yeah. So give they me, used hey, atomic Ember. We, we said radio Ember. atomic clock. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. Ember, you said time dilation. Give me an experiment uh, that's been done that has proved di time dilation. Help me out. Over to you, Ember. Okay. So um, atomic clocks is one. We kept one stationary on the ground. We put another on a plane and sent it up at high altitude. Just that tiny difference in dif uh, how far down the gravity well they were yielded a measurable difference. Are you talking another about one, heating 1971? I'm yeah. not familiar with the reference, but... Sure, we'll go with that. Yeah, okay, but another one, one yeah. if you don't like atomic clocks, is type 1A supernova in distant galaxies. Oh, the light so, curve follows so cool. a predictable path. It always takes so X cool. amount of time. But on high mm -hmm. redshift galaxies, oh. where we see time dilation, oh. they take longer in accord with the amount of time dilation we expect to find. Here's your fairy tale, guys. Here's your fairy tale. We are told that the universe is somewhere between 28 billion light years and 200 billion light years long. But we're also told that it's expanding to four times the speed of light, which is 186,200 miles per second. But that has to be based on something between 28 billion and 200 billion light years. Do you know what that number is? I have no idea. Can you? Can yeah, you so you've sounded me? confused. You've confused. No, I'm not. I'm not there, confused. You're basically, Mark. Mark, excuse me. I'm not could I confused. respond? Could I respond, please? Oh, sorry, could I respond? Yeah, Jim, just try to control yourself. Um, though, so where you, what you've described is sort of the, the galaxy expanding at that rate, and that's not necessarily true. You've what is what the is the truth? Too, but, hey, can Educate I can I speak, there, please? Jim. You've got no self control, do you? Um, the, the the universe is expanding at that rate, not necessarily the the galaxy, which is the Milky Way. So you know you, you've mis I didn't say misinterpreted the Milky Way, guys. what I said. The universe. Uh, you said the galaxy. Actually, I said the but, I know, said the you, universe. Look, people can wind it back and see what you said. Cool. But, you know, twenty-eight uh, uh, billion yeah. to two hundred billion long. In yeah. Light so years, the expansion. The yeah, yeah. So, um, and I just I just want to got sort of get back on, and it's interesting that Ember brings up sort of the the um um the universe and how we know that it's in motion, which is one of the criteria that you said. One is parallax measurements for stars that are near us, and the other one is uh, Type One supernova, which are standard candles for how far things are away. So we can actually sort of um, know that we're in motion and where things are moving from parallax and standard candles. Can I just ask, are those uh, parallax angles based on the assumption from Kepler's uh, third law, planetary motion? Um, I don't think so. Um, not, not parallax, no. Okay. I mean, parallax, people have known about parallax for ages. No, your like assumption, parallax, your assumption parallax, is we can, based with We Chris... can observe parallax here on Earth. What are you talking oh, yeah. about? Parallax is flat-based, flat I agree, because the angle taken from oh. parallax is a flat baseline, correct? So measured flat, then calculated globe to, to the globe. But that's my whole point. When you take your parallax missions, you guys are on the assumption that Venus and Earth are the same size. Look, I didn't say parallax. That's why you have Earth your distances. Was... Hang on, That's hang on, hang on. No, I got to address that. I got to address that. 
I'm not saying that paradox. Mm. Look, this was particular to the question: what shows us that the 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 motion of the stars and that everything, and that was Jim's concern, and he brought it up. I'm not saying that it proves a globe. I'm saying it proves our movement around the sun, which was Jim's concern. That would be globe. We don't move around the sun. The sun moves around us. Hey, the the the, the it could be completely flat, and we could still move around the the, the sun. That's that's no. You know, we definitely I mean, stationary. We're trying to work out the yeah, Earth. So that's, that's, that's not what weird. parallax shows. Yeah, parallax shows it's... we are staying still, and the luminaries are moving above us. That's what parallax shows. But that's what I'm saying. You guys are basing your whole no, argument on a second there, Mark. the assumption that Venus and Earth are the same size, and we both planets. It's in not an assumption. We sent probes and measured it through yeah. a second or therm a second law thermodynamics violation. You haven't proven no. that you can violate it yet to say you make that claim doesn't violate it um if there's a dome where the meteorites come from oh now we're going to run away and obfuscate from the thing i just asked no, can you demonstrate just, you're claiming you're the claiming there's entropy. a container can you yes all gas yeah so so you've been asking us a lot of this. questions hold it hold it hold i've already spoken you've been this asking debate, us mate. a lot of questions and this is flat earth on trial so we're asking you <laughs> questions but you never answer them you always dodge to something else so I, where, how do meteorites teleport through this dome of yours? Sorry, obfuscation. First, demonstrate the second or thermodynamics violation before I answer your meteorites. How's that? There's, there's okay, no violation. So you, you, you can't answer. That's cool. Yeah. No. You won't answer. Give yeah. me. No, so, because it's so a this is the dodge that people do. This is the yeah, dodge that dodging. people do when they don't want to answer a question. They say, hey, I'm going to pose you something first. And it's always, oh, well, I'm going to pose you another thing first. And, and they never answer the question. Meteorites, explain how it happens. Just quickly, briefly, so, how Mark, does it happen? Mark, again, Mark Reed, you yeah, are no claiming, you are no claiming something that violates the second law of thermodynamics. Okay. Yeah, no answer. Your meteorites. Your meteorites come from that violation okay i don't need to answer something that you haven't provided as true yet so first prove to me demonstrate the gas pressure without containment which violates second law of thermodynamics then i can go on to meteorites for you because it's it, actually very of, simple you there's need a lot to of demonstrate gas pressure how it without. does yeah. violate it because it's yeah. in perfect keeping with the rules as we understand them we can <laughs> observe for ourselves and, and what rules are those? How does That's a meteorite come? Sorry. How does a meteorite come from a proposed law violation in the first place? You guys claim it comes from space, which violates the second law of thermodynamics. That's what so you're where claiming. Does it come from space violates it thermodynamics. From? That's interesting. Yes. yes, it does. Jim, what are your thoughts on this here? We have hey, in a second. I, 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 I love this. That you know, I'll, I'll thank James again for having me on. Here, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna you know, go into three things. I'm just gonna hit on one. Here's the uh, here's the belief system of the globe, and for everybody oh. listening, I want you to, to you know to remember this. Get uh, ready you know, for we, the straw man. We 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 had we we have redshift and we have blue shift. You know, ever expanding universe, and and we're told that it's expanding at four times the speed of light, hundred eighty six thousand two hundred miles per second. But and it's ever expanding Hubble nineteen twenty eight twenty seven. But we're told the Andromeda Andromeda galaxy is blue shifting. It's coming toward us. And in 2 billion years, with a B, it will run into the Milky Way galaxy. It will run into the Milky Way galaxy. But because there's so much space in the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxy, don't worry, nothing's going to you know, hit itself. We're probably going to be just fine in 2 billion years. Cool story, bro. And, and I've had uh, astronomers tell me that's what's happening. Guys, you cannot support that in any way if you're an astronomer phd if you're an astrophysicist phd you use imagination okay mm -hmm. so Faith um so i see that you're a bro lever because you keep saying bro over and over and over <laughs> sort of your, about, your mantra dude? for hey, when you can't excuse about dude? me i'm talking now i'm, can't about talk, dude I'm talking dog. now please I'll call you dude and i'm dog talking now, now. Right, How's let's, that? Let's um so head back tomorrow <laughs> Nice, a bro lever. I've got a bro lever on our, my hands. Um, okay, so okay, whatever this you whole say, idea dude. of, of okay, red dude. shift and blue shift, we can demonstrate every, that. Like there is, Jim, I don't want to mute you. What an angry boy. Um, so the red shift and blue <laughs> oh shift God. definitely do occur. We can show these with light, you know, the Doppler effect as you move towards light or away from light. And tons of experiments have been done on I don't know what your problem with that is. Terrestrially, but, um, yes. The whole you. idea, that, excuse me, Jim, you've got no self-control. Have some discipline in your life. 
Um, the whole idea that because the universe is expanding, every galaxy must be, again, you're confused between the universe and galaxies. Just because the entire universe is expanding doesn't mean that individual galaxies have to necessarily be moving away from us. They can be moving towards us. What they're describing with the expansion is the expansion of the whole universe. You're looking locally and saying, oh, because that's not expanding towards us, uh, away from us, then it's got to be a violation. It's not. It's just not. Um, you, you, you basically have galaxies moving in all directions throughout the universe. And, and that one happens to be moving towards us. And I don't think anyone's saying, hey, if that hits the Milky Way, it's going to be fine. I think it's probably going to be a catastrophic event. Um, you know, that's what everybody says. So I don't know where you get your information from. Sure. Um, hey, okay, first of all, can I just say, have you guys have you guys seen an explosion before? Which mm -hmm. way does the sure. shrapnel go? <laughs> <laughs> Which way does the shrapnel go? What directions? vector? Yeah, thank you. There you go. Yes, but Jumps can point. two pieces of shrapnel collide? They still go outwards, not Can two pieces back of to shrapnel the source. collide? Can they two don't pieces go back. of shrapnel collide? Can, I talk can two them? pieces I... of shrapnel collide? It's an easy question. It's a yes or no. Control yourself, mate. Please. Listen, as soon as they collide, they still go away from the explosion, sure. not going back. But they still back. collide. But they collide. still collide, don't they? Hold so on. from collide the perspective of one away. piece of shrapnel, that other piece of shrapnel goes towards it, and then they hit, and no. then they go in different directions. Uh, can yeah, I try that's what me. You have brought up can, can the perfect can example right, of how you can everybody. be wrong. Congratulations. Hold on, everybody. So than... we're we're gonna let we're gonna let Ember speak for just a moment because we haven't heard from him for a bit, and then we'll hand it over to you, and we'll give you focus time. So Ember, if you can have I a just quick finish. Point? Sorry, can I first just finish my point, then move on to Ember? Because every time I'm trying to get somewhere, you guys are trying to take it away from me to someone else. All right, fair enough. I'm you know hardly I, talking. I, I agree, I agree. All right, so, um, yeah, um, if anybody talks in the next minute, I'll put you on mute. So, flight's away over to okay. you. Okay, thanks. The point is, they're all going out. The vector is away from the, the explosion, okay? So, even that collision, that a collision of the two are going in the same vector, still colliding away from the explosion mark. This is simple vector. And that's all I had to say. All right. Okay, well, so we'll, I... we'll take the one minute off. So you can, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> all of a sudden you speak, <laughs> and you're on mute. You failed. All right. Oh, we no. still got another 20 minutes about uh, the open discussion. So get your Q and A's in there and uh, over you, Ember. All right. So I, I think I see the misunderstanding here. Um, Flat's, Flatsoid's position is that the things have to be moving away from the explosion under the, the pre, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, under the presumption that the Earth is the origin point of the explosion, that everything has to be going away from Earth because it came from the Earth in the first place. Is that why there's a problem with things coming towards us? No, the expanding universe is not flat Earth, that's globe-based, just say so okay well i mean if if the earth isn't the center the origin point of the explosion so to speak what explosion um, on or flat earth there's no explosion this is simply in your, your paradigm that he's debunking oh. <clears throat> you brought that, okay no, so in, in, no, okay, jim okay. Brought, sorry i was gonna say jim brought it up in your hypothetical uh belief uh. system saying this is why it contradicts itself so I'm trying to explain how it contradicts you, itself. You used very an example terms. of an explosion, didn't you? Use an example. Is there something wrong with your memory? You just brought up an explosion <laughs> of why galaxies couldn't be moving towards one another in your yeah. globe. Yes, <laughs> based on yeah, physics, in in the expanding <laughs> universe model, the, for your globe. <laughs> the in in the expanding universe model, the Earth is not the center of the expansion of the Big Bang. Didn't start here. I like, said it did. <laughs> well, then why would where the center is matter? Because that's where the energy disperses from. That's how it works with physics. Right. If, if, our, if the Milky Way <laughs> is a piece of shrapnel in this example, and Andromeda is another piece of shrapnel, there's no reason they can't collide while they're flying through space. Uh -huh. You know the difference between redshift and blue shift? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It means the one is going in a opposite vector going back. To the source relative to one another relative to one another yeah. when so, we observe a blue shift it means it's coming towards 
us. We can't uh -huh. measure red and blue shift from whatever source you think there might be. I don't know. We can only measure it from where we are. Also, we we, we keep getting red herring, Mark. Um, I'd yeah. like to go back to the topic, and uh, I'm still wondering how exactly an, any eclipse happens at all. Any kind of lunar eclipse happens when the Earth can't come between the sun and the moon. First, you are um, begging the question that they're physical objects, and then you are actually strawmanning us by trying to tell us because we have this belief of our globe that they're physical and going between each other. So therefore, they, something has to be physical and going between each other on a flat earth. So it's a non sequitur okay. and a strawman. And again, well, you still no. haven't shown us gas pressure without containment, like we've been asking from the beginning. Okay. Um, so that's that's just a dodge from the question that Ember asked, because this is Flat Earth on trial, and we asked a direct question. Ember didn't say that the objects were physical. He just asked how it worked. So how do you explain the phenomenon of a lunar eclipse where the uh, moon has a shadow that's always curved pass yeah. over it? I mean, if that's some kind of holographic projector, I, 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 I'm not trying to straw man you. I just literally don't know what you think that is. Um, so to go away and run away back to another topic and sort of you've been dodging or not, we've asked you direct questions and you've answered none of them. So at the moment, you're sort of, you're, your trial is going really badly because you're sort of refusing to answer the questions. Hey, Mark, yeah, does, projection, projection. Yeah. Mark, does the sky prove the ground? Does the sky prove the ground? Yes. What are you talking it, 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 It's about? a no. direct question. Does, does the sky? I, I don't prove, think. Does the does the, does the guy the sky prove uh, what we walk on here on the ground as far as you know being stationary and level or being a spinning space ball? Uh, does the sky prove the ground? Yes or no? So the, from the sky, we can derive movements of the ground because the sky will reflect the phenomenon in the sky will reflect how the ground is moving if we observe it just as if you do observe something else out there you can you can say hey i am moving in a certain direction because of how that is moving how um, do you know that if you, sorry how do you know that can you can you give it's me something that si, si, oh simple <clears throat> simple yeah. physics oh i i okay, love uh, the, i lo go ahead go ahead uh, but then we can take in history where people observed the sun to come up they had a belief that it's god pushing the sun up for them to light the day that's what they observed so they believed that does that now make that god really did that what's that got to do with the floor we stand on well the, the problem is that we've we've you know sort of investigated and haven't found the god pushing the the sun up is is that what you think exactly so we have investigated we that you god? can't no so that's the same we can investigate that you don't have gas pressure without containment so yeah, so all of this is a dodge away from how lunar eclipses actually work, which was a question posed. Because so it's I'm a red go herring. Back to the original question. And you're obfuscating. How do lunar it's a direct gas question okay. on the specificity yeah. of your model. How the hell hey, is yeah. that a red herring? No, no. It's... Again, we were talking about so this even is from a our dodge. openings. From our openings, keep it to Earth. Because what you see in the sky no. does not prove what we see on Earth. First of all, you're making assumptions no. for what it is. Just one second there, You're saying it's shadows. You saying it's shadows, you saying it's physical, because that's how you think on your globe. You think it's physical objects moving in front of each other. Okay. Now you're putting that same belief onto flat earth. It's got nothing to do with it. No one's claiming to know anything about the sun or moon being physical objects or if it's even a shadow. That's you having circular reasoning. It looks like a shadow, so therefore it is. Okay. So stop trying to put it onto us and show us with demonstration that you can have gas pressure without containment or at least to show us measurements sure. of earth curve Anything. okay so just this this is a dodge because we ask specific questions this is absolutely a dodge so when somebody claims something like they claim the flat earth or they claim there's a dragon in their backyard you should be able to say hey how does that work how do you fit that dragon in your backyard and then they would provide to you how they're doing it if that makes no sense Basically, it means that they their 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 a model of reality isn't actually reality. So we're asking direct questions to try and understand what how they know this to be true. And instead of saying, "Hey, we just believe it and we don't know how it works," they're basically saying, "No, back to you. You you have to show that that our model isn't correct." 
Um, this is Flat Earth on trial. So what we're doing is asking questions about their model to see if it holds any water. And instead of just saying, hey, we don't know, they're saying, oh, no, we're not going to answer that. We're going to shift to something else. We're going to tap dance away. We're not going to answer anything. And it's kind of, it's really telling Projection. that only one side is is giving answers yeah. here. Yeah. And Projection. one side is just Mar Mark, It's kind of a concession, oh, if you ask me. Here, uh, a, a, yeah. A, 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 yeah, Mark, I'll give you an answer. When we go outside, we don't see curvature. We see a stationary topographical plane. We see too far you I, I tell you i tell you what guys ember and mark football season's coming up in the united states called soccer over in europe go find a flat surface on a soccer field or a football field a flat surface 60 70 80 120 yards get some sort of a camera uh, get a pu 900 p 1000 uh, uh, put it at about four five six inches observation height and walk away on your flat plane you walk away on your flat plane guys you, you will get smaller due to perspective and angular resolution. You will disappear bottom up. It explains exactly why we can see Chicago from St. Joseph, Michigan or Michigan City or Warren Dunes, Michigan. And it explains exactly how the sun works on a stationary plane. You guys don't want it because you are expecting your globe to take you out to dinner and to court you because you, for some reason, think that this scientifically impossible thing that is spinning, tilted, going through the you know going through the motions of an ever expanding universe at insane speeds is scientifically possible. It is so thank not. you for that unhinged I, rant. Um, I I, yeah, I get ahead. it that you're incredulous, but your cool. incredulity cool doesn't story. prove hey, cool truth. story, dude. Hey, dude, I'll, I'll leave, bro, and I'll go to dude. How's that sound? I love how they're at home. Hey, you if, if, they if, don't it, have an if it makes you that. happy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was an argument from incredulity. Calling no, out wasn't. someone Detroit. else's fallacy is not itself a fallacy. It's a fairy. You guys have a fairy tale. It's not a now fairy to fairy answer tale. your question. Uh, your Jaronism fella on your guy's side conducted a test based on that very principle in his documentary. He set up a fence with a hole in it and had a dude hold up a light. <laughs> several miles away and couldn't see the light until the light was held up higher Elevation. as predicted I by can tell the, you why, the curvature yeah. of the earth and then he went hmm interesting are you talking was, about the net are you talking about the netflix hit piece still, uh, behind the curve 2018 is that what you're talking still, about is the <laughs> and they don't understand uh why it's that way We've explained uh, why why Jaronism proved there is a curve using the test that Jim just asked us to do. Your dude proved curvature using the test <laughs> he asked for. You're, you're, why do you have a problem with this? Your guys, Netflix, whose stuff is so extreme they can't get on TV, did it. And 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 what it was it was it was behind the curve 2018 hit piece, Netflix. And you guys love that about Jaron and about Bob and stuff like that. You know what? You guys should be ashamed of yourself because Netflix is so extreme. He can't even make it on NBC but, and CBS and ABC. It's so not, extreme. They've got their own platform. But, no, Why would they but that doesn't matter. That? Like, that that doesn't matter let, me, let me respond can, to that. Let me respond to that. Let me respond to that, please. Let me respond to that. Um they, they've got their own platform. They're not trying to get onto TV. There's no reason why they would. Like, this is honest, makes sense. Now, the lunar eclipse, you said, I will give you... Look, I just want to point this out. I asked about the lunar eclipse, and Jim said, let me give you an answer, and then didn't answer the lunar eclipse Pop question. Down, what he did was deflect to some... What, what he did was deflect to something else and go on this sort of unhinged rant about all he these did. things. But what he did, he gave an answer, but not to the question I asked. So again... How does a lunar eclipse work on a flat Earth? Was the question you, you don't didn't know answer? Either. I want to point that out, and and you know, instead of you, the tap dance, just say you don't know. You, you don't did know answer. Either. We you did answer, and you we can predict from them. Point, and you predict, and nope. you just obfuscated from Ember's point about the behind the curve. So can I give my statement on that? I can demonstrate this on a flat surface too. You just don't have to have the holes lining up to one another. And the light he was using was diffracting away. It was dispersing thanks to the inverse square law of light. And because he has refraction standing in the, by the water, there's so many variables that he did not contend with. And not to note that his so-called 
experiment that wasn't an experiment was so shoddy and it looked like a dog ate his breakfast, it wouldn't work because those holes have to be so precise to work and you have to hold the light source at a perfect horizontal angle to go through those holes. So even if you hold it literally a half a degree or anything, a little bit down or up or left or right, it will not align up to go through. So that's why when he put it over the boards, he could see it because there was no obstruction from the boards because he was, if he was really precise, he could build up a rig that actually has the angles pointing perfectly. I don't know if you've ever tried to take a laser light and try to point it on a, um, on a bullseye or something, uh, uh, let's say he's distance away. Do you know how difficult that is? Yeah, so that sounds all like a like a excuses to me. There, there, there was no, nothing wrong with the, the experiment. Fact. Excuse me, excuse experiment. me. There's nothing. On, there's man. nothing wrong with the experiment. Nothing wrong with the way it was set up. Um, oh, it was yeah, perfectly. It they made their predictions. They all agreed that were the predictions. And then what happens is after they get the result that they don't want, people like Flatsoid, like Jim, like Jaronism will look for excuses of why this happened. They will try and excuse it any way they can. Same with the 15 degrees per hour uh, drift, uh, you oh know, that, that they found on okay. the ring laser gyroscope. So um, they okay, would always to, back look to for these excuses. Back to Jaron's so-called experiment. Can you please give me the hypothesis? The hypothesis? You said it's experiment, so that means it has to have a hypothesis, a scientific hypothesis. Sure. Okay. Yeah, if, if, if the Earth is not curved, that light should be able to be seen um, lower down and if it is curved, then it, sh it sh we should have to elevate it to um, see that light. Okay, so uh, you do know that's called circular reasoning. That's not scientific. What are the control variables that are used? What do you the think circular variables. reasoning means? I, I, I put it up. I see it. Therefore, it's a globe. That's circular reasoning. It's a Fermi the consequent fallacy. So again, what are the I? <laughs> what are the control variables in the so-called experiment, Mark? What are you talking about? You guys are claiming science. You're saying experiments. So control yeah. variables, please. Yeah, the control variables are the um, distance from the um, the the orig origin point to where the light is shining because those that doesn't change, right? Okay. The distance doesn't change. Great. What else? Yes. There's not only one control variable. You have to confine your cause to work out the DV. So if it's only one control, how do you know there wasn't another cause for what we see and not therefore not being earth curve? How do you know there was? Easy, because you could see him cutting it out with a bread knife. <laughs> that doesn't make you, What are you talking about? I don't if know. You know if like you guys you know if you guys know anything yeah, no, you're, you're just basically just deflecting because, away just from say, the fact that just he did you... the experiment, set up his parameters, um, show, did the did the experiment, it came That's out not, not the way experiment. he wanted, and then you guys have to scramble to try and invent excuses for why he got the result Dude. that the, the Globe Earth predicts. Yeah, Again, I mean, if you don't I... like his methodology, feel free to repeat the experiment yeah. yourself. It's do easy your enough own. to do. Again, yeah. we are going, you guys are claiming it's an experiment, Okay. So yeah, show me that sure. it's an experiment. Show me science. You're not showing science. All you're showing is ignorance. That's practically what you're showing. You don't understand well, science. If you're so such an expert, an set up your own experiment. Why don't no, you that's set up fact. your own? Now you're trying to push the burden onto me when you're trying to show us that it's an experiment. So can yes, you please show me the IV, DV, and CVs for this so-called experiment? Yeah, we, we've done tons of experiments to show that the Earth has been round. It's just you don't accept any of them. But again, okay, which you're not willing to go out and do your own experiments because I think you're afraid that you're going to find exactly what Jaronism did, that Dude. your predictions for the flat Earth Mark, are failing. Mark, Mark, you yeah. said tons of experiments. Which ones? Yeah. So, so, so when you say tons, yeah. you're saying in the thousands of experiments. Uh, is that yeah. hyperbole or do you really mean it? No, I, I really mean that. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool story, bro. Cool story, dude. Cool story, man. Hey, I tell you what, show me one. What you mean you the seen a sunrise experiment? experiment? Yeah. Did he live? Is there any is there any primary physical evidence that the Greek guy lived twenty three hundred years ago? Yes or no? Doesn't have to. Oh, yes, oh he, does he doesn't have to. have to. Oh, cool. 
Yeah. Cool. So none of those mentioned. Experiment. You guys bring them up. Yeah. Well, let me answer. Let me. You answer guys them. bring them up. As let me answer. Let me hey, answer. Hey, listen, Mark. You guys bring him up. You guys bring him up as if he's your bro. He never lived. Oh no, I'm not a bro lever. I'm not a bro lever. <laughs> okay, um, dude. So Eratosthenes, it doesn't matter who he was, or even if he even lived, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the experiment and what it shows. It's like if 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 we have an experiment, we 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 can do it today. I mean, I could be completely ignorant of who came up with the experiment. As long as the methodology is sound, then the experiment will work. And I've got news for you. That experiment is done by literally thousands of, of people every year in the Eratosthenes experiment where they give it to um, school age children of, of all ages to do that experiment, collate it over thousands of different locations on the earth. And they find out that the angle of those 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 shadows proves definitively that the the the, the globe is curved. The can, angle. Can, can that angle. be done on Flat. a plane as well? Hey, Mark, can that be done on a plane as well? What the Greek guy who probably didn't live that you guys invoke all the time? Could that be done well, that's on a plane surface as well? Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So it can be done on a flat plane as uh, with a with a local sun if there is two um two of the sticks like Eratosthenes did. But when we expand that to the thousands of people doing it the um the angle of the shadows isn't linear it's exponential meaning that if it was linear that would be a flat plane if it's exponential i.e they get longer and longer exponentially as they get further away then it is a globe and that's been oh. proven definitively I, oh i love it so we have thousands <laughs> of experiments according to mark yep. to prove the ball we have yep. oh, excuse me we have tons. tons. I forgot. It's tons of experiments that prove well, the ball. It is thousands. And, 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 and how and many he, experiments do we have showing a flat Earth? All of them. Because all you, you just, have to do your is go so out, All you have to do is go outside. What's your control? Your, What's your, your control so, variable for flat your Earth? So called, your so-called experiment that you just said is not an experiment. It's a measurement, and that measurement is done with an angle with a flat baseline. In other words, you're using utilizing a flat plane to make those measurements. That's what we spoke about earlier. And again, you claiming experiment means the onus is on you to prove it's an experiment. So IV, DV and control from your side, not from us. No, no, but you've said that there's been tons of experiments for flat earth. What's, what's been the control? You said your, tons your, of you experiments said, No, 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 hang on a second. Guys. Hang on, hang on, let me finish. What's been the control uh, and, and independent dependent variables for your experiments on flat earth? What experiment did I bring up, Mark Reed? We busy. You said all of yours. them. All of them. You said all of them were experiments. No, you guys are saying all of them are experiments. I asked what experiments have shown a flat oh, earth. For flat. And you okay. said all of them. Okay. All of them. So please tell us about some of them. Okay. Yeah. Like experiments when we try and show gas pressure requires containment. We always What's require the control containment. Variable for that? Containment. It's a control variable. Yes. What, what what's being varied? The control is the box. You got the set volume. Without the volume, you have no gas. It's an antecedent. So in other words, the cause... It's not a gas... control variable. Okay, I take the box away. Is there still gas pressure? Is there still gas pressure? It depends. Probably a, no, a slight there's amount, not. Sure. Okay. Well, there's gas now, pressure in our weather how... systems, and there's depends... no container there. It depends how you word your hypothesis. If you're going to say the cause for the gas pressure is containment, or the... Uh... The cause for gas pressure oh. behavior is the movement of gases. The antecedent will always be containment. So you, so you would need, you would need. No, it's not big. The question. Yes, it's demonstrable. It's demonstrable. Not begging the question. No, Can you demonstrate? Okay, please demonstrate to me gas pressure without containment, please. Yeah, weather systems because they have different pressure. Same what system. It shows weather. Excuse me. What weather systems shows is that with other phenomena and forces in play, there can be areas of low pressure and high pressure next to one another like that completely in the same debunks. system in the same system the same you already system. have the gas the weather do you, system do you have gas pressure already present for a weather system what container like, is in between these these high and low an, pressures what what container what container, what container, what container is in, in between these high and low pressures no one said there has to be a container between it's the same system mark do but you, they're not remember? the same pressure but Without a container, course. they should equalize, yes? Uh-oh. False. False. Remember, Mark, last time when you said gas has no behavior? 
This is your issue here. Well, uh, what happens, does, when, what does happens with temperature? Does gas have weight? Does gas have weight? It has density. Does it have weight? How do you weigh something, Mark? Well, you can get, say, a um, air tank, for instance. And if no, you how do you weigh something? Air, what? Yeah, I'm, what I'm telling weight? you. I'm currently telling you. You weigh the container with just air in it. Then you compress air into it, increasing the amount of air in it. And then you weigh it again. So it weighs more. Then. So that's not Cal weighing gas. That's calculating the gas's mass. How okay. do you think you Wait. measure things? Okay. Can I can I make my point? How do you weigh How a thing? How do you think has, you measure listen, things? Listen. How do you weigh I don't a thing? understand. It, like, I've just I told you how you I measure. Talk? Can right, I Let's talk? let Vlad Zoid speak for a minute here there, Mark. Okay. How do you weigh a thing on a scale? Does that object have to be static? That means it sits there static on the scale. A gas molecule does not sit static. It moves constantly. It's all moving in all directions. So therefore, it cannot be a measured weight because it literally bounces off instantaneously. It has a collision and away it goes. So you can't have a weight measurement for gas. You can, however, it calculate its weight based on, <laughs> yes, based on a measurement by needing a container, which making my point. So again, that weather system is in the same system. Your onus is to prove that you can have gas pressure without container. Okay. Gas pressure can is I, there. Can I respond to this point without going exist. on like 10 points? Um, look, right. you, yes, yes, air molecules are in motion, but they're in motion inside of a scuba tank as well. Even if you compress that scuba tank, they're still in motion. But the scuba tank, the more air that you put into it, and scuba divers know this, right? The more air that you put into it, the more it weighs. So with your whole density, right, with your whole density, what is the density of a vacuum? What? Density of a vacuum, that's um, yes. really, a, first of all, nonsense. Well, how do you that's calculate kind of like density? Coherent. How do you calculate density? Mass per cube volume. Mass per cube volume. So what is the mass per cube volume of a vacuum? <laughs> it's not coherent. How do you work at a mass per cube volume? By the way, your volume you're having would be a container making my there's point. no mass is there there's no mass is there to a vacuum show me one vacuum that has no mass or any molecules in please even your space 10 to the minus 17 tour it's not a negative number correct but so mass per volume so there so is a small small yes. small 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 amount of mass per volume right in a container correct no, no, not in a container. Just, just We're just talking about the two things. So if the most dense thing is the one that will be at the bottom, correct? No. Gas is not uh, It's not bound bonded. It moves in all directions. Homogeneous. It has elastic yes. collisions. It moves around in all directions. So it's a mixture of different density of gases. We don't just have the densest gas at the bottom. Yes. We would all be dead right now if that was the case. Yeah. Because it moves and intermingles, yeah. correct? Any, right. Any thoughts over there, Jim? Yes. I haven't heard from but you in a little bit. But things of weight will always go towards the bottom, correct? Gas moves in all directions. It goes up too. Yeah. So apparently you were trying don't... to. You trying. Yeah. You don't trying have a to clue about what weight Hold on a second, there, Mark. We'll let Flat density is. And, and then we. I want to hand it over to Ember and Jim before we end our uh, open discussion. Okay. So, Flat Zoid, I'll let you respond to Mark and then over to Ember. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so you're false equivocating things like different phases with like a solid and a gas are not the same thing. Gases move in all directions. They have elastic collisions. They never sit still. They're never static, where a solid is static. So when you do have what you call with pressure gradients, the gas is still moving around in those gradients. But to have this gradient, you still require a containment to hold all this pressure gradients in. All right, over to the you. The antecedent... After. Sorry. <laughs> I'm almost finished. Sorry. The antecedent would be the container, then the gas, and then the pressure gradients. Those pressure gradients, like you like claiming uh, weather systems, are already in a contained system. That's my point. They're not in a contained system. They're not. Prove it. All right. I want to hear from Ember here. You prove it. You're on trial. The uh, open discussion here. Unless you guys <laughs> want to keep going, that's at your discretion once again. Uh, you saw how long the last one went. We almost went for five hours. Okay. So <laughs> you guys be careful if you don't want to get down that rabbit hole again. So uh, Ember, uh, we're talking about um, containment here. So you want to respond to Flatzoid's uh, claim there and we'll uh, hand it over to Jim. 
Well, I'm not super interested in containment. I'd rather get back on topic. Um, yeah. You know, as, as we've mentioned before, we've seen a whole lot of incredulity, not a whole lot actually defending the flat earth. Um, hmm. I still have, I still have a couple of questions like, um, I, we, in the, in the openings, we heard about yeah. how water seeks its level. You never, you don't see a curve on water. Cool. We don't see the curve of the tidal bulge either, but we know the tides go in and out. I don't think either of our opponents would dispute that fact. So that kind of shows that there can be a curve that we can't perceive with our eyes. It's a non sector um, member. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, sure it is. <laughs> and, it's sure not a, and a bold and water stand, stand. And <laughs> everything I'm, they don't like, non sequitur, sure. Yep, absolutely. Sure. And I'm I'm still waiting on an explanation for how a solar eclipse happens. And lunar for that matter, eclipse. why you or yeah, lunar eclipse. Uh well, I'll take a solar eclipse too. Why not? Sure. Um, yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> um but I mean the main question that I really wanted to address is why reject the mainstream model? Why do you two believe in flat Earth in the first place? Besides, you know, the, not the justifications, not the, oh, we, we see farther than we should or Religion. there should be gas prather, pressure or, or what have you. What's what convinced you in the first place? What's at the bottom of it? Are those How, things, are those things not important, Ember, when you when we say uh, we can't see too far and gas pressure without a container? Aren't those legitimate concerns? No, they, they absolutely are. But when I have a question, I look at the world and I say, this thing that I perceive doesn't make sense. I don't decide the entirety of science is wrong and start making shit up. I say, why don't I learn about this and see if I can figure out why that is? This makes sense to you? Ron, I mean, as a done. model. Do you, live, do you live on a model, Ember? Well, as I said in the beginning, don't confuse the map for the place. Do you, I mean, I, I'm serious. You know, the only model that any of us guys should be concerned about is possibly dating and marrying one. Do you disagree? I I, I appreciate the sentiment that uh, some things in life are considerably more important. But I would like an answer to the question as to why you're invested in Flat Earth in the first place. I want to know that. Can, can you concede this? Can you concede that it? If not after birth, age five, you went into kindergarten and the teacher who would never lie to you had a spinning uh, ball tilted at 23.4 degrees by the teacher's desk. And you were taught that all the way through education and then entertainment took over. And here you are tonight. Will you concede to that? To an extent, not the characterization. Uh, I get that you're leaning towards indoctrination, but oh, I will say, I will you say there you go. that there there have been globes in classrooms. However, I was one of those kids who asked too many questions, and I frequently got sent to the principal's office. I had a second grade teacher who told me you couldn't subtract five from three, and I said that's absolutely not true. And I got sent to the principal's office, and here we know you can do that. That's just not the way she wanted to teach things. So, to your point. Teachers are not infallible. I get that, which is why we ask questions. We look at the world. We learn more and we do experiments for ourselves. Did you ask questions yeah. at age six, seven and eight in, in grade school? But the problem is, oh, yeah. I would like to have a word here because I've been I've been very patient. The problem is that when we ask the questions, you guys don't want to answer any of them and you don't seem interested in what the answers are. You've dodged meteorites. You've dodged circumpolar stars. You've dodged lunar eclipses. You've dodged I haven't dodged lunar eclipses. You've, you've dodged southern. Excuse me. I'm talking. Um, you, you've dodged Southern Cross. You've dodged, dodged. You've dodged everything that we've brought up with some kind of well. Let's go talk about this instead. Instead of actually looking into these things and coming up with some sort of explanation that we can say, hey, does this hold any water? Can we actually put this into practice and will it give us the results? from the phenomenon that you've described and the explanation you've described. And I think the reason why, and most people that I meet that are flat earthers are deeply religious. So there's definitely a correlation there. It's because <laughs> in order for your thing to work, you can't look into these things and create a model because then it's shown to be wrong. I think you're scared uh, to do model. that. Are you scared? So you're scared to believe there's a creator. We get it. Got it. Cool. All right. Uh, hey, hey, oh, I'm not scared. I just don't think hey, there is. That hey, doesn't guys, scare me in the slightest. Guys, we actually told you about selling million eclipse top down 
Yes. You didn't want to hear it. We told you about LAX and Dallas Fort Worth for you know you know and uh, land location, land location, straight line. You guys didn't want it. We told I, you. I, I asked you it, to explain. We what told means. you that there yeah. is no. I don't have to prove something that doesn't exist. Okay, and and I and I told you something uh, as as far so as lunar eclipses don't exist. Is that what you're saying? I, I told you something. Circumnavigation north to south. You cannot prove going down to your ball and coming up the other side. You cannot prove. Now, Amber, you can say it, but you can't prove it. Now, you should be in the business of proving your spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space. And, you know, tilted, wobbling, brought to you by Jesuit priest in 1540 that Copernicus uh, talked about with Hermes Trisman Justice that Newton, your boy, talked about in the Emerald Tablet. You should be able to know that it's sun pagan worship, and now it's it's worship of the great attractor, this black hole that the universe goes around now. You guys, you're Narnia. Not the universe. You're a fairy well, that, tale. That's a, a hell you're of a strong man gish gallop there. But you're I'm on still here wondering defending about lunar something eclipses. that does right, not let's... exist. All right, I do want well, to jump again, in here because uh, I do think uh, we're we're right about a good time to probably jump into Q and A, but it's up to you, fellas. I know. Um, sure. I yeah. Flat soy, yeah. Said yeah. That you I mean, on a time we can only get there. non answers for so long, so I'm yeah. happy to go to Q and A. Good uh, answer. Yeah. If they want to concede, answer. that's great. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I, I, uh, still no. got an, I still got an hour and twenty minutes before the power goes off. So. Okay. Still I was going to say, I just uh, yeah, like I said, I don't want to put anybody on mute, so just do your best not to interrupt me because I've got the power. Anyways, uh, if anybody has a moment they want to go use the washroom, now would be a great time to step on out. Um, no, I, I, I think I think we're okay to go to a, a quick Q and A. I right. think that we've sort of got first no answers to the to the questions that we've asked. I mean, I'm right, still before... still waiting on lunar but... eclipses and how they work. I but... mean, even even if they're not real, real like we've said. They're, they're a phenomenon that needs to be described because we know that, that the shadow passes or what appears to be a shadow, in fairness, what appears to be a shadow. If that's not true, then what is it? How does it work? I want everybody to leave here tonight knowing that Mark believes this guy proves the ground. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll, uh, have, can we, oh, we'll have time for closing, closing statements, statements, of course. Okay, cool. So let's get through the super okay. chats just because that's going to alter the perspective of what our closing statements are going to look like. Uh, so if anybody in the live chat hasn't already, hit the like button, share this out in that lovely contentious space that you like to do all your arguing in your Reddit forums. Uh, and as I uh, had said to <laughs> Raw Guitar earlier there, uh, yes, my beer is not flat. So you want to talk about gas in a chamber? You're all just lucky I have a mute button. That's right. All right. Let's go into the super chats. Big Bad Mama, $5. Flat Earthers, please describe in detail the origin of the global cabal of anti flat earth scientists. Where and when did it originate? Uh, here we go. The history is simply some person woke up and decided, I love balls. It's a perfect shape. So, therefore, the gods had to create it as a ball. And therefore, they started pushing it in to a belief system, which is actually Satanistic. That's why all your ratios are based with triple six. The doctors, the doctors of divinity in the Catholic Church, the Jesuits, became the doctors of science. It started with a, a Loyola, Ignatius Loyola, 1539. It ended at the Treaty of Trent, uh, the Council of Trent in 1563, if you believe those dates. And the Jesuits took over the Catholic Church. We got the Gregorian calendar because of that. And so I'm, I'm telling you guys, you are literally worshiping the sun now the great attractor it all started with copernicus when he looked into the sky and theorized using our his eyes what's going on everybody can do that too and then and then like i said ignatius Loyola took it over took over he became the first black pope uh, as far as you know in the in the catholic church and they have controlled everything, including education, you know, basically. And that's what you're talking about. And you can make an argument that Copernicus, Descartes, uh, Newton, um, Galileo, and Kepler never lived because it was the Catholic Church that basically said, you go to the Catholic Encyclopedia, Copernicus was an employee of the Catholic Church his entire life. In May of 1543, he dedicated on the revolution of the heavenly spheres to, you know, you know, to the Pope, then died the same month. 
He was on his deathbed when he published it and gave it to the Pope. Cool story, guys. If you want to believe that fairy tale, you go ahead. We question and reject basically everything in your world, except when my teacher told me how to parallel park when I was 16. I still do that today. But the rest of it is garbage. Now, keep going. I want to hear more about the cabal. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious how uh why why the church imprisoned Galileo, the Catholic Church who's behind all this when Galileo brought forth evidence that refuted the geocentric model. Like yeah. why were they mad at their boy who was spreading their cabal? If you believe their narrative, Ember, I can't help you. All right, we're going to be careful what topics we get into here just so we don't get in trouble on the YouTube. Uh, you don't want to hear more about the black folk? No, no. Calm, calm that. Nope, that. <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, no, I had no idea what you were actually going to say. I was just going to keep going. Yep, yep. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Mr. I, I didn't bring it up. I didn't bring it up. It wasn't going right, to be this no, time. No, no more like that. All right. So, uh, Mo okay. Mr. Monster, $10. Yeah, don't get us kicked off YouTube here. I swear. Uh, I believe that the government is making up flat earth so that we don't see the reptilian aliens uh on the moon do you agree i'm not joking no <laughs> definitely mr not. monster says they're not joking <laughs> they believe they're they're, joking. there's reptilian reptilians on I, the moon. I, I i have to tell him he might have to check his medication oh that's a little spicy jim any thoughts on this uh, idea yeah I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't sort of comment on anybody's health uh, you know I, I think that i'm not a doctor but um yeah I, I i don't think that there's a lot of um evidence for any re reptilians at all there's no evidence for the flat earth at all there's there's <laughs> just you know all of these things are just conspiracy theories and people like sort of so the prediction was from me that it would be religion is the reason why that that, that they believe that the earth is flat and generally that's what we see um, it's sort of this this thing that people can fall into where their free held beliefs influence how they they see the world. Um, science is supposed to eliminate bias and that that's how it works. Um, so so essentially when you go in there, you are simply observing phenomena and trying to come up with with experiments that are neutral, agnostic towards all um, um, previous sort of influences and, and that's essentially what they do. Um, and Ember brought up a good case. Jaron isn't did come up with a, a you know fine experiment. It's just you know pr proved what he didn't want it to prove. I, I like Mark. I like Mark in the same sentence. You know, said reptilian and flat Earth is really cool, man. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's just it, it's just the greatest thing to listen. Um, Do you believe in the reptilians on the moon? Absolutely not. My God. Okay. Um, it, 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 it's just. Well, I mean, it, you never know. Sorry, it's, Super it's, Chatter. It, 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 it's just. It, it, don't share your it's just. I, t I, t I, I tell you what. It, it's fun. Guys, you know, you, you guys are cool. Uh, you know, I talked about Noon's Third Law of Motion and, uh, you know, Flat Soy took over Second Law of Thermodynamics. And, you know, I would love to talk Inverse Square Law of Light before we leave. But if we can't, maybe, you know, if James will have us back, we can do it another day. Well, I don't mind going down uh, a semi rabbit hole for maybe like a couple minutes if these fellows are open to it. So, what's the topic, Jim? Inverse square law of light. Did you guys want to maybe take like five minutes and talk about that, or did you want to make me save that for another time? Yeah, I, mean, I, another I don't time. have a problem with yeah. with the inverse square law. It's yeah, it's it's a law. Cool. That All I right. think that settles it. All right. Well, we'll we'll continue on from there, and uh, maybe uh, Jim, if you want to poke around in our Discord after this, uh, maybe we maybe we can sure. link up and figure out what uh, we can do to have another conversation here. Yeah. Uh, cool. And just want to remind everybody, there's 600 people watching right now. 147 likes on my side. So hit the, likes. Hit the like button. Super smash, brothers. That like that like button. Yeah, that's right. Um, Let's continue on. I'm trying to find the super chats. I got a pad, you know, as these things load. Uh, you were wondering why I left earlier. It's because I had to grab a fan because my computer is heckin' hot right now. So, Mr. Monster, ten dollars. Uh, that was one I just read. Sorry, Romney, uh, Ro Romy, John Dorf, John Dorf. I'm sorry, Romy John Dorf. For two euros, what does the underneath of the Earth look like? Good question. Well. It depends uh, what cosmology. Well, if you have a globe, you don't have an underneath of the Earth. Uh, with a flat Earth, it's just simply down, which would be waters above, waters below. That's about it. All right. Any other thoughts? Or just move turtles. on from there. 
All right. Excellent. Uh, and Emmer just put in the uh, live chat that Mark's having an after party on his channel. So, uh, yeah. yeah, Mark, if you're in our live chat right now, if you want to post your link for that uh, and anybody uh, here, I know that uh, our links might not necessarily be up right now. They will be in our post-production if they aren't already. Uh, you know, I'll make sure I mention that to James afterwards. Uh, so let's continue on from there. So, uh, Romy John Dwarf again for two euro. How big is space? Do you believe in huge distances? Is that two? That would be for the flat Earth side, I would say. Okay. Oh, huge, huge distances. Uh, you know, f first of all, we don't believe in Narnia. We don't believe in a fairy tale. So, uh, you know, if you want to talk about huge distances here on our stationary topographical plane great but if you're talking about light years that's narnia that's a fairy tale yeah um yeah it's tr again once again trying to place the globe belief onto us so yeah we don't have to believe in uh light years and light years away as people like to put it all right any he, thoughts he, on he, the other side or oh sorry go he, ahead jim yeah, I, I'm. You're great for putting up with me. Thank you. Uh, I I just want to emphasize one thing. I've asked I've asked everybody who believes in the globe uh, this question, and I want to ask Ember and Mark if they believe this as well. We're told that a photon, which is massless, M A S S L E S S, photon, which is light, can travel 13.7 billion years with a B in the vacuum of outer space, which is 80 sextillion. 600 quintillion miles with 18 zeros behind it to reach our eye here on earth ember mark do you believe that sure i mean it light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second so it's not exactly cool. um cool i mean it's very very fast it's the fastest thing cool. in the universe but I, I don't see the problem with it okay. traveling that far okay cool I, I i appreciate your honesty thank you can, can i maybe ask something then to you guys a question if you have a cigarette and it's nighttime, it's pitch black dark, and it doesn't matter what elevation you have, you can be above even your belief of earth curve. Why is it you can't see a cigarette light, let's say over a kilometer away? Because light diffuses. All right, let's continue on with the super chats. I think that's a good place to leave off there. And uh, just a reminder to the live chat, take a moment and hit the like button. Or if you're not in the live chat, you know, hit the like button anyways. It's, uh, uh, it's Sorry, nice Emma, did you want to address that one? I'm sorry, I just sort of jumped in there. Um, I, I was just saying, oh, I, think, it's... I think everything's going to come full circle uh, as we go through these super chats. Uh, so uh, just sit tight, and I'm sure if you do have something that you thought about, it's going to like I said, it'll come full circle, uh, not to make a pun. LJ, a 499, <laughs> even my dog knows the moon landing was faked and Earth is level slash flat. Question to the brainwashed sheep, Ember and Mark, do you believe in Santa Claus too? Have you uh, been good boys no, this I... year? <laughs> oh i'm i'm uh, I'm never good i go for coal every year um hey, i mean obviously that's it. that's <laughs> <laughs> obviously that's that's a silly question but it's worth yeah. noting that according to historical documents saint nicholas did exist he was mm -hmm. a real person at one point so you know if we believe history then there was one. Whether he still exists now, that's more of a matter of faith, which uh, I won't, don't want to speak for anybody else, but I'm an atheist. I don't really do faith. Yes, yeah, I don't do faith either. And I, I think that I'm sort of equating um, the, the moon landing with sort of Santa Claus, where we know one has been a, a fictionalized um, changing of events. And, uh, you know, we, we can do tests today to, to bounce lasers off the moon. We can bounce ham radio off the moon. Like, you know, they left reflectors up there for a reason. If you have the precise coordinates, you can bounce a laser off that uh, box reflector that they left up there. Really cool stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We've also I've done got it myself. You know, things. Awesome. Um, 
Mark. Yeah, we've also got, um, well, just a sec, let me finish. We've also got sort of rovers that have been up there. The Chinese have sent rovers, the, the, the other countries have sent rovers um, up to the moon and sort of, you can even see the flybys from other things of the, the moon landing site kind of thing. So, yeah, I just I just don't believe this this big conspiracy theory, that's all. Mark, m m Mark, they've sent trillions upon trillions of photons to the moon. And sometime about 10, 12 years ago, one photon came back and they say it came back and that's what proved it bounced off the moon. If you want to look that up, that's just great. You guys say you're both atheists and, and you and you have, you, you know, you don't base your, you know, off faith. Do you have faith in the spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space? Yes or no? No, I have confidence based upon evidence. And, and, and so and, and so you have faith that that you're living on a spinning space ball. But as uh, I said, Amber, you Amber and Mark, you, 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 you have you have yeah. faith. In so that. if you could not straw well, man my answer, I said I had confidence yeah. based. OK, yeah. as, as I've mentioned, I've done several of these tests myself. I confirmed with my own eyes and the results lead me to believe that what I've been told is probably correct or more precisely. I don't have a reason to doubt it. What experiments yeah. have you done to, well, to, to prove your eight inch per mile squared drop over distance? I've traveled. That isn't I've seen lunar eclipses. I've repeated the uh, sticks and shadows thing. It, I've bounced a laser off the moon. Oh, you bounced the laser off the moon. D did you mm -hmm. record that so we can all see it, please? Well, I've okay, heard. No. I've heard they've bounced late, um, signals off the moon before they even had the moon landings. So that's a bit weird. No, no, no. They bounced ham radio off the moon before they had the moon landings. Completely. Let's give Flatsoid the last word here. Well, no, that's what I, I wanted to say. Was to us, wasn't it, <laughs> yeah. I, I was to say, just I, I didn't know if he wanted to respond <laughs> to what you just said there, but that's okay. Before we get down another rabbit hole there, because we got a, a quite a few super chats. Keep them coming, yeah, in, yeah, everybody, because yeah. uh, I think, like I said, anything you're thinking about right now, we're gonna get back to it one way or another. Sunflower, five dollars. Question for either side: If someone created a basic beam level with a fluid vial that was a mile long, how would the fluid in the level appear? Flat. A mile long, it would uh, have followed the Earth's curvature because uh, that's what level means. No, it doesn't. Level means flat. Level means Earth Autonomous. curvature. Mark, did you just say that level means Earth curvature? Did you just say that? Level level means um, perpendicular with the center of uh, mass of, of whatever it is that it's on. I, so I, you can I, have I, I, level even though it's not level to the Earth's surface, you can still, well, um, I mean, that's basically what it means. It means do, it's level. Do you, to ever get do you ever get tired of mental gymnastics, Mark? Do you? No, I, I, do you? Do you ever get tired of tap dancing? I, oh, I go, I go out. Subject. This is getting can, into I the mean, mudslinging. Yeah, but can I just yeah, ask them? Uh, I didn't start it. Can I just ask them, Mark? Um, you do know horizontal doesn't curve, right? Do I know horizontal doesn't curve? Yeah. I, I'm not even sure what, what to say. To the that. mathematical ideal curve. of horizontal yeah. doesn't, but in the real world, yeah, it sure does. I mean, you can't build a skyscraper without taking the curvature of the earth into account because the parallel uprights of the building aren't perpendicular, aren't parallel. The building is wider at the top than it is at the bottom Where's because the, blue... the Earth is what? curved. Where's the, the blue... skyscraper? Where's the blueprint? <laughs> Where's the blueprints for that, Ember? Again, you can speak something, but you can't prove it. Where's the blueprints for that? Sorry. The architecture for that? Where's it at? Yourself. I was going to ask. I was going to ask. I was going to ask. A skyscraper. You said it's wider at the top than the bottom. Ever so slightly, yes. No, skyscrapers go thinner closer together as they go up because they need less you're, you're, you're deliberately above. misunderstanding me take uh take the empire state building the square part at the very top if you trace that directly down forget about how the building flares out just the square part at the top its footprint on the ground is smaller than the space it takes up up above because the upright beams move slightly further apart because up and down are not parallel tension Can you show that it's work? called mechanics can, can you ah, show, excuses. Can you show... Awesome. Excuses, yeah. <laughs> no, it's mechanics. It's for tension. Things need to be able so to. So, for, first, you're incredulous, and now you're throwing out whatever comes pops into your head that you can explain I it get away exactly with. The, I get exactly the same argument with the Verrazano Bridge. Why do you think it's leaning? Oh, because it's a tension bridge. 
it's just yeah i'll just how i'll just add something works. that that there's no such thing as a um exactly straight line it, it it sort of is one thing that we can't actually practically put into the real world um everything has a a, a curb the only only straight line is one that's conceptual like because even the slightest misalignment of of atoms when you get down to the very nitty gritty will make it not a straight like a perfectly straight line so um essentially when you're when you're talking about perfectly horizontal it is just conceptual and not something that we can actually put into place in the so, world. so so mark does again mark says again that there is no such thing as a straight line I tell you that the, the yeah. mental gymnastics that you two and the globe community go through amazes me every single day. You That's not a refutation. You you just I tell you what I, I I'm telling you right now I'm calling the globe up tomorrow and and which one of you two want to go on a date with it first? Okay, Jim, can you present to me then a perfectly straight line? Can you present? You made you no 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 no, no. you no question. don't Mark, dodge tap you dance, tap dance. made. The okay. claim you mm -hmm. made the claim, and then you went to atoms. You went to atoms with elect, you know, with mm -hmm. a nucleus with electrons that go around it that a massless photon can go into and bump into a different orbit or bump back into the nucleus, which is the photoelectric effect that Einstein stole and, and published in 1905, won a Nobel Prize for in 1921. You invoked it. I did not. I questioned it. You made the claim. So it's on you, Mark, to prove what you just said about the atom and all that stuff and, and a line not being straight. It's conceptual. Okay. Those are your words. Okay. So can you present to me a straight line that when I don't I zoom into don't it? Okay. Excuse me. Can I please right. speak? Let's can let I please Mark wrap speak? this one up and then we're going to move on. For so the next if, one if your claim is that a line can be perfectly straight, you should be able to present to me a perfectly straight line that when I zoom into it and get closer and closer and closer, it will still remain straight and not deviate in any way whatsoever. You can present that to me at any time. That is not how the game is played, Mark. You made the claim, and I called you out on it, and then you even had the audacity to bring up atoms as if you've ever seen one, and as, as if Einstein ever saw one. And, and Are you we could... denying atoms exist now? You've I tell you what. of an electron microscope? Oh, 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 oh. You can see electrons under electron microscope. Is that what you're saying? That's well, exactly what I said. Okay, cool, cool. I want you to give me an electron microscope, and I want you to send me a, a photo of an electron under an electron. I, I didn't microscope. say an electron. That's I said an atom. what I want. You so, don't in, you understand the difference between? You, no, I understand and atoms? just fine. You want I a spinning. You, you want a spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space and you say you don't have faith and you know use faith you have faith in something that doesn't exist and is basically I, I, sun pagan worship that's all that's that's I, what it started mark the doctors of divinity became the doctors of science that is that is basically what has happened guys you you believe in something that okay does can we get back on the topic yeah, i mean if you the, could we, demonstrate that that would be great we should yeah, so tap dance our... away can't demonstrate the straight line. Yeah, right. it's your claim, Mark. It's Let's not get mine. back into the super chats, everybody, just because we do have a lot yeah. more pouring in, uh, and 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 Flatsoid's unlimited time, so I do want to get through as many of them as we can while uh, Flatsoid's still here. Uh, but Flatsoid, we uh, super appreciate you being here. Kyle G, ten euros for the Globies. Could you kindly please provide a practical demonstration in order to be able to determine that a selenolian selenolian eclipse is only possible due to refraction that's our first super chat from kyle g so thank you so he's asking um and i'm sorry sometimes with the headphones on it's uh, hard to speak for the globies could you kindly please provide a practical demonstration in order to be able to determine that a selenolian uh, eclipse is only possible due to refraction now, um so so we, we yeah, we can do multiple experiments of how light curves in the atmosphere and how the atmosphere affects it. Um, the only reason why the refraction is so pronounced in a uh, Selenellian eclipse is because it's coming in sideways through the atmosphere. 
um, then it has to pass through a lot more atmosphere as if it was top down kind of thing. So we can actually measure the amount of um, the, uh, 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 deflection that occurs um, because the more atmosphere it has to pass through, the more that, that that light is refracted. So we can actually do experiments on that. Did you get that from Google, Wikipedia or NASA? <laughs> well, so um, he asked for a practical demonstration. I don't have the moon in my back pocket, but I do have a camera lens handy. This is just a regular 70 to 300 camera lens. What we're seeing with a, a, a selenillion eclipse is more like a fisheye lens because the atmosphere being curved behaves like a fisheye. And like a fisheye lens, you can see things further to the side that appear more towards the middle than they actually are. It's a distortion effect because the atmosphere is a curved lens type effect. So, I mean, that's the best I've got for practical demonstration. I'll, I'll, I'll give you your camera and I'll take my P1000 anytime over your camera. I'm telling you guys. Yeah, I've got one of those too. I'm telling you guys, you can see further than you're supposed to on your eight inches per mile squared drop over distance. And when you walk away on a flat surface, you get smaller due to perspective and things disappear bottom up. You can do that experiment yourself. You don't have to rely on anybody else, a scientist to tell you, you can do it yourself. You can do it tomorrow if the weather's fine. Do it and find out that we live on a stationary yeah. plane and not your spinning space ball, which eight inches per mile square drop over distance has never, ever been proved. Yeah, um, yeah I see. The thing is, we Except can demonstrate. We can demonstrate these effects on flat surfaces like we have many times. And I mean, I've even done it on MTD where we showed a person takes a flat floor, brings in the cold air for refraction, and then it looked curved, doing opposite of what your globe claims. Yeah, so that, that <clears throat> video was like done in shaky cam with someone without even the cam fixed. We've got no idea whether he's holding it was holding steady or straight or up and down. Yeah, but the, it just like <laughs> when, when he was moving it around, like it was, it was just on such the, the most ridiculous. Hold on there, it was the most, yeah, uh, flatoid. Seriously, man, I know your experiment sucks, but, you know, no need to talk over the top of me. All right, let's um, continue. Like it basically when you said you could see this, he was actually having it in his hands and moving around, as I pointed out. Like if, 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 if Flatsoid has a problem with the amateurness of Geronism's experiment, then he should absolutely throw this experiment out the window because nothing was fixed. There was no controls. There was just a guy saying, hey, this is what it looks like through my camera. When he's moving it around, we don't have any idea what angle it was on. Nothing was documented at all in any way, shape or form. Just here, trust me. All right, 15 seconds to you, Flatsoid, and then we'll hand it over to Ember to close this question for the globe side. So, Flatsoid? Okay, yeah, uh, again, it's not an experiment. Learn what science is, please, Mark. Thank you. Over to you, Ember, for the closing of this question here. Yeah, we're we're still on the selenillion eclipse. You got it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much what's going on. It in the fact that we can is itself a demonstration of a curved atmosphere. So I mean, I I'm not sure. Yeah. Although it I is interesting that by a similar mechanism we can see uh, the sunrise, the moonrise, etc. And the fact that they rise rather than start out small in the distance and get closer without ever crossing the horizon, as one might expect on a flat plane, also kind of demonstrates that it's not a flat plane. And also, also on the topic of the P-1000, the, the fact that we can see farther than some people think we should be able to and yet we do that demonstrates that we can see that far not whether the should or shouldn't we can't see from new york to la the fact we can't is a problem for a flat world no it is not the fraction yes. limits Give me a, the fraction. oh oh Ember, you're the excuses Ember, the, Ember, I love right, we've opened it. hold on guys Give before, me more. before we go on I, I, i'd like to just parade. add one thing because the oh question was for us God. i just want to add one thing they keep saying this number for the drop it's it's one point two two formula for calculating All right, 15 seconds like the... and then i do want to hand it over to the other side because we've opened up a gay big old can of worms <laughs> from the sounds of things and jim had some thoughts so mark go ahead for 15 well, usually seconds. the people ask the questions are the, the one to end i don't know if that's what you're doing ryan i, I have no idea but anyway uh you know it, it's the the derived formula is height equals uh you know to, to sort of this whole thing of squared it's not the, the formula for calculating it's not 1.22 i'll just have to say it's 1.22 times the observer's height in feet all right, Jim, you had some thoughts? 
Ember thinks that we can see forever and things don't disappear <laughs> bottom up. So we should be able to see, you know, thousands. Oh, no, I agree. Thousands. Things no, should disappear you, you, bottom you, you, up. You, you, you know, it's really, it's really interesting. Ember, you're so disingenuous. Hey, here's a, here's a guy who sent me something. And he said, my team and I did a video using a tracker in the P1000. The tracker maintains constant zoom to track the object. This is why the sun never changes size with filter in their videos. The tracker is constantly adjusting zoom. Anything will always look the same size. And then he goes, you can use a filter in a P1000 with no tracker, and it will not adjust zoom. Therefore, the object will become smaller as it goes away. Guys, I don't put it past any of you Globers who believe in faith of your globe that you would put a tracker and, and claim that the sun doesn't, you know, you know, you know, change its angular size as it moves away. I wouldn't put it past any of you. It does change size. It does change size as it moves away. I've seen it with my P1000. I've seen it with my phone. I'm sorry, guys. If you want to believe in your fairy tale and you want to think that the globe has done something for you, so you come online and defend it, you know, because it is faith that you believe in a spinning space ball. Cool, man. What has the flat earth done for you? All right, let's yeah. see. It's, it must be you doing know what some nice stuff. Hey, Ember asked me something. It gave me the truth. That's what it gave me. All right, we're going to let Ember uh, close out this question here. Yes, uh, yes. I, I, I just... I just have, uh, in reply to that, I just have a quote from Don Quixote. Don't ever let the facts get in the way of a good truth. Yeah, and you have no facts on your spinning space ball, period. All right, Mark, close us out on this one. Yeah, so so this is this is the thing. I, I, I think, I think the, like, the question, was the globe ever done for us? Well, it's just, that's just where we live. Um, we, we get to um, understand the world a little bit better. And, and I just want to point out that Flat Earth has done nothing to improve the lives of anybody at all, at least sort of, um, you know, we've got um, sort of all of these these uh, uh, inventions as a result of, of the space industry. Um, Flat Earth, they did have a space um, thing, and it ended tragically when the guy um, crashed his rocket. So, um, yeah, we've never gotten anything from Flat Earth that's been worth a damn, really. All right. Well, Ex let's continue except on. that the fact you live on a stationary plane, Mark, well, let's try to continue on from there. We'll have lots of time. Uh, and, and yeah, I am going to try to keep it traditional in the sense of letting one side that's been asked the question to end the question. Uh, but uh, we're Flatsoids on limited cool. time. Thank you. I do want to let Flatsoids sink his teeth into the things that really gets his goat. So uh, let's continue on there, everybody. Everything? Well, no, the things, the things. Dat uh, uh, Idol for one euro. That was your first super chat. Uh, no question attached there. Thanks, buddy. Um Let's keep having fun here. So Tim Pryor, $5. Yeah, every uh, yeah, every field of science and every scientist agrees with the globe. But sure, it's scientifically impossible. That's why we laugh. Okay. That's for it's a little probably bit. for the Globers. I think it sounds for the Globers almost like they're saying, you're claiming science, but it's not actually science. It's pseudoscience. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's you know, yeah. So uh, the whole idea that it's impossible isn't true. It's not impossible. It's just people like Flatsoid and 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 Jim think it's impossible, and they don't think they could possibly be wrong. Um, so really, you have to sort of weigh up which is the most parsimonious, which was the most likely thing. That the, the great thinkers of our mind, the ones that understand. Um, physics and, and astronomy and all of these different fields, like a ton of different geology, all of these fields, they're all wrong. Or, and they're the most educated in their fields. They're all wrong. Or, or alternatively, people who have ne never been educated in these fields at all and have done their own online research <laughs> are wrong. The problem Which is the, more likely. The problem with astronomy and astrophysics is you got it just a little bit worse than everybody else. You got dumber by degrees. The longer you were in it, the worse it got. Yeah, it's it, it, it's, it's it's that simple. And you know, you, you know, and Ember and Mark, um, we've been cordial. Thank you. I'm going to say this: the pe the reason people people don't want to rock the boat. Why? Because they depend on the boat to stay afloat to get paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Time and also. And we also got to say the reason it's uh, seen as pseudoscience is because it is pseudoscience. Your guys' whole so-called science is based on a belief and an opinion of a globe. So you already have your bias 
uh, adjustments for basing well, here, it on a globe. So there's no actual science for it, and there's no um, experiment, you could say. You guys just take uh, calling things experiment. Like if you take astrophysics and astro astronomy and stuff projection. can you go in projection. can you go in can you go and uh manipulate the iv to get your course no so you use circular reasoning you make a mathematical uh, basis up and you prove it mathematically that's not scientific that's pseudoscience so here's projection. the thing when when we have the possibility of two conflicting ideas we can devise a test to tell which one is which globe mm -hmm. model heliocentric model big bang model whatever model you care to use they make predictions and then we test things and every single time the the standard model is verified that flat is earth so doesn't make predictions that, Amber, you can speak it but you can't prove it i'm calling you yeah. out right now you can speak it but you can't prove it okay let's take this into right. uh how many times has the sun's look uh distance changed through heliocentrism the sun's distance well, changes daily. We're in an elliptical yeah, orbit. What are you talking about? No, the distance from Earth to the sun. How many times has it changed yeah. in history since time. its conception? It's now Year 93 round. million miles away, right? Correct? It, it used to be further around. away. It used to be closer. No, the standard distance. Uh, and this was so-called average... scientific. Okay, okay. Let, well, let me answer, Flat. So don't just keep running on. Um we have an average distance to the sun because as we go round the sun during the year, as Ember pointed out, it's ecliptical. So it changes um, yearly. Like, I, I, I don't understand. So, 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 so it, when, when you say how, how often has it changed, it changes all the time because we're, we're not in an exact orbit to the yeah. sun. It's it's who, not a perfect circle. Who proved it? Who proved motion of the Earth around the sun, Mark Ember? Who proved motion of the Earth around the sun? Galileo. Who did? Proved. Galileo. Wow. Galileo did. Every... Well, a few different people have hey, hey, over hey, the guys, course of the guys, years. guys, guys. Every interferometer. Well, let answer. Every every interferometer experiment experiment since Michelson Morley, eighteen eighty seven, all the all the way through Dayton Miller, and every interferometer experiment since then. Uh, no matter, you know, they get more and more precise, has shown three, five, six or eight kilometers per second around the sun and not 30 kilometers per second or six, six thousand, six hundred miles, six, six, six around the sun. So every scientist who believes in the spinning ball has shown three, five, six or eight kilometers per second around the sun and not 30 kilometers, which Google tells you every single one. Tell me how that's possible. You can't you can measure the seven. orbit Tell of the Tell me Earth how around. that's possible. You can't measure that with an interferometer. Yes, Michelson-Morley was a test of the luminiferous aether. It no. proved no. there wasn't no. one. No. That's all it does. I know. I got, I got the paper right here. I got it right here. And it says on the relative motion of the Earth and the ether. But it talks about the relative motion yeah. of the Earth. And, and Michelson-Morley showed one-sixth of the 30 kilometers per second. Every interferometry experiment debunks your motion of the Earth, which destroys your heliocentrism. It debunks the aether. No, it does no. It loves the aether. That yeah. is your interpretation of it, because <laughs> you can't accept that heliocentrism, that e interferometry, destroys your heliocentrism, your sun pagan worship. And you know the reason you have an elliptical orbit instead of a circular? Because in the math. A circular orbit doesn't work, so they had to make it elliptical in the math, not in the evidence, but in the math. And then they still and then they prove me and wrong. Then they, and then they still have problems with three bodies of motion. No, I think you should prove yourself right. To be honest with you, um, but yeah, this is just you know nonsense. Um, I'll, I'll sure, wrap sure up. So I think I'll, I'll build off. Well, I think I'll build off what Ember said to wrap up that that when we have competing models, we usually make some predictions or, or present those models to say, hey, this is how it works and see which one actually comports with reality and which one doesn't. What we've seen here tonight is this tap dance and this this desperate running away from any kind of explanation of how their things work at all. They didn't explain meteorites. They didn't explain um, um, lunar eclipses. They didn't explain anything. We asked them the Selenelian uh, eclipse. They didn't explain how that actually works because they don't want to present you a model. You don't know how it 
because if years. they if they put up a model next to the the globe Earth, what? they will have to sh- try to show you that that comports with reality better, and it's just not going to. Why don't so you just go? Sorry. Why don't you just go date a model and marry one instead of believing in a fairy tale model of your globe? Why don't you just go date? Oh, one? I'm. All right, let's. I, I'm, I'm married. I think my wife would probably object. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's and, a fair point. Hopefully, I, and hopefully, I would imagine. Let's, her, let's carry hopefully on you consider everybody. her a model. We yeah. have all. I'm, I'm gathering that you're not married. I'm gathering you're not married at all. Cool, cool story, uh, Mark. Cool. Let's carry. Are you on. married? No, let's no. not get into yeah, each yeah, other's let's, let's personal move along. lives because that's not. Well, I mean, the conversation. My personal well. life is being brought up, so you know. I think oh, I know, but we'll set a better tone going forward. So, Doctor Dino, five dollars. Mark, he, Mar- oh, so they're they're parroting. Uh, Mark says, "Here's how rockets work." Jim says, "Yeah, according to your fairy tale." Flat Earthers, please Google and read the definition of an oxidizer. So Google, you guys, that. thank you. Hey, whoever wrote that, thank you for playing. Google, Wikipedia, Chat GPT, and NASA. I will refuse. So if somebody tells me to go Google something. I'm going to laugh because when you Google speed of the uh, the motion of the earth around the sun, you get 30 kilometers per second or 66,600 miles per hour. But every interferometer experiment ever has shown three, five, six, or eight. So I am going to Google nothing. Well, I part of the conspiracy, chat. folks. That, yeah, yeah. That but I just, said- just, to add, uh, just to add quickly, quickly, don't use chat GPT. It doesn't give accurate results at all. It's not designed to fact check what it, what it looks up. So don't use that. Do you use okay, NASA, uh, Wikipedia, and Google? Well, I use Google Scholar a bit, yeah, sure. But it's the papers that I'm looking up, journals that I'm looking up, not Google itself. Google, Google's a web crawler. You know, they don't actually put anything up themselves. All they do is find things in other sites. When, That's well, how it works. When has your science ever shown uh, motion of the Earth at 30 kilometers per second around the sun? Uh, yeah, I think we already went over this. You're sort of when, just wh- on the side. When, when this is has just a red your, herring. when has your science? It's just a red show. herring. When has this is just a red can herring? Can you show me thirty kilometers is. per second around the sun? Sure. Uh, it, I, I want to see. It. I, I want. I want to see it. I want to see thirty kilometers per second around the sun, please. Sure. Yeah, this comes back to you guys have claims without demonstrations, so it's just faith based. We've exactly that. told you how to conduct the experiments yourself, to make observations yeah. yourself. These are demonstrations, demonstrations you can do at home. Observation is not a demonstration. You actually have to do the demonstration instead of hiding behind, I see something, so I affirm the consequent that what I see is what I say it is. That's just circular reasoning. Which so is we want why we create hypotheses if this then this will happen if not then this will happen and then we see which it is that's that's how you sort circular out what's true reasoning. or not that's circular reasoning that's why it's not that's science that's third of the opposite that well, how reasoning? the hell do you determine our science, what's true how science works is you first observe the natural phenomena then you want to figure out the cause for that natural phenomena therefore you create the hypothesis this is the cause for the natural phenomena therefore if it's validated yes. With experiment, then it's validated or it's disproven. See, that no, sounds but you're like trying to reasoning. disprove the That's not falsification. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Because you don't understand science, flat. So you have no idea. You try to disprove the hypothesis, right? It's called falsification. A null. That's the one. That's the opposite of your alternative hypothesis, so which you is validate what, the one and disprove the that other. disagrees with you. Yes, if you can't prove the alternative hypothesis, you fall back on the null. So which did we first do? Observe the natural phenomena. You guys do not observe the natural phenomena first. You make your hypothesis, then you uh, observe no, the don't. natural phenomena. No, That's not science. Comes That's first. All... You are so oblivious to science. Oh, really? It's incredible. Okay, yes, when absolutely. you had the so-called Eddington experiment, as you put it, was that first observed or was it predicted before? What what's your prediction is how we verify there. things. So it's not science then. It's circular reasoning. I see the sun no, come up, not. so therefore the uh, sun comes up because God pushes it up. Congratulations. So, so a hypothesis, you basically make the hypothesis. So just say you're trying to find out what is causing something. You say, hey, I observed this. I think it might be, say, the earth is round, right? Okay. That becomes the alternative hypothesis, right? No. What, yes, what, yes, that is how the, it works. Tell me the cause for round. That is how for round. it works. 
Then Give me the course for round. If the earth is not round, I should say this and go out to falsify that hypothesis. Circular you don't understand reasoning. science. Circular oh. reasoning. Let's, you have oh, to oh, you have to manipulate the independent variable to Clueless. get your outcome. Clueless. How do you manipulate round? Please tell me how you manipulate Clueless. round. Clueless. Yes, you are. Projection. No, you're completely clueless, Flat. Well, so you don't, you, don't you, manipulate. You talk about science. You are the best contender for the Dunning Kruger Awards I have ever <laughs> seen in my life. Have you? It's incredible. Do you manipulate the IV or not, Mark? Do I manipulate the IV? I, I don't even know what you're talking about. So do you're I speaking ignorance projection. I, do you That's manipulate the IV? Do yes, you, you do. manipulate the IV? How yes, do you, you manipulate do. the IV? I don't even know what context you're referring to. Independent variable. That's the cause of the effect, a.k.a. your IV, the cause, which causes the DV, the dev, the uh, Okay, so that's what effect. you're talking about. Okay. And you're telling me I'm the ignorant to science projection. No, I just, IV can stand for a lot of things. You you, you did, didn't no. even say the actual IV name stands of for it. One thing. All right, let's continue on with our super chats. What, intravenous? Uh, We've got all kinds of uh, questions here. So. God, you're so slow. It's it's incredible. So we've almost cracked 200 likes. I, I, I'm not, I was going to say, I speak pretty fast sometimes. I got to be careful. Uh, <laughs> I, I won't take that projection onto me or else live chat's going to just tear me to shreds. Uh, Abner, 999. Flurfs, do you believe the moon is made of plasma? Thanks, Abner, for that super chat. Your first one. You want that flat side? You want could that? be possible. Yeah, it could be possible. Uh, we do not know what it is, so we're not making claims, but it's a possibility. What is? Uh, uh, what would you uh, put by in this sense? Like, I'm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, all, all I, I know, guess. Okay. All yeah, I know. Go, sorry. All I know with this, the moon is this: when it reaches about a quarter, or the last quarter, or the gibbous. Uh, you know, either way, yeah, after full moon or before before full moon. Uh, it is looking up at 334 uh, it's looking up about 132 o'clock 233 o'clock and the sun is down at five o'clock 530 if it was on the moon if you wait to after the full moon and you get you get a quarter or you get you know you know a waning gibbous if that that's what it's called the, the moon is looking up at 10 10 30 11 o'clock and the sun is down at eight if you go by line of sight in your fairy tale outer space you should always have the sun illuminating directly on the moon. I have videos showing that it does not. And we're coming up to a first quarter here real soon in a few days. And I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm going to do it again. But I'm telling you guys, the the moon is self illuminating because line of sight will mm -hmm. tell you that if the sun, if in your fairy tale, the sun will be illuminating the moon directly on that side and not looking up or looking up and the sun lower in the sky. Yeah. But I, I appreciate your fairy tale. So, but you know what's also interesting? Why, just just before like you Jim? guys jump in here, just to clarify for our super chatters, so that is a yes. Uh, you, you do believe the moon is made of plasma or you think that's a possibility? Um, it's just I a think possibility. The, the question was the sun made of plasma, I think. No, no it was, it was, it was the, moon. the moon. Is the moon made moon. of plasma? The moon's yeah. made of plasma. No, okay. it's a possibility. No one's claiming this. But again, don't you think so, it's an interesting fact that when you have a new moon, you're not able to see it? That's no. what the new moon No, means. no matter how much exposure yeah. you put, you do not able to bring the moon into view. We know that well, it's a physical that's object. That's actually not true. Um, during Correct. the last solar eclipse, what was it, 2017, I took my kids. I took photos. I had a ton of cameras with me and I did get the face of the moon off of the earth shine reflected directly back at the moon in front of the sun. So yeah, you can see the moon when it is literally brand new. If you do it exactly right. Do you maybe have a channel? I'd love to check this out. If you got the video, I do not have the video on my channel, but I do have a channel. Awesome. So, so again, Ember is, speaking something but he can't prove something thank you so Andrew. again um I, I just like to point out that they're, they're making all of these statements on sort of how the, the their model works what 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 the model entails but they don't actually even know so what this shows is that the moon can be anything to justify their presuppositions about the world if something doesn't work they can just say hey the moon's not plasma it's this other thing 
Oh, oh, well, that's not, you know, this other thing. It's then made of cheese is why that it shows what it shows. This is the deception that Flat Earth always does. They always will never get pinned down to one description because then they can change it to suit whatever proves them wrong. You self-project really well. Excuse me, yeah. excuse me. This is the path to ignorance. Um, okay. it, it, it absolutely is. Why do you think it's called relativity? Because you can change it anytime you want to. It's not exactly. called it, it's not called special objectivity <laughs> or general objectivity. It's called relativity because you can change it anytime. Mark, you've you've self-projected at least two or three times tonight. And this is the first time I've called you out. But I'm I'm telling you How right do you now. you self-project? If, if you believe if you believe that the moon can look up uh, at 10, 10, 30, and the sun can be down at 8, and vice versa uh, before it becomes a new moon. And you say, well, it's refraction or the bane of warp into space-time or whatever. Line of sight should tell you that the moon is self-illuminating. You go look at it in three or four days, look at it after the full moon, and you come back with me because I have video that the moon is self-illuminating. I'm sorry, guys. I know you're atheist. Your faith is in the globe. Some of us have faith in oh. the creator who created us. I mean, um, that's cool. How do you get a shadow on a self-illuminating okay. surface? Okay, can, right. can I finish off this? So we can move to the next one, Jay, uh, Ryan. Yeah, Fine. yeah. Um, we well, can, okay. I'd like the answer to that. How do you get a shadow on a self-eliminating surface? First of all, you're making a assertion that it's a shadow. Secondly, um, like we're saying, what you, is it? We don't know. Just like just because your globe tells you it's something doesn't make it so. It just means you are gullible and enough to have faith to believe it's what's been told. What's now, the definition again, of a shadow? Again, we closing off here. Nobody's saying it's a shadow or it's not a shadow. You oh, I'm saying it's a decision. shadow. So you claiming it to be a shadow? That's you. That's not me. All right, let's move on here, guys. Uh, Tim Pryor, five dollars. Apparently, this is not the one that the flat earthers are going to give evidence for flat Earth. They are really obsessed with globe Earth, aren't they? Uh, they're coming at you too. So Jim and Flat Soy. Maybe they want to date the globe Earth model. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe they want. Then maybe they're jealous. Okay. Hey, okay. right. flat soy, flat soy, you go, and then I have a response. Okay. 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 What do you think we presented? Bodies of water always stay level, flat, at rest. No measured curve. You need containment to have gas pressure. No rotation of Earth, aka all flat. So I don't know what he's talking about. Since well, experiments that showed flat Earth. S since nineteen, since nineteen fifty-eight, sixty-five years ago. NASA has gotten seven hundred billion dollars. Space Force, I don't know. They they started December twenty nineteen. You have other space agencies spread throughout uh, the world. You have education. You have entertainment. It is a very good possibility if you adjust for inflation between uh, nineteen fifty eight and today, sixty five years, that the globe through taxpayer money, printed money, borrow money, NGOs, foundations has gotten somewhere between eight and ten trillion dollars with a T. And our side from foundations, uh, NGOs, taxpayer money, printed money, borrowed money has gotten zero. Your science has been bought. All right. Well, uh, I didn't want to keep this going, but you're kind of coming at the I other side there. So let's not address the question. <laughs> I'm just giving you. I'm just giving you facts as far as money that you that your side has gotten that our side hasn't. Yeah, weird so how we fund actual science. Huh? All right, yeah, let's continue right. on. Doctor Dino, two dollars. Thanks for your super chat. Thanks to everybody else for their super chat. I think I've been forgetting to say thanks for your super chat. You know, so a uh, big thank you to everybody who has already put in a super chat, uh, and to those of you who haven't, uh, no thank yous. Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dino, two dollars. Serious. Thank Hovind you for Foster. watching anyway. Yeah, thanks for watching anyway. <laughs> just... Don't don't let my my Canadian sarcasm jar you, right? I do I do know uh, that I've been I should say I I've been known to say uh, that uh, the Canadian sorry is usually uh, sorry you're so stupid, eh? Um, that's why a is usually followed up with that. You know, we're not actually as I'm kind. Look at Canadians in a whole new light now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That apology is really just like a little <laughs> tiny uh, backhand. Anyways, I'm I'm. 
kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry to the Canadians in the live chat. Let's continue on. Dr. Dino, $2. I'll say it again. Serious Hoven flashbacks here. Having fun, E and M. Are you having fun, Ember and Mark? Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. a good time. Um, I, I think, I think, uh, and, and it's funny because you hear the, the same arguments. Uh, like, and, and Hoven kind of goes off flat earth as a, a stupid and stuff like that. He's, he really is, is this really denigrates them completely which i probably wouldn't do um but you know it, it's odd because you hear the same arguments from these people um about a young earth about a flat earth about about all these conspiracies stopping us from learning the Fun, truth Mark. kind of Fun. thing but they <laughs> yeah but they can't agree on the truth that's the thing like you hear all these conspiracy theories but they can never get on the same page yeah and um, um... you know your thoughts, and then I, you know, Jim, uh, flat side, you guys having a good time? You having a, uh, you know? A, oh yeah, it's always great. Chill I love my modern day debate. How you'd handle I love it, Jim? I, I I I enjoy Ryan. He's very very fair, and Mark and Ember. First time I've met you, you guys are great, and I I know flat side a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and Jim's awesome. It's good to actually have Jim on here. I mean, that's your first debate, correct, Jim? Yes, on modern day debate. Yes, and, awesome. and I want and if I don't get a chance to thank if I don't get a chance to thank James, I want to thank James right now. Oh yes, uh, always. it's well it's it's well worth it to wake up at one a.m. for these things. <laughs> I was going to say yes. Always a big thank you to uh, the modern day debate uh, overlord James, our <laughs> Lord and Savior here uh, at Modern Day Debate for. Uh, just creating such an amazing channel where we can have a neutral platform for everybody to share their views. Uh, we're going to continue with the Q&A. Uh, once again, I want to remind our fellas, uh, if you want an opportunity to use the washroom, get yourself a drink. Uh, we can have a little moment for that. Yay or nay? No, these guys are professionals. I'm good for right now. They don't want to go good. anywhere. Oh, my good. wife just got home. Hello, wife. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's continue on. Hi, Ryan Waifu. Hello, Ryan Waifu. Hi. Oh, I, uh, always throwing her jacket on the back of my chair. I tell her not to do that. There you go. And there she goes. Right. Superiority. Oh, yeah. Clear dominance display. Oh, yeah, no. dominance display. I gotta yeah. get called out in the live chat now. See, <laughs> what have you done to me, wife? What have you done? <laughs> All right, LJ one ninety nine. Mark is a sad. <laughs> sorry, Mark. Mark is a sad example of no. what humanity has become. Um, okay. Well, cool. uh, yeah, that's a little ad hominy. I didn't mean to get, I, I already had it that far, so I figured I may as well finish off. Yeah, yeah, go Ma for it, go for Matthew it. Matthew Wilson, a yeah. fellow Canadian for $2. No, 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 I, I, could I, I get to respond to that? I mean... You want to respond? Look, okay, you someone, go for it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, calling someone names isn't a refutation of any of their arguments. I could be like a, a puddle on the floor making an argument, you know, an absolute genetic nightmare making an argument. It doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Like, it's not a refutation of what I've said. So if all you can do is throw insults, then... Good on you. I, I don't know what to say. And I would, that, that that I would awesome agree with though. you, Mark. I would agree with you on that one, Mark. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, sure. like, uh, you know, base it on the arguments, not on not on how people look or, you know, stuff like that. It's just pointless. All right. Just hold on one second here. Let's get back into the q and A. I'm just keeping an eye on the live chat there because I, I knew everybody was going to get all their, all their panties <laughs> in a knot. All right. So, uh, Matthew Wilson, $2, a fellow Canadian. If there is a dome, where do meteorites come from? Maybe <laughs> they break off the dome. Who knows? Hey, come here, little kids. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a nickel iron dome? Never know. Interesting. We don't. It's a very curious concept. Our side, our side doesn't doesn't decide things based on assumptions and things that we cannot measure exactly that we cannot observe and that we really can, and that we cannot test if we mm -hmm. can you, you know what our side does ember and mark is we test the earth the ground we walk on you guys look to the sky to tell us what the ground is we walk on we actually test the ground and that's a huge difference that's a great point uh, yeah, we, we do testing, but if, if you're, you're sort of your own experience is all you'll ever test, um, you, you'll never understand anything. This is what I mean by it's a road to ignorance, because you'll never even look up into the sky or you won't 
cross the mountains and go somewhere else to test. You're locked in your own ignorance of, hey, I'm only going to see what's around me while taking advantage of things that have been built based upon science. Like the only reason why we're talking on the internet right now is because somebody used scientific principles to come up with, with computers, the internet, um, airline travel, uh, everything, all of our technology is based upon scientific principles. If and we, we just can... went well, we're not going to do anything but look at the ground, we would never have come up with those those things. We can do that on a stationary plane as yeah. well, Mark. It's not shape dependent. No, it's <laughs> not. Um, but it's only not, if, you're, if you're just looking at the ground, you're never going to... to we are looking at the down. sky. The only difference is you guys already have your belief that the sky you're looking at is a vacuum that violates the second law of thermodynamics. It doesn't. Well, it it doesn't and also we don't start from a place of belief we start from a place of skepticism say uh, we don't have a reason to believe this can we demonstrate it and then it gets demonstrated and we go okay we're, we've come this far now let's try to demonstrate something else and where stuff fails like a flat earth then we stop believing in that great so you can demonstrate gas pressure without containment for us go ahead yeah we already did yeah, that's, no. that's been that's been asked and answered. Also, uh, yeah. altitude. You as you go up in altitude, pressure goes down. If there were a container, it should be a homogeneous pressure. Also, we can see lots and lots of planets, including gas giants, who don't seem to have domes to hold their gases in. Sorry, again, <laughs> pressure gradients come after gas pressure, which comes after the containment. Your pressure gradient is already in a contained system. It's a dynamic system in a inhomogeneous gas. There we go. A what gas? In inhomogeneous. It's moving around in all directions constantly. It's dynamic. We got a few variables to contend with, which gives the pressure gradient. You guys saying we have pressure gradients doesn't negate that the ready the gas was there with the containment already. Number step one, container. It step kind of gas. does. If we had a container, container, it would be the same pressure throughout, mm -hmm. like right. whenever we measure it in any container ever. Hey, yes. would, would, would you guys disagree, Mark and Ember? Would you disagree with this comment that that uh, you guys know it's a globe because it's a globe, which is begging the question? I mean, do, do you go in... Assuming no. it's a globe because it's a globe, which is the ultimate and begging a question. Do you guys do that? No. no. Okay. All right. Let's continue on with the super chats, everybody. Just a reminder to keep your super chats friendly and also keep your live chats friendly because uh, we will uh, remove them, uh, unfortunately. And if you're spamming in the live chat, we'll put you on timeout or kick you out of the stream. Uh, we don't want to do that. So let's continue on. Uh, so Lisa Richardson, 999. If I were one inch tall standing on a, or sorry, one foot tall standing on a ball, I wouldn't see a curve on its horizon if I stood on a round plate unless I was in the center. I would see a curve. Why don't we see this on Earth if it's flat? Right. You would see it's based on angles. So you can't resolve how far. So if you're saying you can only see it on a curve, which is really nonsensical because we show these demonstrations on flat surfaces constantly because it's just angles. You practically see with angles. When you rise up, you're pushing your field of view out further, your angle's widening. When you're lower, you're diminishing that angle. That's why it gets diffracted and you can't resolve further than what you can see. It's not shape dependent. It's just how optics work. Well, actually, on a flat Earth, if you rise up, um, because the hypotenuse of a right, right hand angle triangle is longer than a straight line, the further you rise up, the further you're looking to see kind of thing that's cool so field so of view pushes out less yeah so you should be able to see less the further you rise up because the distance what? actually becomes longer well you said it was due to the distance sorry basically. so the distance makes you see less why would that be uh, that's not what happens that's my point it, why you making that claim why would that be? Just one second there, fellas. I think Jim's trying to say something there, Jim. No, no, I, I was interrupting it. Forgive me. Oh, okay. Sorry. Now I've interrupted. 
How what? dare you? So, so <laughs> you? Um, you would agree that on a flat plane, um, if you're higher up, the hypotenuse of that, so it's a right angle, no matter how high you are, right? The right angle, 90 degree angle on a flat plane, right? And you've got something, say, 10 meters over here, right? The further you rise up, the longer the hypotenuse, the longer the distance to see becomes, correct? Mm -hmm. So why, why does it get clearer and more, you can see better the further you rise up when it's long, you're, you're seeing a further distance away? Because your baseline is pushing out further. It's pushing past that 10 meter object. Your baseline is pushing past that 10 meter object. Yes, Mark, that's why you're not going towards it. You're getting further away from it. You are widening the whole triangle, the whole 90 degree triangle. So that um, object is staying exactly where it is. You can now just imagine where uh, the point is, the vertex between the, the, the baseline and the hypotenuse is moving past that, uh, that object. And therefore, you can see further. The object is still in your field of view. You're just seeing further than the object. That's why when you take, for instance, like Ozion the other day, or Zion or whatever his name is, when he used his drone footage to rise up, that's why you saw more of the horizon behind it because it was pushing out his field of view further. It's perspective. Well, and, and rising up should make that object smaller as you, the distance to that object becomes it larger does. through the hypotenuse. But that's not what we see in effect. We don't see the, the effect of them. You don't see things get smaller when you rise no. in altitude. You serious? Have you ever used your eyes before? No, not not enough to like not not the way we would expect on a flat plane. No, the the whole idea that things should emerge from the the top up on a, on a um on a sort of so so when we rise up we see the thing emerge from beyond the horizon. Correct. Yeah, yeah, because the angle was smaller. That's what we're saying. So as soon as you're rising, you're pushing that angle out further. But the so distance is further more. to that object. Yeah, but the distance of the whole triangle is pushing out further than the object. The object itself is not changing. The object is just getting smaller angularly because your distance from it is getting further away. But you're seeing more past that object. You limiting yourself just to the object by ignoring what's beyond the object. All right. Well, so why bottom? Why bottom up? Why? Well, sorry. Why? 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 Why does it vanish bottom up when you go further down? Let's try to wrap up. Because that minute. angle, sorry, because that angle, that triangle, you could say, is becoming smaller. Those yeah, that, that vertex work. is getting smaller and smaller until that you doesn't can't do work. It. Yes, it's called the fraction limit. No, it, it doesn't work because basically there's no, if, if it was to become smaller, it would become smaller in toto. It would become, all of it would become smaller. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, half of it get smaller and vanish. Ob no, it wouldn't. All right, uh, okay. Explain how that works. Okay, sorry. Explain how that works. Let's finish up this point though. Um, okay, yeah, we'll finish it quickly. It's okay. simple. It's just the fraction limit. It's like when you take a brick and you stick it, let's say 100 meters. And you can't see that brick 100 meters away. Stick another brick on top of that brick. You can sort of see a sheer shape. Add another brick until you've built a wall. You can agree you can see the wall, but you can't see the bottom brick or any bricks for that matter. You can just see a brown structure. That's the fraction limit. That's exactly how it works. On a flat plane, of course, you can see yes. the bricks under it. You can... Sorry, guys, I, I can't. I've tried to explain it in very simple terms. My time's no, running out. Like, anyway. I don't get it. If you stack up bricks on a flat plane, what, what's what's interrupting your view? You can't see each singular brick, but you can see the whole wall. All right. Well, what are um, you talking about <laughs> the fraction I, I limit. So, if you Things... see individual bricks, right, and you don't change, you change your elevation, you won't see the individual bricks if you raise up a little bit. When you raise up with individual bricks, those ones in the bottom will compress into the next one, correct? Because you were looking at it from a yes. sharper angle. Yes. So and the opposite will... happens in reality. When you raise up, you can see more of the bricks. I don't... What are you talking about? So a brick doesn't appear to be compressed when you rise no. with reality. When you're on the when earth... you see the top and something of the is, brick. No, let me finish. Let me finish. When you're on the earth and something is beyond the horizon, when you rise up, you can see more of it. Exactly the opposite of what you're talking about. 
All you right. can see Flat more Zoid. of it is my point. We're going to close this out on you. <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> All right, Flat Zoid, what was it that you said there? I, I think I might have over-talked. Wow, you, I, got I want you to finish 11, I got like 10 minutes left in the power's going off. Okay, let's continue on yeah. with the Super Chats. LJ499, uh, it, this is also kind of ad hominy a little bit there, Mark, but I know you're uh, tough-skinned, so I'll read it anyway. Yeah, yeah. This is Globe on Trial. It's almost 2024, and we've never measured Earth curvature or Earth spinning. Mark is a lonely loser. Welcome <laughs> to Flat Earth. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel lonely. I actually, you know, there's, there's awesome people around me, but it, sure, you know, throw those ad homes. You know, I, I, it just I think it might that... be opposite day, Mark. Well, I, I think it's just sort of, you know, when somebody can't ha handle your arguments, they throw insults kind of thing. It's well, just, it's, it's really weird. Let's um, not give them any more mental real estate. Yep, uh, yep. I'm let's, sorry. Let's yeah, 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 uh, yeah, we yeah, do absolutely, appreciate your super absolutely. chat, but as I said, um, we want to keep them friendly. So, uh, and, and we do want to keep moving because we still have like a good 20 plus super chats. Well, there, what was the first part of it? I want to say something about the first part now. It slipped my mind. What was All the first right, part? So, yeah, I guess there is a little bit of meat there beyond the, uh, yeah, the yeah, mudslinging. Yeah. We've never measured earth curvature or earth spinning was i think the yeah sure yeah real yeah. crux of what they were saying i mean you know rest in peace bob and adele he he measured it with a ring laser gyroscope it's been measured oh. by flat earthers and um oh. you know we, we can see the effect of the cross no, effect all the time. no 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 sure a, all right, a, well. a, a ring laser gyroscope measures the sidereal rotation of the sky above us it's a mechanical gyroscope that determines the axial rotation or the ground rotation, which doesn't exist. Netflix, I tell you what, for all you real, all you people who believe we live on a spinning space ball, whenever you bring up 2018 behind the curve, guys, I, I'm sorry, I tune out. Go ahead and believe whatever you want to believe. That was a hit piece. It's cool. It's cool, man. Take it, run with it, enjoy it. All right. Until... Well, um, Go yep. ahead. All Sorry, the facts are uh, conspiracies. It's all good. Just yeah, um, yeah I was going to say, just because everywhere. our next question is for you, Jim, and uh, you're on the ball there as far as uh, your thoughts and uh, your concerns, Dr. Dino, $2. Jim, what does topographic mean? I'm not sure you know. Do you know what topographic <laughs> my, means uh, for Dr. My, Dino? My, 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 my hat says stationary because it's, 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 uh, uh, science, you know, you know, shows that we're stationary, and and also the Bible talks about being immovable. I know these two gentlemen don't believe in that, but that's okay. And then we, and we are plain or planar. So topographical, basically, you know, we have hills and mountains. We go, you know, we're told Mount Everest is twenty nine thousand two hundred feet. We're told the basins of the Pacific Ocean are thirty six thousand feet. That's approximately thirteen miles difference, top to bottom. So, so, so we we do have topography, and and and, and that's just fine. Now, what does this person who uh, who gave you the super chat believe it is? Well, I was going to say, Doctor Dino, if you want to fire another one in the old super chats, there, I'll read it out. Yeah, let's continue on. I believe they have a geology degree, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, take that but, on if I were you. Well, but you uh, see that that might this, be let's make it another yeah. debate. Yeah, it's different say, debate for a different day. Have. Let's continue on with the super chats because uh, right. we got more relevant super chats that are for everybody. Uh, but uh, you know, thanks Jim for uh, answering that question, and thanks uh, everybody for your super chats. Tim Pryor, five dollars. No field of science or any scientist agrees with flat earthers. They should not be allowed to talk about science. Thoughts wow. for Tim? Uh, we'll hit it over to you, Flat Soid, since uh, we just uh, ended off on Jim. Ever heard of the word bigotry? <laughs> science doesn't care what a person's beliefs are. That's so. Uh, it doesn't care if they do not agree with us. However, science does disagree with their pseudoscience. So, all right. Thoughts, Jim, on their that borderline assault on you there. <laughs> I, I, I I had mentioned a few minutes ago that since 1958, the uh, globe side has gotten approximately eight to ten trillion dollars with twelve zeros behind it. Uh, you know, in in uh, entertainment, education, uh, space agencies, and and seriously, uh, you know, there's this little there's this little saying out there that 97 percent of scientists agree with those who pay them, and I even asked somebody who was a, who graduated from uh, an Ivy League just a few months ago in January, and I I, I asked them that question. I said, hey, 97 percent of scientists agree with those who pay them. I said, what do you feel about that? And he thought about it for a second. He said it's probably 75. Cool, man. 
All right, well, um, next question is for the globe side. So, Nick, for $10, I'm not a flat earther, but it's clear they didn't account for controls in behind the curve. It's not reasonable to say that test proved flat earth wrong. Do you really think it did? Uh, we'll hand it over to you, Amber, first, because we haven't heard from you in a little bit. Sure. Um, well, I mean, it was Jaronism's test. I'm not responsible for his methodology. If you disagree with it, feel free to construct your own experiment with better controls. But I will say that uh, certain critics of the Flat Earth model elsewhere here on YouTube did do the math to figure out where Jaronism went wrong. Feel free to go searching for those if you really want. Me personally, I'd suggest if you don't like the test, do a better one yourself. It, it, the, the, the globe side obsession with maps and models has always astonished me to this day, and, and I haven't been doing this a long time. But when you guys invoke maps and models, I just have to smile. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'll just add something to that. So don't you think we should model the human body to understand how it works? Don't you think we should model neurology? Don't you think we should model how cars crash to see if they're safe? Do you think we should just throw all of the... See, this is the thing. This is the thing. They don't actually believe in science, and that's the projection. Okay. They're, okay. they're doing pseudoscience. Uh, I, 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 um, I, I, so, yeah. I, I appreciate your, your question, Mark. Uh, we can actually observe, experience, see, test, the human body. We can actually do that with cars and vehicles. We can look at that and go, we can touch it, we can test it, and we can do those things. You can't do that with your spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space. So I appreciate your question, but again, maps and models just make me laugh. I experience, I observe, and I test a stationary plane. I do not see a spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space. Perfect. Well, yeah, so we this is a great time. We to can't actually oh. see cell development or anything like that. We have to model it with instruments, which is exactly the same thing. It's just special cleating, basically. All right. Well, thanks for wrapping that up there quickly. Uh, Dead Isle for another uh, one euro. No question attached there. Dead Isle, if you, or Idle, sorry. If you had a question, why don't you fire it, fire it into the live chat? I'm going to poke my head in there in a second i'm gonna read this question out uh, and the reason i said perfect is because this is for you flatzoid uh hey. so esteban uh I I uh Ibaka? sorry not gonna say that correctly i can't help that uh pressure is plus even in space the whole universe is the container for that an isolated system within it pressure exists as gradients do gravity or in pressurized systems simple right the difference is earth would be a, an open system inside that uh, isolated system you call the universe it's like taking a balloon and sticking it in a vacuum chamber what happens when you pop that balloon there's no longer air in a balloon it's now surrounding the surrounding system. And so the same is if you take a box inside a vacuum chamber and you open that box, the gas that was inside that in that box disperses into the surrounding system. This is why we said violates the second law of thermodynamics. And no, gravity does not hold gas down indefinitely. This has never been demonstrated and it will never be demonstrated while you show containment. All right, well, let's try to continue on there, yes, uh, that's right. fellas. Uh, Dr. Dino strikes again for $2. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll try to contain these uh, questions for the sides that they're asked for uh, for the remainder of the chat. So sorry to everybody. Uh, but you will get your questions answered by the side that you want. But uh, we'll try to cap the uh, open discussion a little bit because we're getting into the three hour point. And uh, I'm going to stop dilly dallying. Dr. Dino strikes again. Are humans apes? And how old is the earth? That's for uh, Jim and Flatsoid. So you first, Jim. Uh, are humans apes? Yes or no? I, I would. I would. I was about ready. I was thinking about some questions I was going to ask. You know, Mark and Emmer tonight. And one is: Are we descendants of apes, or descendants from amoebas, mm -hmm. or descendants from Big Bang? And I was going to ask them that. We never got around to it. So now, Platsoy and I are, are being asked that. <laughs> I find it pretty interesting. Hey, <laughs> no, 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 we aren't descendants of apes. There, there are those of us who believe in a young Earth. Uh, and and we believe in the creation story. 
Uh, you, you know, both sides have a creation story. Your creation story is Big Bang 13.7 or 14.5 billion years ago, and that a massless photon can travel and you blue shift and red shift and all that stuff, and you deny the inverse square law of light, second law of thermodynamics. And just to inject motion. here, Jim, I'm sorry and, to cut you off. And, and but, how old do you think the Earth is, just for our super chatter here? That was the other in, part, in, in a In a personal opinion only, okay? I go with what the Bible says, which yep. which if you take it back generationally in the Bible, this, this is my personal opinion only, um, somewhere around 6,000 years. All right. Over to you, Flatsoid. Are humans apes? Definitely not. All right. And how <laughs> so old do, is Do the... I look like an ape? <laughs> and how old is the Earth, uh, Flatsoid? Oh, wow. How old is the Earth? I'm the same. I'm a biblical flat earther, so I'm also going to rather stick to God's word. Obviously, we can't uh, validate how old it is, but based on uh, my personal preference, I'd say around about 6,000, yeah. All right. Um, well, I, I, I mean, for, for entertainment's sake, if we can keep it quick, uh, Ember, are humans apes? Absolutely. And how old is the Earth, Ember, in, uh, as far as you're concerned or in your opinion? Um, uh the not geology is not my specialty, but I believe the estimate is somewhere around four and a half billion. All right. And over to you, Mark, are humans apes? Yes. And how we old have is... made all the criteria for apes. And how like there is the... no criteria that apes don't have. We how know. old is the earth? Uh, for it... Yeah, I think it's 4.2, 4.3. I, I might be right. It might be four and a half billion. But yes, that is that is the correct answer. Hey, hey I... I just want to tell my friend Flatsoid, it may be a bridge too far, Flatsoid. <laughs> Well, <laughs> just for entertainment's sake, I figured I would ask the question to uh, continue the conversation here. Uh, so, uh, Beamsy for $10. For the flat side, as a geologist uh, using P and S waves, we can draw an exact image of the Earth, and it comes back as a spheroid. We get this same results from sonar and radar, not a planar surface. Why is this? Well, when they use PNS waves to try and go to see what's below the Earth's surface, 78% of the time they were wrong. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. No one's been deeper than eight miles before. No, P waves and S waves, they're, they're, they're seismic waves. That I know back. what P's and S waves are, but I'm telling you, they yes. were wrong on their predictions almost 80% of the time. That doesn't matter. It's still <laughs> going to come back as a flat Earth. It so they, does matter. Wrong on that. It, no, it shows that they are circular reasoning again, begging the question and affirming the consequence. Doesn't answer the question. And ignoring the data. All right, well, let's so continue. So if, if, right. if something's wrong, like if we are wrong on medicine at one point, does that mean all medicine is wrong? False equivalence. Nice. nice no, no, it's exactly the same analogy. No, you're saying it's that because they got one thing wrong. No, no, you're saying because they got something wrong, then all their, 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 their prediction, all of their, their data that they find is wrong. But you won't yeah, have that. the same intellectual standard for other things. Like just because medicine gets things wrong, which we certainly have done in the past, doesn't mean everything they have done is wrong. This is a, this is a this is a false equivalence again. It, it's, waves, called an, it's called a direct analogy. No, it's a false equivalence. A PNS wave, they're using PNFs waves to specifically make prediction of what's below in the ground. Correct? They use the seismic waves. And yes, then find and they it use to medicine be false. to predict what causes disease, correct? Again, a false equivalence. You don't use medicine Just to predict what causes Just you saying that it. doesn't make it so. How is it a false you don't equivalence? Use, you don't use medicine to predict what causes the disease, by the way. You take the disease and you try and backtrack it to try and uh, wow. yes, sort out the disease. That's how right. it works. Let's try, to, let's try to continue on with our conversation here. Uh, yeah, keep the super chats coming in. And uh, I just want to say this is probably my favorite debate for completely external reasons. One, I got a kiss. And two, my wife <laughs> made me this awesome grilled cheese, which I won't eat here Ooh. on stream. Oh, wow. Well, well, oh, damn it, Ryan. Now oh, I'm now, now I'm hungry. Yeah, how, I know. How could yeah you won't like you? me when I'm hungry. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you won't like me when I'm hungry. Instantly, Mark turns into a big green meme. Great rage monster, hunger monster, <laughs> yeah, absolutely flat earth. 
uh, Fridays. Uh, this is a hashtag from Sacred for five dollars. So hashtag Flat Earth Friday is at one hundred crypto keys. Globe demonstrate standing at eighteen feet and lifting a hole to twenty three feet. Your arms, as claimed by Netflix, behind the curve. Uh, he just elevated himself. What do you, do you so think? he was, if I understand the question correctly, the, the person in the experiment was standing on a, an 18 foot elevation above sea level and then raised his arms to 23 feet. That's, that's a five foot reach. If my math isn't, if I can do 23 minus 18. Yeah. So yeah, arms move. He could have, he could have stood on a box as well. So that's not really. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> All right, you guys want to continue on there? I, yeah, yeah. I think that's I it. Just, All right. just have to say, I just, uh, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. just have to say, my power might go off any minute, like I said. So I'm surprised it's still on. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I was I was responding to somebody who said my sandwich looked burnt, and I was just letting them know <laughs> that I, I, I I've been with this lady for what twelve years now. I, she knows how I like my sandwiches. All right, yellow banana, five euros. Jim Faith is believing something without evidence when you do science all right sorry faith is believing something without evidence when you do scientific tests and get objective evidence it's not faith anymore just for your information for you it, it, it's a it, it, it's a it's an awesome question um obviously you get down to um what you observe about the human body Unfortunately, we can't talk about virology, and that's cool. And but 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 you you come back to biblical. Um, I know I know Ember and Mark are going to disagree with this, but you come back to biblical cosmology, and it talks about foundations, pillars, ends of the earth, um, four corners, um, uh, footstools. Uh, and Jesus said in Gen in uh, Matthew five thirty five that the earth is God's footstool says that in Isaiah 66 one. So, so, uh, you know, so I, I look at that and I, and I look at what I observe, what I test, what I, what I see, and it agrees. So again, that's my personal belief. I know Ember and Mark won't go with that, but that's. Are you that's, trying to say that the earth is footstool shaped? Uh, uh, when, 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 when the Bible talks about a footstool, a footstool is not a ball, Mark. A footstool, if you look at it, has yeah, a flat it's got legs. Surface. Does the Earth have legs? It yes. has. Yes. It, it, it has foundations and pillars. Now, what it actually is comprised of, I leave that up to God. That's why one of my hats that I, that I wear says "Under the Heavens," because mm -hmm. therefore I don't have to worry about uh, what's you know what's underneath me. I leave it up to God. I know you guys are atheists, fine, and yeah. but I, I leave I leave it up to God to determine what's underneath me. Yeah, good one. Uh, yeah, faith is believing in things that are not seen. That's faith. So when you do have evidence, even science, it doesn't make it not faith after you've got the evidence because even based on the evidence, it can still change later on. That's why they like to say science is progressive. So, <clears throat> so in a uh, theological uh, sense, even with a scientific uh, validation, even though it's validated, you still have faith that that's actually true. So it's still uh, on a theological, it's still faith based. All right. Because it's evidence not seen. Let's try to continue <clears throat> on from there. Uh, so thank you so much for your super chat there, Yellow Banana. <clears throat> Tim Pryor strikes again for $5. Eight inches per mile square came from a flat earther. Ding dong. We don't claim that. That's a <clears throat> straw man. Mm -hmm. Oh, so 1.22 times the square root of the observer's height in feet doesn't come up to eight inches per square mile. Congratulations. So no globe. Uh, no, it's actually a function of cos. It's like a radius times um, the distance, uh, height times one minus cos A, I believe <coughs> it is, with A being the angle. Yeah, 1.22 times the height, square root of the height, observer's height in feet. No, 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 no. Yes. Cos. So you're claiming you don't have a drop then? No constant I, I never drop. said that. I said the obscured point. Of course it has drop. That's just what I've said. I said you're doing the calculation wrong. That's your math, not mine. I'm just reading your math to you. 
<laughs> uh, no, you're not. That came from a flat earther, as the chat said. That that Sorry? equation that you're talking about came from a flat earther. Yes. One point two two times the square root yeah, of the because of you're not even came from Samuel Robotham. Are yes, you because that? because where does the height come into that equation that you just gave? Where's the height? Because the height determines your tangent. But you just said over a distance it drops, but the height will will stop that drop. Right, so so where is height in your equation? Times the height. Do you know what oh. times height means? Observers <sighs> height in feet. You're literally throwing your globe math away, yeah, mates. So you're claiming I, there's I no really curve don't. then. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's just that that <clears throat> drop thing did. No, the chat's right. The chat's a hundred percent right. I don't know why they're just not prepared to, you know, sort of look up the real equation. Yeah, and Walter Business not a flat earther. Walter Bislin's uh, Earth Curve Calculator uses this. All right. Well, let's continue on uh, from there. Uh, yeah, Hannah, there's no debate going on tomorrow. I already messaged uh, Christian Anarchist. Sorry about that. Uh, if I didn't get back to you in the Discord there. Uh, thanks, Hannah, for being here, by the way, and moderating in the chat, uh, and you as well, uh, and Athema or Surgeon General. Uh, so, yeah, join us on our Discord for Modern Day Debate. Uh, you know, we got all kinds of ways that you could exercise your chops, and uh, maybe we'll see you here, uh, you know, every once in a while. Like the other day, we had somebody message and say, hey, I can't make it for the debate tonight, and I pulled somebody out of the Discord who was ready to go, and I think we had a great time. Uh, that was uh, last week uh, on the Flat Earth with Witsit. So, uh, you know, join us on Modern Day Debate Discord, and uh, let's continue on here. Cool Lambo, $10. Pack it up, boys. The Flat Earthers believe in talking snakes. Uh, I think they're... And donkeys. I think they're saying... Uh, the, the, actually, that's false. It, was a, it wasn't a snake. It, he, a snake comes from the serpent. It was a serpent, not a snake. To be. What's the difference? What's the difference? The serpent had yeah. legs. The snake has no legs. Oh, it was so cursed a... to walk. Have to roam on its belly. That's what became a snake. Can can we can we agree to this that we all both have creation stories? We both have beliefs. We uh, uh, f f flat no. soy flat soy and I, you know, you know, told us about our belief system. Your belief system is that you you came from apes, which means you came from amoeba, which means you came from a big bang, you know, thirteen point seven to fourteen point five billion years ago, and so you know I. You know, we, we all have a belief system. I tend to not ridicule yours, but I'm sorry, I probably have. But, you know, so I, I kind of appreciate, you know, we can have a little bit of fun back and forth. But you guys have a creation story. We do. You guys have a belief system. And so do we. As I, okay, told, so as, as I told you, flat story is probably a bridge mm -hmm. too far, but we'll yeah. go from there. Right. Okay, so so here's here's the thing, um, and I want to I want to really point fifteen seconds if you can. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so there's no creation story because the Big Bang only explains rapid expansion of the universe. It doesn't actually explain where it comes from, and that's a mistake that theists make all the time. Um, and I just want to point out that you have a unequal, like uh, you're you're not using um, intellectual um, consistency because all of this stuff that you've just said on the creation story, you can't look at the Earth and find that out. That is a belief system based upon nothing, which you said you didn't do. You just look at the earth. So we see too far, Mark. Mark, we see too far to live on a spinning space ball of three thousand nine hundred fifty-nine miles times two diameter times pi, twenty-four thousand nine hundred one miles. And if you do the math, you do the geometry. Okay. So it's eight. Inch, it's eight inches per mile squared. Take it or leave it. Just to confirm, I'm, I'll, I'll just ask it as a yes or no, just because I think that's what Cool Lambo is asking, is if you guys believe in the story of Adam and Eve. Uh, so, Jan, uh, Jim, do you believe in the story of Adam and Eve? Fla uh, flat soy Yeah, I do. Uh, I already do, yeah. Yes. Uh, Jim, do you believe in the story of Adam and Eve? I think is what is the real crux of their conversation here or their super chat. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Well, let's continue on. Mr. Monster, uh, $5. The Antarctic is a compolar current. The largest ocean current on the planet proves the Earth is a globe. It can't exist on a flat model. Discuss. I don't know about this current, so <laughs> I can't What was the question again? So they're saying the Antarctic 
circumpolar current, the largest ocean current on the planet, proves the Earth is a globe. It can't exist on a no, flat model. Why? We have gyres. It all works with the thermohelion uh, uh, currents. That's how the waters move and have the streams. Just because they're claiming it, that it only goes that way, doesn't make it a globe. It's just circular reasoning again. Well, it, 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 in a lot of ways, it's begging the question. You know, yeah. I want it to be a globe, therefore it's a globe. Mm. So I say circular reasoning. Yeah. All right. Well, let's continue on there. And I see a uh, good show, Modern Day Debate from Secret Asian Man. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, just a rem reminder to everybody, hit the like button. Uh, no need to be secret about that. Let us know if you like this. Let's continue on. Uh do, 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 scrolling up through the old super chats, Ivan Tchaikovsky, five dollars. Jim, please explain why gravity isn't real. Provide citations and show your work. Oh, uh, you, you can. Uh, gravity has never been shown. Uh, Nine point eight one meters per second squared is the agreed upon average of why things go. I like to use the word boom boom to the ground, fall to the ground. You can easily explain it using electrostatics. You can measure electrostatics. There's a field meter for it. Now, whether whether uh, Feynman's uh, idea of 100 uh, volts per meter uh, as you and have two Gaussian surfaces is actually the real, you know, the real thing. I'm still up in the air on that. But you can easily ex explain why things fall to the ground using electrostatics and and also using density and buoyancy to fill in the the gaps. The problem with with problem with gravity is it's never been shown to exist. Uh, Newton ha had this, you know, this apple fall on his head in 1666. Newton never wrote about that experience. And so, uh, you, you know, gravity is a fairy. See, gravity holds the globe together. And if you give up gravity, you give up the globe. So, so you know, we, we have the alternative. Everything is electrostatics. Why does millions and billions of, of uh, 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 water molecules called clouds stay up in the sky and don't come down? Uh, there's got you know there's there's questions that we don't have answers for i'm fine with that but gravity has never been proven to exist the effect things do fall to the ground 9.81 meters per second squared but the cause is not gravity and it's never been proved that way all right let's continue on there since that was for you tim Pryor, five dollars seriously until science agrees with you stop talking about it a reason 50 50 why we laugh Who's this for? I'm not sure. Tim Pryor. I, a little too I, I don't is. think it so, says. Well, yeah, he, I don't he's think got another says. one right after that. So Tim Pryor, $5. Fine. Don't Google it. Just learn it off YouTube. It makes you very, very smart. Or just one very. Sorry. I might have made him sassier than I meant to. Oh, I think it had plenty of sass to begin with. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Tim Pryor. Uh, yeah, we'll continue on. He's I, I think he's sort here. of saying, um, I, I think he's sort of saying, stop sort of saying, speaking for science when you're not agreeing with what the science is actually, like the scientists say and, and the, the institution, scientific institutions are saying. Well, I, would, I would certainly agree with that. Well, Tim, Tim Pryor, yeah, he has got another one after here. So, I mean, a total of $20 here uh, for your super chats all here in a little sector. So we really appreciate it, Tim Pryor. It helps out a lot. Uh, $10. So hypocritical. You say observations aren't good enough, but you believe in flat earth. Only uh, of observations without scrutinizing it as much as you do to the globe. Any thoughts on that? Uh, we'll hand it over to you, Flatsoy. That's false. Uh, we say observational and then you demonstrate what you observe. That's the difference. They don't have any demonstrations for the globe. They just claim it to be science. And then when asked, okay, show me the science, there is none. Fact, there's no scientific hypothesis and experiment for gravity. Newton never wrote the scientific hypothesis. His gravity thing came out after he died, actually. So, no, it's definitely not scientific. That's why we, are very scrut uh, we scrutinize it very much. Even in our flat Earth communities, we scrutinize each other based on things. I mean, like Jim, he, he ascribes to the uh, electrostatics. I don't. I'm a relative density disequilibrium kind of guy. Okay, we have different in opinions on how things work. We have different mechanisms on how it works. The only difference is 
we actually go out and do demonstrations on this where the globe, no scale. It's I'll, too big. How are we going to demonstrate this? I mean, Let's we'll just have it, faith. Uh, Science says so. We'll, we'll give you a chance to respond to that, Ember, because we get this next question for you from Nominal for $5. Ember, please upload your footage of the face of the moon during the eclipse. I would love to check it out. Me too. Yeah, I'll see if I can find it. All right. And did you have any thoughts on uh, what Flatsoid had just said, or do you want to continue on? We, we may as well just continue on. I mean, the fact that the, the, the two models don't agree, that kind of... That there says you, enough right there. There um, you go with the models again, man. All right. Well, we got more Super Chats coming in. Uh, you know, we're cool with that. Uh, we want to keep the conversation going. Then keep asking questions, and we'll keep trying to flush out uh, the, the the ideas here. This is coming in from his Minister of Fire, four ninety nine. Oh, I just lost it there. Four ninety nine. That fisheye argument from the Globe supporters was indestructible. Thoughts on that? Uh, we'll hand it over to you, Jim. Say that again to me. Are, are are we saying that the curve is is absolutely matter of fact? Is that what I'm picking up? Uh, it says that fisheye argument from the Globe supporters was indestructible. Oh, so they're okay. in support of what Ember and Mark were saying about the fisheye. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know what to say to that. I mean, you know, Bumgarter in uh, 2012 went up with a fisheye and, and and came down and, you know, over planet New Mexico and they came down and said, you know, hey, you know, you know, it was the curve was beautiful, blah, 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 blah. And then Mr. Mr. Astrophysics himself, you know, came out and said at uh, 24 at 127,854 feet which would Bumgarner jumped at that, that, that stuff was flat up there. I, I, you know, so that's all I can really say. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, there's no problem. Uh, and Flatsoid, any thoughts on that? Uh, the fisheye argument? Uh, tell me how fisheye works if you're looking in two different directions. Sure. Um, well, <laughs> um, since they're kind of giving a huzzah for the other side, um, Mar was that something you brought up, Mark? Uh, what's that? Sorry, no, uh, the fisheye um, was actually Ember brought that up. Sorry about that. Ember, if you want to reiterate for Flatsoid, and then we'll let Flatsoid... I already know. It yeah, it's about the selenium. That's why I'm saying it's because of the wide angle that we're able to see it because of refraction. But I'm yeah, saying you're looking was... in two different, two different directions, so that's not yes. really... <laughs> yeah, it's because it's because the way that the atmosphere works as a fisheye lens is what Ember said. So basically, if you imagine the lens as being the entire way over the Earth as far as your optical um, sight can allow, then yeah, you're looking at one edge and then the other edge. There's no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, are you looking inside the lens or on top of the lens? You're looking from one side of the lens to the other side of the lens on an angle. And that's what fisheye does when you look at it um, on that angle. Um, that's exactly okay. what they're right. saying. Okay. Thing. Have you been to an aquarium? I just want to say, have you, if you've been on an aquarium before, and let's get that dome-shaped aquarium, what happens when you go to the other side of that so-called dome shape and you look? Well, you're not, it... you're not moving in this case. Can you like, see? Why would you? Can no, you no, no, see... no, no, no. Hold on. Let me finish. All let right. me, let me answer right. over you. To, Come over on to now. Mark for fifteen. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so you're basically saying, well, if you move around, then you change where the fisheye is in relation to you because the atmosphere goes all around the earth so in that example that we gave about the uh, Selian, alien eclipse you're not moving i don't know why you would apply something moving to the, the subject when it's not moving i'm so trying to show a, you it's a false man. i'm trying to show you it's a false no no, no it's a straw man it's just a straw man. no all right you don't have know. a flatsoid, lens, flatsoid do you have any thoughts yeah, on no. this for the next 15 seconds or do you want to continue uh quickly yeah uh like i was trying to point out if you're looking left in a large lens and looking right in a large lens, you're not going to see the, the relationships you're claiming. We don't live inside a lens, as you put it. All right, let's continue on. Electric Monk, back to you, Jim. Two euros. How do you test for a creator, Jim? It's a little off topic. I, I, think, I, think, I, already, I think I already said the, 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 you know, the fact that the Bible talks about you know, those, those things that I said um immovable um, uh, uh, immovable pillars foundations and things like that and I can actually go out and test the earth I think the biggest thing that 
I've learned is that we can test the earth. We can test it. We can, mm -hmm. we can observe it and we can experience it. We can't test the sky. So somebody who says the sky proves the ground, you know, you know, go ahead and go with that. But I can test the ground. That way I can test what the Bible says. And then I, and they come to an agreement. Just ontological primitives, that's all. Hey, can I explain it with you? Uh, we have a okay. you got we have okay. a compliment. Uh, oh sorry, if you want to yeah, if you want to expound on that, if okay. you want like okay. 10 to 15 seconds. Sure. Yeah, it's thing. just it's just based on the ontological primitives. When you walk past, let's say, a beach and you see a beautiful built perfect sand castle, did nature create it or did someone create it? That's the ontological <laughs> primitives. Based on observation, everything's created. Yeah, so this is this is sort of again they project, they just you know have a, a presupposition that they're putting into effect. Yeah, so, yeah. It's just watchmaker, um, we can just move along. Yeah, yeah. As, yeah. as you do and as you do, Mark. So the creation proves the creator. Show me a sand castle that creates itself out of nature, please. Go ahead. Um it's not a sand castle. That's how ontological primitive right, well, works. You're either on. creator or not. <laughs> pre up it's just we pre supposition have, have a faulty and, induction and and then hopefully the hopefully hopefully hold on now before we get too off track uh we have a compliment well, and then I, hopefully we can get back into the subject just uh bear with me here run boston bear for 999 says jim and flat soy great job tonight guys you brought a lot of good points and i enjoyed your overall approach to sharing the truth of our stationary topographical plane people are getting it uh, so thanks for the compliment there, uh, you know, for our speakers tonight, you know, they're here on their own time. And, uh, you know, like I said, we don't want to read too many uh, mudslinging arguments. Uh, we want niceties while we're trying to work through these uh, uh, what, what can sometimes be contentious issues over here at Modern Day Debate. You never know. Nostalgia's. Nostalgic Aberroth, four ninety nine. I didn't come from no monkey. I came from biblical incest and six thousand years of incest. Oh boy! Well, I read that out loud. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's on the internet out. forever now. It's you really should read these before reading them out, Ryan. It's it's too late. It's too late. It's already happened. You know what? We're three hours in. I'm sure no one's going to care. Samuel, can I just can I just say million. something quickly? Uh, Maybe Flatso, do you want to have a debate on the existence you want of to? God? Really? We can sometime. It would be great. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a debate on the existence of God. I'd love to do. That'd be that. Good. Yeah. And and Ryan, and Ryan, I just want to say thank. I just want to say thank you to to Run Boston Bear to JT. He's a he's a he's an awesome human being. Well, you hear that? You you know what? You're a fan of our speakers tonight, Ron Boston Bear. They're a fan of you. So uh, everybody's having a good time. We're a big barrel of love. Uh, let's continue on from there. And don't make me say anything else that's too wild on the air, everybody. Because <laughs> that's just uncouth. All right. $5 Canadian from Samuel. Psalm 103.12as. Um, I don't know if I'm doing that right. Far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us us um yeah so uh, i think that's just a bible verse so there's a scripture yeah from there if there's not really any commentary on that well if you want to um, take it on if you want to yeah. take it on globe you could say how do you have as far as east is from the west on a globe because there's no bounds ember Oh, it's just a just a mythological oh, right. story. Like, there's no reason to think that that this is actually true, unless, of course, you are presupposing that it's true up front and assuming that it's true to begin with. Which is why we see all of this, you know, in a Venn diagram, the crossover between flat Earth and young Earth creationists. It's almost one to one because, um, um, you know, you have to start with these kind of biblical presuppositions in order to get you to the flat Earth, and that's exactly what these guys are doing. As as you do, Mark, with your atheism and your and your ball. I'll say. All right, nostalgic Aberroth four ninety nine says in capital letters, "I didn't come from no monkey. I came from biblical." You said it again. With feeling this time. <laughs> what I thought. But deja vu. Yeah, exactly. In capital letters, like I am not 
I'm not reading your little. I'm, no, okay. This, well, we appreciate you, nostalgic Aberroth. You're trying. You're this, trying to get us demonetized, and I well, this comment, a, um, this comment alone has a whole no. uh, debate on itself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not something made for the internet. Yes, uh, you know what? <laughs> you seem very, very passionate about this subject. Like, I don't know if you grew up on a mountain or something, but you know what? Come over <laughs> in a modern day debate and maybe you should talk about it. Um, anyways, uh, Samuel, $10 Canadian. Uh, I think we got more scripture here. Globe, Jude 1 9, about Michael the Archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce. Should I do this with like a, a super preacher voice? Michael the Archangel, when he disputed with the devil, argued about the body of Moses, did not pronounce against him the real in judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. You did a good job. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I thought so. Yeah, um, um, <laughs> yeah, but but what what I want to ask is where was the control variable in there? <laughs> yeah, it would help if they I said no anything control. about science. <laughs> Bible and no. scientific. Oh, really? All right, let's continue. Really? Then. Never thought it. I. I, I, I was thinking there wouldn't be too much commentary on just a scriptural uh, quote, so I thought we'd just have fun with it, since uh, every once in a while I just get money from people to do impressions. All right, Ivan Tchaikovsky, $5. Jim, I said, show your work. Gish galloping isn't showing your work. I can't. I, 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 other than the fact that, that the Bible talks about a immovable uh, foundations, pillars, four corners, ends of the earth, um footstool and then i actually go out and i observe it and i test it that's what i do now you know do i show my work i do have uh two weeks ago when i was on a uh, practice football field in chesterton indiana with my p1000 when i walked approximately 60 70 yards and and i got smaller uh and even though i'm kind of overweight i did get smaller and and i disappeared bottom up and when the football fields open up here for practice in about two weeks, I'll do it not on 70 yards, but on 120. Uh, and I'll do that as well. So, yeah, I've, I've gone out and tested it already. Um, so I don't know what else to tell you. Go on your work. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for your super chats. We're going to continue on. We've only got a few more to go. So if you got any questions, get them in now. Uh, otherwise, we're going to close out in the next few minutes here. Cool Lambo for 9-11. Oh, buggers. All right. Flat Soid <laughs> and Jim, what caused the Twin Towers to fall? Oh, bye. Sorry, what caused the, the two towers to fall? That, I don't think we're allowed to say on yeah. here, but we'll just yeah, say. I think, I think that's well, probably I think a dangerous we should just area, avoid Ryan. this in general. Cool, Lambo. You know what? That that was tricky. All right, let's uh, Samuel for $5 Canadian. No more Super Chats like that because, I yeah, that's silly. Uh, it takes the most a magnificent carpenter to make a flat plane. Any dung beetle can roll up a ball. Woods it gets it chat years ago. This is a quote, I think, from Winsett, is it? Okay. It takes the most significant carpenter to make a flat plane. Any dung beetle can roll up a ball. I think this is okay. to us. I'm I'm pretty sure the, I think, the yeah, it's a little ad exists. it seems like an ad hominy type quote, uh, you know, basically saying that Maybe, but you know, like, like I think that, that Jesus learned his carpentry after the earth was around, even in the Bible. So I'm not sure how carpentry plays into that one. Um weird though. Well done, Strange. Um, yeah, those sure are words. All right. <laughs> yeah, in, in a certain order. <laughs> they have the ABCs in them. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I just see in the, the live chat that somebody said that I am super amateur. I'm sorry, uh, dear of this. Um, some Don't of that might be a little sorry. bit on purpose. I, I might be reading these preemptively, but I just I just think there's enough of a funny flair uh, in, in some of these super chats um, that they're worth reading out. If we can just spin them the right way, we might not get demonetized. Tim Pryor, $5. Multi-billion dollar industries depends on gravity existing. Try again. I think that's for you fellows. 
uh, on on a flat soy and myself and ember oh okay no sorry mark and ember sorry i was i, I was looking down but you know, i mean i don't know where you see me in the yeah the, <laughs> multi-billion dollar industries some of them do depend on gravity existing so mm. if gravity didn't exist they'd be out of business mm. yeah cabin just experiment was done to prove gravity like it's no, been proven no. by no. um the where was the down on mark mark where was the down in Cavendish, there was no down. It was two masses. Like you're misunderstanding how it works. And, Cavendish, and... sorry, Cavendish was not an experiment. Yeah. First if of I just, all, if and I second, just, if I can just finish, to... if I can just finish, like oh, uh, we sort of gave you the time to sorry. respond to your questions, you're just jumping in over the top of me. So basically, it showed oh, like incredibly heavy one. weights next to one another and showed them move towards one another, and the torsion away got less and less and less as time went on until they basically um, attracted to one another. And uh, the Cavendish experiment absolutely proves that it. it's just anybody that says it doesn't, doesn't know how the Cavendish experiment works. Cause and if it, you're looking for down, it's not trying to show that it all, everything goes down. It shows that masses attract to one another and that's all. Um, okay. So, yeah. Okay. And quick it, history lesson. It wasn't to measure gravity. Yeah, it was so to try I, I calculate the earth's why, density. I, I don't know and why based... we're sort of, going on from from your questions without us responding but you guys are just jumping in at the, the end of i just hours, had to correct so you I... because to get people that don't know this it's not there to measure gravity so it didn't prove gravity it was there it to did. calculate the density of the earth based on torque mechanics so we see torsion twist which is based on torque because of the density of the balls how do you calculate density what's the formula for moving it moving through this already yeah what's the formula for it We've been through this already. Mass. What's the form? Mass, mass per cubic volume. Yeah. What's right. mass? And, and what's mass, Mark Reed? What's mass? Yeah. Uh, mass is the uh, so so, um, so so the the weight of something is definitely related to mass and not density, right? What is mass? The, the weight of something is definitely related to... You asked me a um, question. I gave you the answer. Yeah. And I'm asking you a question. Yeah, well, what you've been mass? dodging questions all... Mass is the... So you uh, don't know what mass is. No, it's the, the combined total um, 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 particles within something that makes up something. The, the combined neutrons, electrons... So substance. That makes then. up a physical thing. So you're saying it's Yeah, substance. so how do you, how oh, do you okay. calculate the weight of something? Is it by true having, density? Yes. It's the pressure so? applied. A pressure applied by the density. Does the weight mass. change with density or does it change with um, mass? Amount. The mass. The mass, yes. So the more Densi mass there is, density the changes more with mass. weight it has. Excuse so, me, I'm talking. So, so the more, more mass it has, the more weight it has, correct? Resistance to inertia. Resistance to inertia. How do you oh, calculate well. that? That's what mass is, <laughs> according to the definition, resistance to inertia. You don't know this. You have two different right. definitions for the yeah, same so, word. <laughs> so how do you calculate weight then? What's your calculation for weight? We're supposed to be measuring weight, not calculating it. That's why we put it on What's a scale. And it's weight? the pressure which is forced on the load cell because the density of the weight. The density of the weight is what causes the density is what causes weight is it show me something so without some... density show me something without density yeah it's called a called a vacuum, a vacuum yeah I, is... I, I don't see how oh, density could work without gravity Correct. to make things different i uh, know it's called low and low pressure that's what creates a vacuum you know when you use your oh, vacuum pressure cleaner, causes the vacuum now when you use your vacuum this cleaner, is fascinating it creates... It creates a low pressure system inside that. Could you give me the equation which for weight? Makes, which makes the air force itself from the surrounding system into that low pressure system. Could you give me the equation? The dust. Could you give me your equation for weight, please? No. Don't need to. Why not? No, because you do. You... Give me the equation <laughs> for weight. Give me the equation for it. weight. Because the reason give me I the don't equation give... for weight. The reason I don't give equation for weight is because you guys love to uh, straw man it and say, oh, you need gravity. Which is false. You just said that yeah, a vacuum you consists can't do it of gravity. gravity. That's why you don't give it out. A vacuum it has cleaner, gravity in it. 
but is that can density work is density in the equation for weight? Yes. Okay, so what is the equation for weight then? Don't need to give it. No, what is it then? You said density I'm not gonna was get in it. I'm not going to get straw man. You guys have literally just said. Well, you no, you said density was in it. What's the equation with density in it? What's the equation with density in it? So we, so what we do is we get these equations and we see if we can actually put them in experiments to see if they hold any weight or not, to see if they hold any water or whether somebody is just talking nonsense. And so you won't give it because you're trying to put density in an equation that doesn't inherently have density in it. That's why, because you basically so know that. No and so you won't answer the question of what is the calculation, what is the equation, because you don't want to be shown to be wrong. Sorry. You're just Sorry. basically prevaricating, tap dancing away, no saying, I'm not going to give it because I don't want to be tested. Like, it's no, it's, it's ludicrous. No, Ty gets triggered when I'm Give me the answer. equation. No, you can't. You haven't given us any the, answers this, at all. The reason, <laughs> Ignorant. The reason I don't give an equation is because I keep getting straw man of this. I've been getting this for years now. Again, your own definition. Can Remember, early, can man. I talk? Can I talk? Hold on. There, earlier, <sighs> earlier, you literally told us what mass is. It was the density of the substance in a given volume. Correct? That's what you told us. How much substance isn't crammed inside that volume? Okay. Density. No, mass doesn't have no, anything to do with that's volume. That's not what I said. That is where you, that's what you said. Did you I not say? I said that density is the mass spread out a, 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 across volume. So what's mass then? Because I asked what's mass, and you said it's it is the, the total stuff, the amount. It is the total yeah. amount. So if you have a lot of substance in a large area, the density can be low, but the mass is still high. I don't even know why I have to explain this. The, the mass is still high. Do you understand what we're saying now? So without mass, you can't have no. density. Without so what's density, the equation of mass. for weight? What's the equation for weight? I'm not giving. I'm not giving gravity. Okay, well, yeah, that gravity. That's, that's, that's how science works, Mark. Dodge, no. dodge, 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 dodge. We're dodge. going to move okay, on, I'll fellas. I'll change G yeah. then to pressure. No, no, just change keep dodging, pressure. mate. Just keep. I'll dodging. change. I'll change G to we're pressure gonna, then for you. We're going to move on to pressure. Hold on there, flat. So, so if you vary pressure, <laughs> we're going to move on. All right. If you guys can focus and not cut each other off, we can continue. I've got no problem with that. Um... But like I said, I don't want to have to put you guys on mute. We've already we've we've gone for three hours, and you guys behaved yourselves actually more than that. So, uh, if you want to expound on that point, let's do for two minutes there um, between the two of you. So, Mark and Flatsoid, let's uh, flush it out. Okay, okay so, so let's change the equation let's with change pressure. You, let's, yeah, what's the equation with pressure? Let's just change G to pressure then. Pressure Can of I say what? The pressure of the object forcing itself. The object has impulse. So therefore, pressure it has of the momentum. object. Yes. Is this another stool? Does stool have pressure? You know what impulse is, uh, Mock? Uh, no, I, I don't. I want to get back to how solid objects have pressure. How is that? How is that on done? a scale? How do you, you think calculate an object? That? An object doesn't apply pressure on a scale. Is that what you're telling me? No. Well, that's weight. That's what you're calculating. Yeah, because of pressure. So I'm changing your G to pressure. But, but the that amount means... of the amount of g forces I'm just changing hold to it, the hold amount it, hold of it, pressure. It. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. The... Let me let me address right, that okay. then. Let me address right, that then. Mark... God, don't just continue on. But so if you're changing g to pressure right, and weight to pressure, that means the pressure, which is weight, equals the mass times the pressure, which is what you're calculating. No, I'm saying your g is based on the force attributed on the scale. Correct. So I'm simply saying, but that's that what is we're false. calculating. Weight yeah. is the force on the scale. This weight you're measuring is the pressure from the object forcing itself on the scale because it's denser than the medium around it. Platzoid, we're calculating weight, correct? No, you measure weight. You don't calculate weight. You measure. Uh, you calculate density. Okay, we're measure measuring weight. weight, but the calculation to get weight. From the mass, Newtons. right? Because yeah, we, we agree Newtons. on the mass, right? We agree on the mass. Okay, we agree on that part. But you're saying to get weight, we have to use the weight to get the weight. No, you have the density. No, that's exactly what you here. said. Again, you couldn't even. Yeah, to close this one you, out. Sure. Then what's you the pressure? 
you couldn't define what mass was. And when you did, you defined it as the density. I'm simply telling you, when you measure a weight, it's the object's density that is causing a pressure on the scale. That's all I'm so saying. So the it's pressure the on the scale or right. weight, you have to put the pressure on the scale or the weight into that equation. Do, you are lost. Weight no one is you a unit. Like to talk about this equation. Weight is just a unit, mate. It's just a unit. And, and it's the pressure like on the that... scale, right? All right, we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna move on with our super chats here, guys. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Give me the equation. Send it over to me. A, Give a, me the equation. Time. Send the equation over. Uh, so not. So, so nominal for five dollars. I can't find a single video of the face of the moon seen during a solar eclipse using the Googles. Ember, you could be famous. <laughs> Boy, so. if I had a nickel for every time somebody said I could be famous <laughs> for something. So, you're you're not going to find it doing a video search because video is limited. Um, I don't know how much you may know about exposure, but you've got your um, your ISO, your uh, aperture and your um uh, the the duration the word for it eludes me at the moment on video you can't have a longer exposure than your frame rate so unless you're doing very very slow video it's just not going to happen you need a long exposure still photo that's it all righty Let's try to continue on there because we do have quite a few more super chats coming in. And it, you know what? Um, our live chat is just refusing to let us go uh, because <laughs> they keep popping little super chats in there uh, to try to prompt more discussion. I see what you guys are doing and uh, we appreciate it so much. Uh, so, um, Samuel for $2 says, Thank you all. Keep researching the flat earth. Uh, so Samuel, <laughs> we're not sure what side you're on, but thanks for your super chat. Nominal for five dollars. Oh, the, I just read that one. Duncan Wright for five dollars. If we live in a simulation or a holographic universe, I can see Earth being flat. You don't fall over the edge. You just repeat the simulation. Oh, like a Pac-Man model? That'd oh, actually be well, kind of I mean, cool. Well, I mean, simulation. It could be absolutely anything. Waka, I mean, waka, waka, there's. Waka. Yeah, simulation theory sort of makes it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sure. I'd, I don't I'd agree think with we that have in too much to dig right into there. I'm and sure, yeah, I guess. Um, and uh, you know, it's kind of in the yeah, salt. I'd, I'd like a power up hill, that would be there. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wank, wank, wank. that's right. Uh, <laughs> Bears worth, I, I think they have that. It's called it's called Viagra, anyways. No, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, Bears worth, <laughs> they make a bill for that. Canadian. <laughs> Oh, quang, quang, quang. That's right. Mark, why is the full moon a uniform light and does not have a brighter spot like all experiments with light on balls and your head? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's because of the, the diffusion of the light and the, the, the um, Earth's surface is actually a sort of coarse dust. It's the way that, that it has. But we do see shadows on it, like on the actual moon. If you zoom in with a telescope, you can see all of the, the, the shadows on the moon, like where the, the dips and craters are kind of thing. You can see that with a telescope. It's not it's not that hard. Or um, a P1000. The reason why, yeah, the reason why it's, it's full moon is because when the light shines on it, it actually, like light doesn't just shine on one small section of it, it actually shines on quite a large area and the light diffuses around an object. It's why you still have light after the sun has set. Because if you notice the sun sets and the, you've still got light around it, it's that light basically hitting the atmosphere and the, the particles in the air and, and still... Um, being reflected kind of thing so you will still be able to see from light so it actually um i, I did a video on that that the other day um 99 of the world's population got some form of light um during one day which is just uh incredible um at, at the same um, time I, on the one day yeah at the same time yeah it was it was a, a really interesting thing but yes it it, it did occur just because of the angle of the the um sun the angle of the earth where it hit the earth and where population centers are on the earth um it was really interesting but it's also because um um light doesn't just go to one small bit on a sphere it actually goes round it kind of thing and illuminates the edges as well so um yeah that that's essentially why 
Hey, hey, if hey, I if I can uh, add to that a little go bit. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Um, another factor is the the extreme distance from the light source because the moon being in orbit of Earth is also roughly 93 million miles away. If you try something even low scale, like a basketball in one of those really powerful flashlights, and you put the basketball 100 yards away and then shine the flashlight on it and go look at the basketball, because of the distance, the side closest to the light is not going to be significantly brighter than the sides. It's even more extreme with the moon because the distance is just the difference between the edges and, and the closest part it's virtually nothing on that scale. Hey, uh, uh, and you can I... probably do it. I just, I just said something. You can probably do it with a with a basketball or a round object. Like if you're on a moon, do a white round object and use a flashlight. You can probably light up where where the the person on the other sphere would probably see uh, all of it lit. You could you could certainly replicate it. Hey, hey Ryan, can I chime in for a sec? Do we oh, have to sure, move yeah. on? If, uh, if you if you uh, got like thirty seconds there. Okay, uh, I'll I'll, I'll, there, I'll make it quick. Inverse square law of light. Uh, if you if you half the distance, you get four times the brightness. So if we're two hundred forty thousand miles away from the moon in the fairy tale, you go to one twenty, you go to sixty, you go to thirty, you go to fifteen, you go to seven thousand five hundred thirty seven fifty eighteen seventy five one thousand. When you get to one thousand uh, miles away from the moon uh, in the inverse square law of light, the moon will be sixty five thousand times brighter than what we see terrestrially. Uh, on the Earth, and then you could take Saturn the other way. NASA tells us that that the Sun is a little pinprick on Saturn, but we can see it real well up in the sky. Inverse square law of light in thirty seconds. Thank you. Uh, yeah, All right. So well, let's the, continue. The on, Earth has got a lot can, of luminosity. <laughs> if we don't, sure. if we don't watch it uh, there, Mark, we'll uh, we'll be back in the same camp as last time. Where we'll be uh, <laughs> for five right, hours right. here. So, because uh, I was going to say, our live chat keeps pouring in the questions here, and the conversation is flowing. So, uh, run Boston Bear for four ninety nine. We have another compliment. So, uh, uh, they say Mark and Ember. Uh, so many compliments here tonight. Like it's almost like oh, I almost lost it there. There we go. Mark and Ember, thanks for sharing what you believe to be true. A ball earth and no creator. Cool story bros. <laughs> Jim, let's continue on. I, I need that on a t-shirt now. I think the creation story is a, well, it's another bro lever for a start, but I think the creation story is a, a cool story, bro. It, it is literally a story. Um, There's no way you can well, test maybe... it. There's no way you can see it. It's just, you know, if, if the people do as they claim and they just see what's beneath their feet, then why believe in a creator? There's no evidence for it. There's yeah. no, you know. Why should we have evidence that we came let's, from nothing? Let's save that. Yeah. Let's I, I don't believe that. Let's save that creationist debate for the next for time, everybody, man. because more super chats are pouring in my goodness justin five dollars flatzoid you mentioned a load cell how does a load cell work and how does a load cell measure weight that's for you flatzoid simple we appreciate it's the super weight, chat there justin the weight of the pressure being forced on the load cell which gives a unit to the motor the accelerometer what's a load cell all right how does it work it's like a little in very uh Rudimentary terms, it's like a, almost like a little bag kind of thing, almost like a, almost an accelerator pad, you could say, and it picks up the balance of pressure applied to it. All right, well, let's try to again. continue on. Uh, Tim Pryor uh, strikes again. I think that's what, your fifth strike this time. $5. I'll just make Flat Earth disappear by logging off social media. That should tell them everything. <laughs> I don't know if that's do something I, we can respond to. Let's continue yeah. on. Do, do, do I read cognitive dissonance there? It's a lot of pain for him. <laughs> oh, ooh, this is <laughs> All right. Sydney Raptor for $2. Flats on a scale of 1 to 17. Oh, never mind, Sydney. How dense are you, they ask. Sydney, uh, <laughs> you know, you just threw away $2. How dense are you? I, 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 All right, I'm a density, I'm a density of 75 kilograms. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Samuel for five dollars Canadian. Not sure Flat. he did that calculation Please explain right. Chief, asteroids. But... <laughs> Sydney, we do appreciate your super chat. I hope that made you laugh. Uh Samuel for five dollars. Flat. Please explain uh asteroids and meteorites. They move across the sky. 
Wow. They do come from a place that they claim to exist that violates a second law of thermodynamics, though, that we still haven't got demonstration for, but uh, that's about all we know. We, we, we get to the fact that asteroids are a creation of imagination, astrophysics, astronomy. It's a creation. And again, I will say again, is we don't look to the sky to prove the, the ground we walk on. If you want to look to the celestial to prove the terrestrial, have at it. Good. So like like the truth, like celestial right. Bible and stuff, you know. Uh, yeah, just, kind of like so looking to think, heaven to prove the earth yeah, there. Yeah. Um, so do you think that um that the meteorites are like people that see them in Siberia and things like that? People have seen meteorites coming down and then, you know, you have the the metallic do you think they're all lying to you is that what you're saying are you saying meteorites actually hit the ground yes uh, i mean Someday. you can visit the behringer crater meteor do, crater arizona do, you can go do, see no, that are you talking about the one outside of phoenix outside of tucson meteor crater no i'm talking about the one ones that came down in, in my I, state I, 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 well I'm yeah asking, as, well, as, I'm, as a specific example yes the behringer yeah, crater yeah the the, the okay, one okay. Off, the one off the of interstate oh you're talking to ember okay yeah the, the one off of interstate 10 by tucson i guess it's interstate 10 i might it's, be yeah, around there somewhere I, I might be wrong there's no evidence that that's a meteor down there uh none whatsoever that is more volcanic than meteor and so I, I went there. I've been there a couple times. And you know what, my friend Ember, um, I believed it was a meteor too because I went into the, you know, to the, you know, the, the you know, the guest, uh, you know, area, and they told me it was a meteor. But yeah, it they got a nice museum. It is, and, and they do, and they do, and the petrified forest is real nice there too. Mm -hmm. And and so, um, um, but there's no evidence that's a meteor whatsoever. They called it meteor crater because we want to have our little fairy tale called outer space. Seconds. Exactly. Oh, you're yeah, I mean, It doesn't explain I, why these I mean, rocks have such a high level of uranium. All right. all right, let's try to move on from there, guys. Um, but yeah, sorry, I don't. I want to cut off the chat here. It's just that we got more super chats pouring in, and mm -hmm. uh, there's a risk, like I said, that this could go on for a long time if we don't try to rein it in a little bit. Mm -hmm, Esteban mm -hmm. uh, Ilbaca, okay. five thousand CLP, Fladzoid. Pressure is force over area. Weight is just a force dependent on mass, not its volume. Therefore, unrelated to density. Once you learn the difference, your I was gonna say, you know, you kept it there, but I mean, if you no, 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 I won't going, keep it going. I won't keep it going. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, they can't That's even right. define mass. So. Uh, you know, I'm. I'm, I'm sure one of these will, God, like uh, seriously, I I be generous sure and not keep it going, and then you just stick your foot in it. Yeah. Um, I, it was for me, man, so like you're, I had the closing statement, Mark. That's how I it works. Just, so my just, closing statement yeah. is you guys can't even you're define mass. Come on. Let's, let's move Projection. onwards, shall we? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, we've almost launched into a whole nother thing, everybody. And a, a couple times, right? Uh, I think these fellas mm -hmm. might want to talk about uh, Christianity sometime and uh, just, maybe just religion. So that could be a lot of fun, uh, you know. I don't know how Ember's feeling about uh, that sort of topic, but, you know, we've had fun tonight. Uh, thanks, uh, Flat Soy, Jim, Ember, and Mark. We are almost to the end of our Super Chats. So, A Avner, Flirths, uh, sorry, sorry, Flat Earthers, if you found absolute proof and accepted that the Earth is a f sphere, would you still be Christian? By the way, the Bible does not support Flat Earth. So we'll try to answer this in short format if we can, fellas. Uh, first, you, Jim. Uh, if you found proof that the Earth was a sphere, would you still be a Christian? If is the big word. Uh, if is the big word. If if I was 35 and lifted weights, I'd be Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, 2.0. And so so if is the big word. And and the Bible does definitely talk about stationary and movable. The the Bible is very specific that we don't live on a spinning space ball. So it's it's an if question. I don't like if questions. I'm going to give it to Flat Soy. Yeah. No, I'm 100% of them because uh, we already know based on God's word, it's not a sphere. So if, if like you said, it goes to, okay, it's now shown to be a sphere, I would have to say no, I can't because then that means God's word be, would be contradictory because the Bible does teach a flat earth. Uh, but 
Yeah, that's all a right. huge. Well, let's, if. Try to, let's try to continue on. <laughs> well, there. you've been doing if questions um, all night. If the Earth was round, this would happen. If the Earth, you only like if questions when they do apply to something you don't all like. All these You're questions. You're so intellectually intellectually disingenuous because when you okay. say ifs about things you want to believe, you don't like them. Okay, that's then the where's your it's, it's where's your demonstrations? Where's your demonstrations for anything we've asked for tonight? I haven't seen one demonstration for all these claims you've made. We've we've brought them up again and again and again. Like Gas you want me to just rehash containers. the entire debate right now? Is a that demonstration. What like yeah. Wait, you know what? Maybe you don't understand what the word demonstrate means. Okay. So yeah. So Blaptoid's just basically saying, hey, go through the entire debate again. No, um, because, I'm saying you know, just bring a demonstration. No sense That's all I'm saying. Scale. Just bring a demonstration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I've I've said multiple demonstrations. Like I brought up the, the flight flight routes. Well, what do you think I did? Is I that, brought up the flight is that route. gas brought... pressure without yeah, containment? Hey, can, can I finish? Can I finish, or you just want to talk <laughs> over the top of me still? Like seriously, just just wait on. I brought up the circumpolar stars. You had no answer for that whatsoever. I brought up the um crux. Uh, the Southern Cross and how that that can work on. And don't forget, this is flat Earth on trial as the debate. <laughs> don't forget that. Um, so you uh, you had an opportunity to give an answer to that you didn't. So I've been demonstrating how we know the Earth is is round for quite mm. some time. It's just you haven't been paying attention. Okay. okay, then, Mark. This has we haven't got to that topic because you haven't been able to demonstrate gas pressure without containment. You haven't been able We've to demonstrate to that topic. That topic was in my introduction. I'm not allowed to talk, but you are. Wow. Yeah. So you oh, haven't wow. got. Just hold on, you... uh, Flatsoid. Fifteen seconds, yeah. Flatsoid. There, we'll continue on. Okay. First of all, we didn't get to those subjects because we were busy trying to get you to demonstrate your claims. <laughs> You have not demonstrated it. And yes. So dishonest. While I'm talking. While I'm talking. Just hold so, on there, man. Please. Yeah. So can you demonstrate for me just one of the things we brought up? Water cook curve. You've measured any curve or that having gas pressure out containment. Just one of them. Yep. Yeah, okay. So there we go. Okay. So so this is the dishonesty of flat soy. Like we basically have flat Earth on trial. I give a number of demonstrations that he has every opportunity to address, doesn't do so, and then say, "Hey, because you didn't give me exactly what I was looking for in this this way that you can't provide exactly. because I've tweaked it so you can't provide it." then I'm not going to answer any of your questions. Need I remind you, it is flat earth on trial and these people haven't even mounted a defence, which is ridiculous. What a fail. So no demonstration. No, okay. let's go on. That's the last word. Well done. Well done. Let, flat earth. Let's continue on because we still got more Super Chats coming in, everybody. And uh, I, I do feel like we've, uh, uh, hopefully everybody feels like we've gotten a fair representation of both sides of this uh, address here so yellow banana for five euros uh, ignore if already addressed question for the flat earthers how do you explain gps and satellites in general we have answered this yeah it's how just based on and iss stay in orbit first of all you're begging the question for orbit yes and yeah uh second or uh, thirdly again it's all based on cartesian data systems which comes from a flat baseline again measuring and moving you, off of a data that comes from flat satellites you, satellites and uh, satellites in space ryan 99 percent of all uh communication is land-based uh towers cables and underground wires and you know underground wires in, in the in the water on the land so 99 percent is that way the satellites propagate the spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space violates newton's third law of motion violates second law of thermodynamics and and you know i, I we went exactly. briefly over the inverse square law of light so if somebody wants to go iss is up there things are in the sky they just aren't what they say they are <laughs> agreed all right thank you so much for that flat soid and jim uh, Valerie St. Mary 499. It's truly adorable how all of a sudden Mark is asserting fallacious reasoning. Guess Witsit taught you something. Um, we can kind of go on from there, but Valerie St. Mary, you uh, had your huzzah. And uh, Mark, did you have anything to say to them? Uh, yeah, so fallacious you? reasoning is just that. It, it always, it, it's irregardless. Sort of saying, hey, you brought up fallacious reasoning isn't, isn't 
a, a refutation or you got it from Witsit. No, Austin Witsit usually uses it wrong, like the reification fallacy he constantly gets wrong and um, um, things like that. So, no, I didn't get it from Witsit. I got it from philosophy. Um, but don't forget, there's also the fallacy fallacy, which means that just because you're that making a nice. fallacy doesn't necessarily mean that you're wrong. However, it means that your argument doesn't have a sound foundation um, or a logical foundation, depending on whether it is a formal or informal fallacy that you're referencing. So no, I didn't get it from Witsit. Witsit, Witsit isn't the origins of fallacies. I'm sorry. You know, I, I know that I know that his followers like to think he's, you know, invented physics and stuff. No, no, he hasn't done <laughs> anything of the sort. Like seriously. <laughs> all right well thank you so much for and which it won't debate me anyway because he's, he's really really scared so you know that that is so untrue oh, mark yeah. but you but but you go ahead and live in your little really? you know, what, what's that is what's that, debate me? What's that is one of the last people i know to cower away from a debate by the way yeah and even well, why don't you ask him but, 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 i don't but, even but, see okay. eye to eye hey 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 mark if, well, if i did mark if i did it right now we'll do it mark it Mark, if I didn't know you were delusional, I do now. Thank you. Well, why well, wouldn't you say me? we'll do it? We'll do it right now. We'll do it right now. What's it? Mark why is not? challenging you to a debate yes. on flat earth. Uh, I am. So, you know, we, we need some gunslinger music. Him. Uh, yeah, yeah. Come Tumble on. Hey, yeah. Through, yeah. That's right. I Come mean, out uh, for we the would duel with said uh, Mark. So there's going to be no problem if he's such the amazing, you know. Uh, uh, a fearless person that you say he is, right? There shouldn't be a problem, right? Yeah. What would be the well, problem? Let's, let's continue oh on goodness. with the super chats. We don't want to drag other people in here too much, but uh, I know Witsit is usually uh, he's a good sport for that sort of stuff. So, mm -hmm. uh, Esteban sure, says, sure. Jim, Well, I'm not saying anything about him, I'm just saying the challenges there. Absolutely. Uh, I'll let him know for sure uh, that you want to do that. Jim, there's a meteorite museum in the Chilean desert. There's trackers that go find them after the uh, the they are seen falling down. How about that? Ooh, that's not worded very well. Mm. I'm trying it, my it, best here, fellas. There's oh, trackers oh, that go yeah. find them after they are seen falling down. How about that? That's the mainstream narrative. Uh, he can't prove it. He read it off of Google, uh, NASA, um, Wikipedia. And so, it, you know, if, you know, I got rid of my TV in February after having it for, you know, decades. And so it's the best thing I ever did. And I got rid of the mainstream narrative and I actually started thinking for myself. And this is the reason why uh, I'll be real brief. Uh, the eyes are useless when the mind is blind. We are all born into it, into a prison system and participate in a prison system we cannot see. That's the problem. Most times when we're in prison, we know we're in prison, but we're actually in a prison system that we cannot see. But once we see, once the veil is lifted, there is no turning back. The greatest gift we can give ourselves is the ability to think for ourselves. And people like Flat Soid and myself, and those that know we don't live on a state, uh, a spinning space ball in the vacuum of outer space, have decided to throw off the chains and think for ourselves. Uh, yeah, I haven't owned that a TV you, Jim, for like continue on. since I was 18, so I don't know what your point is. Yeah, well, let's try not to expound too much. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Not not too much TV going on in my life. I just use my computer and YouTube, and I enjoy that. Duncan Wright for $10. How do we really know the age of the universe if light bends around planets, stars, etc.? How do we know creation time isn't real? Ha, ha just food for thought love you guys excuse me and i just love debate like you guys well duncan we love a lot of debate here so um you know i don't really have an answer for that um you know that's kind of an interesting hypothetical maybe we'll talk about that idea so uh you, you, the next time we have a conversation about creationism and the age of the universe uh but let's continue on here and thank you duncan uh, for that, uh, but we do need to c try to close this out. Joe Brandon for five dollars. How close is the sun to the Earth if there is no outer space? Well, so you want to take that one? Um, first of all, 
we we don't know exactly if it's even physical, but uh, based on the belief of the Bible, it's in inside the dome. Do we know how high this dome is or whatever? No, we don't. So I'm not really going to make claims on the height, but um, that's why we just say what we can and we try to keep to the ground. We can validate on the ground, on the earth, what we can, but can we validate the height of the sun? No, we can't. Could it be outside the dome? No, inside. How do you know if you don't know how based on our belief? Based on, based on our belief. How do you know the dome how, can't just be further than the sun? How do you check that? That's what we're saying. You can't validate. An interesting question. What mm -hmm. if what uh, our, our, our noble opponents think of as the dome is what we think of as the edge of the universe? What if they're the same thing and they're just yeah. really far away? That, 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 it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting question, Ember, but it's all speculation. And oh, I, for sure. Uh, and, and, and off topic. Yeah, yeah, and I'd rather stay away from speculation. I, all I can say is I think we know the sun gives us heat and light, and I think we can agree that it moves approximately 15 degrees across, across the sky. Other than that, I don't touch it. Yeah. All right, well, let's try to continue on. Justin, $5. A small meteorite literally crashed through someone's house in suburban New Jersey in May of this year, like two months ago, and it's well documented. Thoughts on that, uh, Jim and Flotzoid? Something fell from the sky, and it wasn't a meteor, and it's fine. Yeah, just like we see satellites fall from the sky that have balloons attached to them. <laughs> and not attached All to right. them. All right, last super chat. Last super chat, and then uh, everybody... Um, Let's go to bed, right? You know, except for you, Mark, because you're in Aussie and uh, yeah. you probably don't want to go to bed right now, do you? But apparently, I can't. Yeah, no, all right, Esteban. Yeah, now that the sun's coming up, we're going. Now that the sun's coming up, the after party at Mark's place. Yeah, now that the sun's coming up, I'm going to sleep. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll probably be going to bed. After, yeah, after party at my place. I'll probably be going to bed. Uh, but uh, I'd love to join you for an after party and uh, chit chat and all that. But uh, no, I better uh, I better join my wife in the uh, no in the bed there for uh, for some good old yeah. good old cuddles and stuff like so, that. So so so, so, so right, Mark, so let... Justin, we're Go sweet ahead. like that, you know. You know, we got. I was gonna say I got to keep up on my uh, keep up on my dad's status there and my husband's status. So uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. let's continue on. We got two from Esteban. Uh, 2,500 CLP. Jim, I've worked out on uh, the desert and seen meteorites falling. People go find the meteorite trackers, uh, trackers. There's a museum for them. Denial at its finest. Cool. Cool story, bro. Uh, you, you know, or cool story, dude, or cool story, man, or, or you know, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm not you, your buddy guy. If, I'm not if your you, guy, man. <laughs> if, if you, if you want to, uh, you know, go ahead and believe that that's fine. Uh, let, 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 let's see some proof of it actually falling down from outer space. Things do fall from the sky. And so it, it's all cool. You know, it, it's fine. You know, if you want to do a, if you want to come on modern day debate, YouTube in the chat section and say something happened. Cool. All right. Uh, that was for you. And Jim, last one's for you from Esteban again. Esteban's got lots of questions for you, Jim. So uh, maybe you guys want to have your own conversation. Esteban, <laughs> join us on Modern Day Debate Discord. Maybe Jim's going to join us there and uh, you guys can, uh, you know, hang out over there and see what you disagree about. And, you know, maybe we'll uh, link back up here in a couple uh, couple weeks. 2,500 CLP from Esteban. Jim, it is not speculation. The universe is the isolated system. That's the container for all pressure and matter in a volume everywhere. And he probably believes he's the descendant of apes as well. So that's cool. Well, that's not exactly true. We're still apes in, in the evolutionary okay. model. If you well, want to live in the bush, I can tell you that's false because then my cousin didn't evolve with me. <clears throat> <laughs> but we're still mammals there's apes right. still around yeah it's a measure it's, still a, animals, you know, it's very we're selective still mammals, we're still it's vertebrates very... we're still prokaryotes eukaryotes it's very, it's very selective things. don't you think what's tell me tell, tell me when uh dolphins started coming from when the cows stopped uh do you want an evolution debate as well i'm more than happy to have an evolution debate it's Just ended with all kinds of things today it's, yeah, ended yeah, I'll, with, I'll, I'll... it's ended with how long does it take for a cow to uh, stop breathing and 
able to have gills underwater and become a dolphin. Do I stop breathing? Do I have a bullet? Yeah, no, well, I, throw I, I don't. Dolphins know. don't have gills. Throw, what a, are you throw, a cow, about? throw a cow in the ocean and see Dol how long no, it no, takes. No, no, no. Dolphins don't breathe underwater, gills. they breathe air. On top. I, I don't. Yeah. Does a cow swim? Uh, if you put it in water, it can swim. It might For how long until the... it drowns? I... What? <laughs> oh, right before. <laughs> we're we're, we're way easy. the hell off topic. I'm so sorry. I'm uh, sorry. This this was a little morbid. We're Add evolution to another subject. I'm so sorry. I, I don't want to say for some odd reason, Flat so I'm sure there was a reason for the conversation there. But we should move into our uh, closing statements here. Uh, we're gonna, we got two minutes per side. Uh, I, I, I want to go back and forth here to close it out uh, a little unorthodox. Jim, uh, one minute. Uh, your thoughts yeah. on the discussion we just had tonight. Oh, it, it's all great. Mark, Ember, it's great to meet both of you. Uh, Flatsoid, my pleasure. And um, Ryan, you were great. I want to thank you. I want to thank James again and everybody who listened. Um, it's been it's been fun. And so I, I wish everybody a great stationary topographical plane weekend. All right. Jim, thanks for being here. We appreciate you so much. Uh, let's kick it over to Ember for your closing statements. Up to one minute. All right. Uh, also, appreciate everybody coming by. Uh, Jim, Flatsoid, uh, good to meet you both. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a it's been a fun debate. It's been it's been interesting. And uh, you know, that's the thing with science is we we actually keep hoping to have. Our, our views, since we don't like the word models, our views challenged because when we can sh be shown to be wrong about something, that means we learn more. We like that. That's the best thing in the world. And so we we keep coming around hoping something like that will happen. And unfortunately, I can't say it did tonight. We didn't really get answers to any of our questions, but I, it, it was still a fun time talking with you folks. It did, though. All right. Uh, over to you, Flatsoid. You got one minute to close uh, your thoughts there. Yeah. Also, I just have to say thank you. It was well worth waking up so early. <laughs> um, it was awesome meeting you, Ember and Jim. Yeah, it's also good to have you on, mate. And as always, the formidable Mark Reed. <laughs> Thanks for having on. I know we get very triggered along with each other, Mark, because we definitely don't see eye to eye. We're like a negative and a positive pole. So we definitely have the things, but I have to point out, note that not one thing was demonstrated, only faith and pushing on insults. That was about it. All right. Well, thank you, Amber, for your closing statement. And also thank you, Flatzoid, for your closing statement there. We appreciate both of our speakers for being here. Mark, uh, you got one minute to close us out. The floor is yours. Okay. So thank you all for being here and, and engaging with me. And thanks, Ryan. Fantastic job. Thanks to Modern Day Debate, James. And of course, the audience for joining us. Thanks for, you for your time and, and hearing us out. Um, so the, the whole point of this thing was Flat Earth on trial. So we're putting the questions to the Flat Earth of how it works, how they know it works, how, how everything is described. And we don't get answers for it. All we get is a, well, you've got to describe this thing about your model before we even answer any questions. Now, keep in mind that this is Flat Earth on trial and you're sort of asking the prosecutor, did you commit the crime kind of thing? It's not really, it doesn't make a lot of sense sense. Um, all it is is sort of a dodge, a deflection, that they don't have answers for any of those things. That's why Flatso won't give equations for, for any of his stuff. It's because he doesn't have something that will meet up with reality. So instead, they say, well, you've got to explain this, and we really promise we'll explain our thing afterwards. Me explaining the model of the globe Earth shouldn't depend on them explaining anything. I should be able to give that information without asking them anything whatsoever. But unfortunately, they can't do the same. And you've got to ask, why is that? Why is their answers dependent on me explaining something first? Doesn't make any sense. And they and that's didn't really give answers right to anything. There. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, Mark, for your closing statements there. Uh, once again, a uh, big shout out to Jim, Flatsoid, Amber, and Mark. We got one last question coming in from Crawdaddy of $5. Flat Earth reminds me of Harold Camping Cultists. The difference is when they were presented with reality, they stopped rejecting it. 
Um, you know, Cry Daddy, that's that's a little bit on the ad hominy side, uh, you know, and maybe not relevant to the conversation. So we appreciate your five dollar super chat to close this out. I thought maybe it might be something there uh, where it started with Flat Earth, but uh, we're going to close out our debate. Thank you, everybody. This was Flat Earth on trial. Uh, we hope you keep on sifting the unreasonable from the reasonable or maybe the opposite. Uh, however, James says it, you know, uh, let's uh, let's hope to see you again next time. Um, for more modern day debate and uh, I think uh, I think I'm going to put on some of that live performance that I had on before uh, because I don't feel like playing guitar where my wife is right there so uh, you can listen to my live that I played from months ago Uh, enjoy everybody and we'll see you next time cheers bye thank you With self oppression, what am I to do but tear away when I'm boiling at the top? Try to find a way to fight the fires, smoke the rat from the mind's flyers. With all the shots you bow your heads, the marching never stops. The stars could be free, but this insanity burns you right by the neck. Running in circles now, boss, on the back, can't be found. Out of breath, you hit the wall, the rain starts to fall. I'll be beside you Before your life starts to decay From tears of blood, regrets of laughter Turn around and I'll be faster Your hollow shape as the faith begins to drop Shelter <laughs> confide Your thoughts of suicide is hanging down by the No time for the day You pray it away But the world would be untrue I will rise again to you
Hey, everybody. That was our debate tonight on Flat Earth on Trials. So uh, I see a couple of you in the Super Chats there. I just want to remind all of you that, uh, you know, er- earlier we were I was talking to James and uh, uh, we were having a conversation about the, uh, the people that were messaging about the upcoming debates. Uh, it's not a lie. Those debates aren't, like, super postponed or, like, you know, in the future or anything like that. It's just that we're trying to remind everybody that we are on the podcast apps. So uh, if you have time to check us out on podcasts or share it out from your favorite podcast forum, uh, we'd appreciate that. Um, so I actually have, uh, I, I think, another song from that same night. So I'll close you guys out with that. Uh, but uh, I do appreciate you all being here. Uh, I care about the music. Well, thanks, Jeff Soul. I, you know, I appreciate you being here. But we appreciate the people that are here for the debate as well, of course. Uh, but the uh, the music that I wrote, of course, is free to be used. So uh, on Modern Day Debate, uh, so uh, I do what I want. Um, thanks everybody for being here, and uh, cheers. We'll see. Uh, hopefully, in a few days here, we're trying to set up some juicy debates. Uh, so stay tuned uh, and cheers. <laughs> Miscommunication, but it's one so far I couldn't even begin to let you know how I have seen. Yeah, it's a great fantasy, and now that you know, I'll never let you go. Arm. Compound fractures Was it all too far? Never malnourished While I'll feed off your guilt Every day he's adding bricks to the wall I said, hey, it built us still see yeah. It's a great I'm tired, so tired, I'm trying and I'm tired of all that you do. Like a spill, you're forever feeling overfilled. Tired of sitting here all alone, broken mind, broken bone. It's a simple miscommunication, but it's one so tight you'd put it together, knowing you'll never set the fire. Oh